Yo Atlas speaking and welcome to part 7 of what if I was reincarnated in Naruto as a branch Yuga and awakened the Tensegan. The playlist is above and with that being said let the tale begin. Chapter 231, Boom. Walla. 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 Instantly, a violent whirlwind swept all around, with loud noise echoing, the mountain that was housing the prison dungeon collapsed. The collapse of the mountain caused a large amount of dust and smoke clouds to rise in the sky. Amidst this chaotic scenery, Hugo Kuroto was standing calmly with a protective gravity ball surrounding him from all sides, protecting him from all the falling stones and boulders. Currently, he was not wearing any disguise, dressed in his usual simple white kimono, he was observing everything with his Byakugan. The two Susanu who were facing each other, both very similar in appearance with only a slight color difference, Achiha Ryota's Susanu being golden while Achiha Hideki's Susanu also being golden but with a touch of orange. Hmm, I did not expect Achiha Hideki to be able to awaken Manjiku Sharingan. Muttered Kuroto with a thoughtful look, he was really surprised and it was indeed a bit unexpected. Achiha Hideki had already collapsed and entered a vegetative state because of being unable to bear the psychological pressure, as such Kuroto judged him to be useless with no aptitude to survive the emotional stress needed to awaken Manjiki Sharingan, but it turns out that Hideki managed to surpass Kuroto's expectations. Hideki even managed to give Kuroto a bit of a hard time, while Kuroto used the Tensegan soul to sin to take over Achiha Hideki's body. Before this, Achiha Hideki entered a vegetative state, therefore, Kuroto took over Hideki's body with the Tensegan soul to send for the final despair test for Achiha Ryota that would allow him to experience true despair in order to stimulate him emotionally so that he can awaken the Manjiki Sharingan. But Achiha Hideki also somehow managed to recover from his vegetative state, and he awoke stronger than before, as such he was able to fight, albeit only to a certain extent but that was enough to give Kuroto a hard time. The activation of Uchiha Hideki Sharingan was also Hideki's doing, it just so happened that the instant was perfect so Kuroto didn't suppress that action and allowed Ryota to verify that he was really in the presence of his elder brother. Although this did allow Uchiha Ryota to confirm that the person sitting on the high back chair was indeed his brother, plunging him into grief, disbelief, and despair but the activation of Sharingan helped Hideki struggle against Kuroto more strongly and slowly regain his control over his body. And this is the reason why Uchiha Hideki who was sitting on the high back chair was acting strangely, with a distorted expression, pressing his one hand over the other, as if suppressing something within. That was because Kuroto and Hideki's souls were engaged in an extremely fierce conflict to take over complete control of the body, but Kuroto wasn't much worried as he knew that he was the dominant one. In the end, Hideki's love for his younger brother allowed him, a dead man who was on the verge of collapsing and fading away burn out all of his potentials and somehow awaken the Manjiku Sharingan. As soon as Kuroto discovered that Hideki has also awakened the Manjiku Sharingan, Kuroto no longer suppressed Hideki's soul and deactivated the Tensegan soul to send and came back to his main body. And now we have two titanic, humanoid chakra avatars facing off one another. On the Uchiha brother's side, Achiha Ryota held his forehead with the only arm he has, his breathing ragged and distorted, voice weak and unsteady, yet indifference apparent in his lifeless eyes. Looking at his brother who also awakened the Susanu just as he did, Ryota said, Nisan, no, we are not brothers anymore, I refuse to acknowledge someone like you as my brother, it turns out that you have always kept me in dark. Your talent and qualification have always been better than me. You also awakened the Manjiku Sharingan far before me, in fact, with the character you have displayed, I wouldn't even deny if you are the person responsible for controlling the Kyubi and destroying Kanoha. But what does it matter? After all, everything's going to end today anyway, I will make sure that I kill you today then kill every single traitor who made me go through this. Achiha Hideki, who just seized control over his body after such a tiring battle of the soul against Hyuga Kuroto, opened his mouth trying to explain to Ryota, but no sound came out, and he could only flap his mouth like a fish. Undoubtedly, Hideki is too weak to be able to control all his body. Ryota looked at Hideki with an indifferent look and spoke, Do you have any last wish to speak to me because this will be the last time, as either one of us will die today. Hideki stood up and put all his effort to speak, 
but all that came out was incoherent stammering, Rio. Ryota, BBB, be care, see careful. Be careful. Ryota snorted coldly and said, Well, of course, I will be careful against you, now I have realized just what kind of a sickening person you are, so I will make sure to be careful of you. Come on, Uchiha Hideki, one of us must die, and whoever wins will get eternal light, if I die, then you can have my Menjiku Sharingan as you planned, but if you die, then I will gain the eternal Menjiku Sharingan and then I will do what I have to do, with the Uchiha and Konoha. Uchiha Ryota knew full well that compared to Hideki who is in the top state, his possibility of winning are very slim given the physical and mental state he is in, but Ryota will not make it easy for this bastard brother to get what he wanted so easily, and if there is even a slight possibility, then Ryota will give everything he has to kill Uchiha Hideki and then have his revenge against Fugaku and Shursue. This is his last stubbornness. With that decision, Ryota controlled his golden Susanoo to bring out chakra swords in one arm while and punched Hideki's golden orange Susanoo with the other arm, followed by the attacks from the chakra sword. Boom! Boom! Each punch is enough to shatter the mountain, and as Hideki's Susanoo collided with the collapsed mountain, rubble was flying everywhere, smoke and dust kept rising in the sky. With just two punches and two sword attacks, Hideki Susanu was severely knocked to the ground and its appearance started becoming illusionary, as if it was close to fading away, clearly indicating that it is really hard for Hideki to keep it maintained for very long, because of his weak spirit. Ryota noticed that something was strange and frowned. Why is your chakra so weak? With just one combination of attacks, Ryota discovered that currently Hideki's chakra was even weaker than him, which shouldn't be the case and this made him suspicious. Could it be possible that he is intentionally acting weak so that I let down my guard? Yes, this has to be the case. With that thought, Ryota again started the onslaught of attacks. Each attack caused devastating damage to the already damaged surrounding, and Ryota's mind was also in a mess. The more he attacked, the more he discovered that Hideki was not acting and his chakra was slowly getting weaker. Moreover, Hideki made many attempts, but he was not able to resist. Just what the hell is he doing? He couldn't understand Hideki's intentions, so stopping midway he asked, Just what the hell is wrong with you? Stop pretending already. If you think that you can take advantage of me again, then you are dead wrong. Hideki panted weakly as he finally had the opportunity to catch his breath. Now he was also able to regain complete control over his body and explained, I. I am not pretending Otudo. You have have to listen to me. We... We are being played, played in the hands of that bastard who has been controlling everything from the start. Shut up. You are lying again. You just want me to drop my guard so that you can strike at that opportunity. Ryota retorted. Hideki shook his head. That's not true, Otudo. The other party is capable of using a weird type of jutsu that allows him to take control over others' body. I am no different from you. I also experienced the similar hell that you did, and finally when I couldn't awaken the Manjiku Sharingan, he deemed me unqualified and took control over my body to enact all that you witnessed. Please trust me. It was only when I saw you and your suffering did I manage to put up resistance and break free of his control, but unfortunately it was already too late. Although Ryota was highly skeptical of Hideki's explanation, he still decided to listen. Something was telling him that Hideki was not lying, or maybe this was just his hope. At this time, Hideki looked around vigilantly and explained, he has to be hiding here somewhere, in order to observe us, be careful Ryota, he might try to take advantage of our weakness and kill us to dig out our eyes. Ryota who heard this immediately became alert. Just who is he? Asked Ryota in doubt. He is. Hideki was about to answer the true identity of the person who was responsible for their misery suddenly paused midway because while he was looking around, he finally found the traces of that person. I found him. There he is. Why don't you come out already, you bastard? As soon as Hideki pointed, Ryota turned his face in that direction to look over. Beckoned by Hideki's shout a person waltz out leisurely from the cluster of rubble and spoke with a disappointed tone, Sigh, found me already? That's a bit of a letdown, and here I thought that the two of you will continue to duke it out like the idiots you are, one will kill the other saving me a lot of trouble as I wouldn't have to kill both of you, 
but it appears that won't be happening anymore. But I guess I should have expected as such, the feeling between a pair of brothers will always maintain a certain level of trust even when the two are after each other's lives, this has been the case before and will certainly not change. Uchiha Ryota and Uchiha Hideki immediately urged all their strength to strengthen their susanu as that person walked over. Before the small figure of Hugo Kuroto, the two massive skeletal figures of Susanoo were like two gods of death ready to cleave the head of a sinful mortal. Chapter 232 Looking at the familiar figure walking towards him, Ryota was suddenly alarmed. You! How are you still alive? I am sure I killed you before, or could it be that it was someone else? Hugo Kuroto chuckled and spoke while tilting his head to the side. Maybe? Or maybe not? Which one is it? But wait! You already forgot the lesson your beloved N.I. San taught you a while ago? Just because you witnessed me die does not mean that I am truly dead. I have to say, you are making me sad, and here N.I. San thought that he imparted some knowledge to his soon-to-be-dead Otudo. You bastard. That really was you. So, N.I. San was speaking the truth, you were really controlling him. Ryota roared. Kuroto chuckled condescendingly. The Hugo Kuroto that Ryota killed in his prison cell while trying to escape was obviously the low-quality clone Kuroto cultivated using his own DNA. At that time, he was controlling the clone body using the Tensegan Soul Descend technique. When Kuroto came to the prison cell, Ryota was forced into desperate circumstances, and he didn't even try to conceal the fact that he was breaking the seal. At that time, Kuroto was so embarrassed that he had no choice but had to turn his back to pretend that he was busy cleaning the surgical and torture devices and therefore couldn't notice what Ryota was doing. Because Ryota's act of breaking the four symbols was so obvious that even with his acting skills, Kuroto found it difficult to act he did not notice Ryota's actions. In the subsequent battle too, Kuroto did not use full strength. Even if Kuroto was controlling a low-quality clone, he wouldn't be so helpless in the face of weakened Ryota, therefore, Kuroto let Ryota kill that clone and see if Ryota could awaken Menjiku Sharingan after avenging his brother. However, for the sake of safety, Kuroto made sure to cut off one of Ryota's arms, that way he would no longer be able to use ninjutsu, thus greatly limiting his strength in battle. The Uchiha clan is indeed famous for their Sharingan, but they are also known for their fire style mastery, so the loss of one arm would again limit Ryota's combat effectiveness. This was pre-invested insurance to ensure that after Ryota awakens the Manjiku Sharingan, Kuroto would always have an upper hand in the battle that will occur in the future. And the next part is already understandable. Kuroto wanted Ryota to believe that he finally killed Yama, aka Hugo Kuroto, and avenged his brother so that when he discovers that his brother is still alive and learns the truth from his brother's mouth, the emotional stimulus would be extraordinary, thus, pushing Ryota into the depths of despair and successfully awakening the Manjiku Sharingan. Achiha Hideki said, Yes, it is him, Hugo Kuroto, the person responsible for making us go through all this, and Homasubi is Achiha Shursue, the traitor. Kuroto did not care about what Hideki said both of them are going to die regardless, so it does not matter. Hideki continued, I have to agree that you are a terrifying person indeed, but this time you miscalculated something. Kuroto muttered with an innocent and confused look, miscalculated? Whatever could that be? The more innocent Kuroto acted, the angrier Hideki got, he roared, you never expected that both of us would awaken the Manjiku Sharingan at the same time. Kuroto gave an oh, type surprised look and nodded, indeed, this is beyond what I expected, after all, you were supposed to be worthless, and yes it's a bit surprising that you managed to come out of your vegetative state, but what does that matter? The last part was spoken with a confused look. Hideki's eyebrows twitched upon Kuroto's blatant use of worthless. At this time, Ryota spoke with a cold smile, now look carefully here, what you see before yourself is Susanu the strongest technique of the ultimate dojitsu, this is the exact same power that you covet, but this is the power that only the gods of shinobi can have, a humble ant like you is not qualified to wield the supreme power of the Uchiha clan. Hideki also added, you asked what does that matter, right? It matters a lot, you are going to pay severely for your greed. Almost at the same time, Hideki spoke, 
both Ryota and Hideki controlled the arms of their respective Susanoo and hid towards the spot where Kuroto stood, one coming from the left and the other from the right. Boom! Boom! Amidst the sound of breaking wind, the two gigantic fists caused a lot of rubble to fly as a deep pit was smashed the power of two Susanoo, but Hugo Kuroto was nowhere to be seen. He has long since disappeared from his position and landed on top of a nearby rock boulder. Looking at Hideki and Ryota brothers fighting him, Kuroto thought, why do I feel to be in the same situation as Kabuto? This scene reminded Kuroto of the battle of Itachi and Sasuke against Yakushi Kabuto, where both Itachi and Sasuke also fought the battle using their Susanoo. However, the situation before Kuroto is obviously not on the same level as what Kabuto faced. Ads by Pub Future When facing Kabuto, Itachi was in the Edo Tensei state, so his stamina wasn't restricted because of his illness, and Sasuke also had the Eternal Manjiku Sharingan. So the level of danger that Kabuto faced was several times compared to what Kuroto is facing. Achiharyota lacks an arm, is severely injured, along with many burns, and the same is the case with Achiha Hideki, his body may not have many injuries because of the treatment that Kuroto gave him, but his spirit is gravely injured, thus his chakra is extremely weak. As a result, both Hideki and Ryota have reached their limit, Kuroto can even see that if he deliberately stalls them for a while, both Hideki and Ryota will not be able to hold on for too long and soon collapse. However, Considering that each pair of Manjiku Sharingan comes with its unique ability, so Kuroto doesn't want to take any risk, if either of them manages to awaken something like Kamui by some chance then that would be extremely troubling as both of them are now aware of his identity, therefore, Kuroto does not plan to underestimate the enemy which may give them a chance to escape here. At this time, Ryota laughed arrogantly, your greatest mistake was to covet the powers of Uchiha clan, a mere Hyuga slave like you is unworthy of wielding such power, now it's your turn to experience the despair that you put us through. Hideki added, do not worry, we will not be killing you right away, we will let you experience the taste of everything that you put us through, and your Hyuga clan will not be any different, they too will bear your sin. Kuroto spoke, you think so? But let me tell you something again, you seem to be making a mistake here. Ryota saw that even in the face of him and his brother, Kuroto was still calm and collected and he spoke with a cruel grin, who, you seem to be doing fine even if you understand what's coming next, and you are still capable of barking out? I would love to see how you wail when I rip you apart, I can't help but really look forward to torturing you more and more. However, unlike his brother, Hideki frowned, you said that we are making a mistake here, correct? What mistake are you referring to? Kuroto chuckled, Manjiku Sharingan is indeed a rare treasure in the shinobi world, and you Uchiha have every bit of right to be proud of it. Kuroto paused here and then continued, but if it does not have that particular power or something similar, then it is just a dispensable eye that only has some research value, and for your information, there are a lot of Uchiha in Kanoha, how many Manjiku Sharingan can they give me? Just think about it. The last part was obviously a bluff, Kuroto does not plan to do such a thing to the Uchiha clan, however, the first part was indeed correct, if the pair of Manjiku Sharingan does not have Kamui or a somewhat similar ability, then they are just valuable for research and nothing else. Cough cough. After coughing out a mouthful of blood, while he keeps himself steady, Hideki asked, that particular power? W what do you mean? Hideki was very concerned about what Kuroto said, from his words it can be easily understood that Hugo Kuroto is incredibly knowledgeable about the Manjiku Sharingan, and something was telling Hideki that it wasn't Shursui who gave such information to Kuroto, because Hideki can be sure that even he and his brother are unaware of something like Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, so Shursui should be unaware of it too, but Hugo Kuroto is, how is that possible? The fact that the Uchiha are unaware of their powers, but non-Uchiha is, has to be taken incredibly seriously. Ryota spoke, Nisan, don't waste your time talking nonsense with him, he won't answer it directly anyway, so it would be prudent to torture out all the information that we wish to know, so let's catch him and be done with it. Ryota knows that similar to his brother he too is very close to his limit, so if Hugo Kuroto is not captured in a short time, then the consequences are worse. But Ryota is not that worried, 
because he knows that a battle between the gods of Shinobi against Amir Tokabetsu Jonin will result in only one outcome. Chapter 233 Looking at the two Uchiha brothers who are severely injured and exhausted and still believe that they can easily defeat him, Kuroto chuckled lightly and raised his hand to print the hand seals. Sensing the chakra fluctuations, both Ryota and Hideki had a sudden bad feeling. Both of them did not understand the specific reason why they were having such a premonition, because in their belief no matter what Hyuga Kuroto may try to do, he wouldn't be able to change the inevitable. As, according to Ryota and Hideki, no one in the entire shinobi world would be able to resist two Menjiku Sharingan Awakeners at the same time, not even the former god of shinobi, Senju Hashirama. So, why was their uneasiness? Why a sense of dread plaguing their hearts? Was it just because of the shadow left by Hyuga Kuroto or was there something more to it? Ryota gritted his teeth and suppressing the apprehension in his heart he shouted, Don't waste your effort you damn ant. You have incurred the wrath of Uchiha, even if you beg us, you are going to face the consequences of offending the gods of S.H. Walla. Walla. Ryota suddenly stopped midway as the cyan blue chakra flames gushed out of Kuroto's body and covering his arms up to the elbow joint and legs up to the calves. P.S. The appearance of this type of cloak is similar to the thunder cloak that Luck Valtia of the Black Bulls from Black Clover uses. I already said that you seem to have made a mistake. Slowly rising in the air, Kuroto muttered in an indifferent tone, Even if both of you have awakened Menjiku Sharingan, it makes no difference, in the face of the level of strength that I have, your so-called Susanoo of the absolute defense is not even worth mentioning. In an instant, the cyan glow of Tensigen Chakra further illuminated the night sky. This! Ryota and Hideki looked at Kuroto's state with a surprised expression. They have never seen or heard about a technique like this, and both of them could tell that this technique was extremely dangerous based on the chakra fluctuations emitting from those cyan flames. And precisely why both of them realized this, they also understood that contrary to what they expected, Hyuga Kuroto is really not an ordinary shinobi. Facing such a change, Hideki shouted, You, how can you have such strength? It's just not possible. And if you have such strength then why the hell are you after Manjiku Sharingan? You can't even use our dojitsu. Just what the hell do you want from all of tea? Hideki did not get to finish his words, and Kuroto who was indifferently hovering in the air disappeared from his position. Even with the Manjiku Sharingan, Hideki was not even able to notice any trace of the position Kuroto went to. And suddenly feeling the same chakra fluctuations coming from above his head, Hideki was taken aback, he, he appeared above me? But by the time, Hideki realized, it was already too late. Boom! As soon as realized Kuroto's position, he tried to look up and move away from his spot, but suddenly a fist collided with the skeletal frame of his golden Susanoo, and the so-called absolute defense instantly shattered and disappeared into multiple ethereal fragments. Susanoo, the most powerful technique that a Manjiku Sharingan Awakener has in his arsenal of techniques, collapsed as if it was just a termite-ridden wooden figure in the face of Kuroto's attack. And this scene was indeed shocking. With the Susanoo armor broken, Hideki collapsed on the ground and muttered in disbelief, Why? How? How could this be possible? At the moment he awakened the Manjiku Sharingan, Hideki felt that there was nothing he has to fear anymore, and he could make storms in the shinobi world but the moment his Susanoo broke as if it was nothing, and that was not just Susanoo breaking but his worldview collapsing. Hideki again felt that he has returned to that very same torture cell, with his status being the prisoner suffering at the hands of Hyuga Kuroto, like a test subject and he no longer has any control over his own life or death. Whoosh! Another sound of breaking past the wind speed resounded in Hideki's ear. This sound brought out Hideki from his trance, he found that Higwa Kuroto was just a few meters away from him. Hideki was suddenly panicked and tried to retreat, you, you get away from me. But regardless of what he said or how hard he tried to resist, Hideki was controlled by some kind of traction force and flew towards Kuroto. Kuroto caught Hideki by the neck and without any hesitation, he gouged out Hideki's eyes with his other hand. Aw! Oh. Hideki's cries of pain resounded in the surroundings, but Kuroto didn't care. 
and after digging out both of Hideki's eyes, Kuroto threw him to the side and put the pair of freshly stolen Menjiku Sharingan in a small nutrition tank he prepared beforehand. Boom! A sudden collision sound of a giant chakra blade with an intangible barrier rang out while Kuroto was busy with this process. Achihara Yoda, who suddenly attacked Kuroto seeing that his brother was in danger couldn't deal any damage as the chakra blade from his Susanoo collided with an intangible gravity barrier that sent him flying back. Ryota was flabbergasted now. From the moment of Kuroto's activation of that unusual technique to now, only a few seconds have passed, but the battle situation has flipped by a 180-degree turn. Hugo Kuroto was too fast, Ryota couldn't even react to what happened, and when he tried to defend his brother the attack did no damage. How are you supposed to beat someone whom you can't even touch? If not for being sent flying back by that gravitational push that broke another few of his bones, Ryota might have even wondered if all of this is some jinjutsu. Kuroto did not care about Ryota's attack or Hideki's painful cries, he calmly sealed the small nutrition tank containing Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan inside a storage scroll. After he was done with this, Kuroto put the scroll inside his ninja bag and then turned to look at the bewildered Ryota. One done, another one to go. Muttered Kuroto with an indifferent expression. His expression had no signs of happiness even though he easily defeated Hideki and acquired a pair of Manjiku Sharingan. The reason is pretty simple, Hideki may have awakened the Manjiku Sharingan, but given the terrible state he was in, Kuroto is sure that Hideki did not even use 10% of the true power of the Manjiku Sharingan. Therefore, Kuroto's win is only natural even if he did not use the Tensigen Chakra mode and only chose to cloak his arms and legs with the flames of Tensigen Chakra. At this time, Ryota got up and spoke in horror, What, what in the hell are you? Are you even a human? Chuckles, are you so surprised? Were you not the one referring to yourself and your brother as gods of shinobi or what not? And now you are scared of a mere tokabetsu jonin one such as me? You really crack me up, Uchiha Yoda. But all things aside, does it really matter whether I am a human, a demon, or a god? Taking a pause, Kuroto continued with a mocking tone, I mean it's not as if that's going to change anything for you. Ryota drew out the short sword, which is actually Kuroto's Kuzanagi's sword, he was carrying with him and roared, give me back my brother's eyes. Following the shout, bloody tears spill out of Ryota's eyes. Kuroto was able to see chakra gathering in Ryota's left eye and understood that Ryota planned to use his Manjiku-specific dojitsu, Kuroto would obviously not be careless in the face of Manjiku-specific dojitsu, so pulling Ryota towards himself with rain will pull, Kuroto also flew towards the incoming Ryota by increasing his flight speed with a gravitational boost. Chapter 234 Under the effect of rain will pull, Kuroto rapidly approached the incoming Ryota. As he was flying forward, Kuroto was able to clearly observe the chakra fluctuations in Ryota's left eye. Without a doubt, Ryota planned to use his Manjiku-specific technique. Understanding this, Kuroto muttered, his lack of physical energy is restricting him to be able to use the his dojitsu. this is the best opportunity to deal a heavy blow. In just a short moment Kuroto noticed that although Ryota's chakra fluctuations were aggressive, because of his several injuries, the chakra was also quite chaotic, therefore his speed of molding and controlling chakra slowed down. Whoosh! Kuroto further accelerated his speed to such an extent that it left a whistling sound and while reaching close to Ryota, he brought his hand backward and punched the Susanoo with the same amount of strength as he did for Hideki's Susanoo. Boom! Crack! Cracks! Kuroto's fist collided with the Susanoo producing a loud sound, a large amount of dust and soot rose into the sky and the bone-cracking sound resounded. Crack! Cracks! When the dust cleared, Kuroto noticed that even though there were many cracks in the skeletal body of Susanoo, it still managed to resist Kuroto's attack without being one-shot. This was contrary to Kuroto's expectations as he can be sure that his strength and speed in this state far surpass Yandame Rakage and yet he couldn't smash Ryota's Susanoo as he did with Hideki's. That's strange? Well, no matter, I guess I'll have to put some effort into this one, muttered Kuroto. If Ryota's Susanoo can't be shattered in one blow then he has got more of them coming, let's see how many can he bear. Ha 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 ha. 
But before Kuroto continued, Ryota's maniacal laughter sounded from within the cracked ribcage of Susanoo, and his chakra fluctuations started to get more intense. Kuroto's eyes narrowed at this moment, and instead of initiating another barrage of attacks, he withdrew his fist and retreated backward, observing the changes with a doubtful expression. Ryota's laughter did not stop and soon, bloody tears flowed down from his eyes, giving him a devil-like look. Almost at the same instant, the skeletal body Susanu covering over his body started to change. The skeletal figure that only has the upper body part down to the waist grew tall in the blink of an eye with legs coming out from its lower frame, followed by the appearance of four arms, the muscles, and skin grew over the skeletal frame simultaneously, but it didn't stop there as armor formed over the humanoid figure for further protection, and that still wasn't the end. Soon it turned into a complete body Susanu that even had wings for flight, Tengu-like nose coupled with the robes and ornate armor. Just when Kuroto was stunned and thought that this was the end, another coating of golden flames shrouded over the entire complete Susanu body, making it more dangerous. These golden flames were not ordinary, they were conjured by the second Manjikyu technique that Uchiha Yoda awakened, and like another layer of armor, they enveloped the giant turning, the golden orange giant as hot as the core of the sun. Immediately afterward, Achihara Yoda's body entered the diamond-shaped cavity in the forehead section of the Susanoo. Are, Are you kidding me? That's the complete body Susanoo. Kuroto exclaimed in surprise. If it was someone else, they might be left stunned when they see such a majestic and omniscient figure, but Kuroto was just a little surprised and soon recovered. But one thing is very true, he really did not expect that Ryota could display such a thing here, at least not with the condition he is in currently. After a bit of thinking, Kuroto muttered in shirty, no, he really should not be able to use the complete body Susanoo. Although Susanoo is a technique common to all Manjiku Sharingan users, even geniuses like Shursui and Itachi have not been able to use something like full body Susanoo when they awakened Manjiku Sharingan. Moreover, Complete body Susanoo should only be accessible at the level of Eternal Manjiku Sharingan or by Six Paths Chakra, as in the case of Madara, Sasuke, and Abito, respectively. And Ryota does not have Eternal Manjiku Sharingan and definitely not the Six Path Chakra. Not to mention, Ryota's condition limits the amount of chakra that he is able to use. Therefore, common sense states that Uchiha Ryota should not be able to use full body Susanoo. And yet he is able to use the full body Susanoo, which can only mean one thing. This is the effect of his other Manjikyu Dojutsu. Because of all the aforementioned reasons, Kuroto could only think of this possibility. One of Uchiha Ryota's Manjikyu Sharingan techniques somehow allows him to strengthen the Susanoo to an unusually strong level that he is able to use the full body Susanoo. And it is indeed a possibility as there are many debates about Madara's Manjikyu ability being very similar to this one if not the same. So, Kuroto can't deny this possibility. Manjikyu Sharingan can have all sorts of bizarre and dangerous techniques derived from the user's emotions at the time of awakening the Manjikyu Sharingan. Based on his knowledge, Kuroto has divided these techniques into four different categories, based on their effects. The first category lists the Jinjutsu-type techniques, such as Shursui's Kodoi Mitsukumi, Itachi's Tsukuyami, and Fugaku's Taikiyakuzu. The second category lists the Ninjutsu-type techniques, such as Itachi and Sasuke's Amaterasu. The third category lists Augmentation-type or Transformation-type techniques, such as Sasuke's Kagatsuchi and Shinichi's Hachiman. The fourth type lists the strangest and most unpredictable space-time techniques, such as Abito and Kakashi's Kamui and Shinichi's Nakasawame. Ryota's Manjiku Sharingan technique, which allows him to transform the Susanoo can probably be listed in the third type, as it is most likely an augmentation-type technique. And the other technique which is somehow related to those golden flames can be listed in the second category as it is a ninjutsu-type technique. Well, Putting that aside and coming back to the battle. Since the full body Susanoo is capable of flight, so, at this time, Ryota controlled his majestic Susanoo and flew into the air, looking at Kuroto in the distance, he shouted with a burst of fiendish laughter, Ha ha ha, how? You have no way of beating me now, hand over my brother's eyes, and I will be kind enough to give you a painless death. 
Kuroto did not care about Ryota's words and muttered with an observant tone, It appears that both of you brothers are going to surpass my expectations again and again. I did not expect that you would be able to use something like the full body Susanu. Now I have to reconsider some things. Your Manjiku Sharingan pair turns out to be quite valuable actually. Full body Susanu allows the user to step into the realm of Super Kaga level, therefore, Ryota's Manjiku Sharingan is indeed very valuable. Ryota heard Kuroda's words and was reminded of the time he was tied to that pillar being tortured repeatedly while that masked freak muttered various analogies and theories, he was filled with rage and shouted angrily, I am going to show you what the hell is truly like. Speaking so Ryota used all his power to urge the Susanu to fight Kuroto, at this point he didn't even care about the consequences, all he wanted was to rip apart Hugo Kuroto. Chapter 235 At a small unimportant village about eight miles away from the mountain where Kuroto and Ryota were fighting. Inside an izakaya, a four-man team of shinobi passing through this village was taking a short break while having some rest, one of the ninjas of the team looking at the night sky through the glass window sill suddenly frowned, to confirm what he saw, he leaped out of the window and jumped on top of the roof and gazed towards the distance mountain intently. Noticing his actions, even the other members of the team also jumped on top of the roof one by one. And soon everyone found one golden light and one cyan light flickering across the distant horizon. The team of shinobi was unable to judge what exactly caused the flickering of lights because of the large distance and the cover of mountains so no one could figure out the exact cause of the glow to appear too. One of the shinobi muttered, Could it be possible that those lights are generated by fireworks? Another one said, Could be possible. But if I remember correctly that mountain is pretty isolated so I don't think there was any settlement nearby that mountain. The third shinobi who was looking at the map said solemnly, You are right, there is not a single commercial road passing nearby that mountain, let alone a village or town even small settlements are not there. In the shinobi world, land of fire is believed to be the richest and most stable of all nations, and this is true even when it comes to the economics of the nation and for this reason most of the villages, towns, and settlements that don't try to particularly isolate or hide for whatever reasons are settled nearby the commercial roads. Since no commercial road passes by that mountainous region, so the possibility of a settlement being built there is less likely. And the possibility of a grand fireworks display in places where there are no settlements built is obviously very less, therefore, everyone immediately reacted at those solemn words and understood that those lights are probably a result of powerful shinobi confronting each other. Although no one can understand why a fight between shinobi would generate such strong light that its traces are even visible miles away, what's more concerning is the identity of the shinobi in that confrontation. Kanoha may have put their hunting operation on a halt because of obtaining no result for the past two months, but this does not mean that the shinobi have lost their vigilance against Amitsukami, now everyone is more than ever clear that Amitsukami is not a simple bounty name organization and has to be dealt with extreme caution. Therefore, all shinobi have been ordered that they must pay close attention to any signs leading to Amitsukami during all their missions, secure that intelligence, and submit it carefully. The captain of the team thought for a while and finally ordered, fire the signal flares. Bang, wisely. Boom. Bang, wisely. Boom. Bang, wisely. Boom. Bang, wisely. Boom. For signal flares were fired simultaneously, this will surely allow other ninjas to discover their positions. Kuroto sighed. Seeing that Uchihara Yoda was using the full body Susanu, Kuroto immediately printed the hand seals, and this time his entire body was covered with the Tensegan Chakra cloak, and the very next instant seven truth seeking orbs appeared behind him. Kuroto transformed two of the black balls and formed a protective wall that defended against the attacks of the full body Susanu's chakra blades. Boom! 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 Attacks after attacks kept on coming, but not even a single one of them could get past the defense of the black wall. Although the golden orange chakra sword was extremely strong and as hot as the sun itself, it was still nothing in the face of truth seeking orb's defense. Each attack that landed on the defense wall broke that chakra sword, splashing flames all over the mountain, immediately igniting the whole mountain in a sea of golden flames. One more attack failed, 
and Ryota crouched in the diamond cavity of the full-body Susanoo, all while he was spurting out large amounts of blood, his coughing was even harder than previously, but he didn't care, he must kill that bastard. At this time, Kuroda waved his hand, removed the black wall from the front, and calmly observed Ryota's state. The unrestrained use of all the Manjiku techniques at the same time is obviously not easy for Ryota, and this could clearly be seen, Kuroto could perceive that Ryota was sacrificing his vitality to continue maintaining the Susanoo, so he was dying faster than ever. The situation has developed to such a point and given the fact that Ryota is pushing himself to such an extent despite understanding that he will die, so such a result is inevitable. Kuroto can be sure that he doesn't even need to attack anymore, just dodge, defend and parry against the attacks, and within just a few seconds Ryota's vitality will burn out completely as a result he will die. But Kuroto isn't going to go with that option, this is because he also noticed that signal flare fired just a second ago, which means that the battle here has been detected by some passing shinobi and this news will soon reach the ears of Kanoha authorities and within a few minutes hordes of shinobi will be coming here, so if the battle site is not cleared as early as possible then Kuroto will have too many troubles. Secondly, the fusion of the two Manjiku Sharingan pairs into Eternal Manjiku Sharingan might also require Ryota's input, therefore, Ryota's use has not been finished yet, so Kuroto does not want him to die so early. For these many reasons, Kuroto did not delay any longer and without any more wait, he directed the nine truth-seeking orbs in his right hand, three of the nine truth-seeking orbs merged together to form a much larger orb, then the remaining six orbs two merged into pairs of two orbs each as a result forming three large orbs. Under Kuroto's control, the resultant four were circling upon his hand following the pattern of a planetary system. Next, Kuroto transferred all the Tensigen chakras surrounding him towards his right hand. As a result, each of these truth-seeking orbs changed their color to azure color and they further inflated to the size of a small-tailed beast bomb, making them extremely deadly. Azure Will Reincarnation Explosion Translator's Note The appearance is similar to Naruto's planetary Rasengan, each ball being around the same size as a small-tailed beast bomb, and the color is azure blue. With a soft murmur, Kuroto threw the entire planetary system type attack towards the full-body Susanoo. On the other side, Ryota also got up and shouted, I. I am going to show you the consequences of offending an Uchiha. With the last battle cry, Ryota directed all his chakra towards the four swords held by the four arms of his Susanoo, each sword was at least 200 meters and the golden flames were also transferred creating a high temperature coating over the four swords. Finally, the Susanoo armor also started spinning in a drilling motion and rushed towards the incoming planetary azure will reincarnation explosion. The planetary balls were continuously inflating as they went closer to the incoming Susanoo. Looking at Ryota coming towards the planetary balls, Kuroto had a look of pity for him, this is because Kuroto is sure that no matter how much Ryota tries he wouldn't be able to resist this attack. And just as Kuroto expected, the final collision between the two attacks took place, as soon as the two attacks collided, a battle for the hegemony started, but this battle was very short and was soon concluded as planetary orbs easily overpowered that four swords drills and soon engulfed the Susanoo body in it. This would be the end of it. With Kuroto's murmur, the planetary balls that have engulfed the entire Susanoo body making a wave-like motion around the Susanoo body as well as the entire mountain. Inside that massive and turbulent wave-like vortex, the Susanoo did not pose any resistance and was completely shredded without leaving any fragment behind. But that wasn't the end of it, followed by the Susanoo, the entire mountain was engulfed by the turbulent vortex, and soon enough due to an extremely large amount of energy and no one controlling it, the vortex grew too unstable and soon caused an extremely large explosion. Boom! The explosion was so large that the altitude it covered stretched up to several kilometers in the sky and quite deep into the ground as well. But strangely enough, the radius of the explosion was not too large and only stretched up to the radius of several hundred meters. However, due to the high altitude it covered, the explosion was clearly visible from several miles away. The light and sound produced by the explosion were also quite lethal, as all the people blown away by the resulting terrible wind pressure generated due to the explosion and could only hear their ears buzzing for the next few minutes. After who knows how long, 
the dust finally cleared and Kuroto could clearly observe the situation. At this time, a pit, hundreds of meters deep, was left in place of the mountain and Uchihara lied in the center of that pit, battered and bruised, blood flowing out of all his wounds, his appearance was also aged. Ryota's eyes were lifelessly gaping at the sky, and seeing Hugo Kuroto arrive next to him, he can't help but ask, why did I lose? Kuroto did not bother to answer, because he understood that this question Ryota did not ask him, but asked from himself. Receiving no answer, Ryota did not bother to speak anything more and soon lost his consciousness. With this over, Kuroto immediately removed Ryota's Manjiku Sharingan, put them into another small nutrition tank, and stored the small nutrition tank inside a storage scroll. After putting the storage scroll inside his ninja bag, Kuroto lifted the faint of Ryota using rain will pull and then walked towards Hideki who was also lying unconscious not far away. Next Kuroto observed the entire battle site to see if anything that would point to him through the grape wine was left, although he has already removed all the traces from the mountain beforehand, you can never be too careful, so after checking that nothing was left, Kuroto finally breathed a sigh of relief as his objective of this entire ordeal was finally completed. With nothing more left to do, Kuroto printed the hand seals, and the very next moment both he and the unconscious brothers disappeared from the battlefield leaving nothing more than a cloud of white smoke. Chapter 236 Whoosh! 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 One after another a large number of shinobi leaped from one tree to another in the night forest. Although these figures were coming from all directions, their converging point was the same, that is, the place where that loud large explosion occurred a few minutes ago. As soon as they reached the place, the first thing that they were greeted with was the sea of golden fire that was burning uncontrollably, the next thing they discovered was the deep pit which lied at the center of the sea of golden flames, then there were several hundreds of meters long trenches all over the battlefield, overall, it appeared as if a devastating war just took place here, which was actually true in a sense. Before proceeding to take steps on the battlefield, the burning fire must be extinguished as the temperature of the flames was unusually high, which would cause burns if anyone carelessly treads at the battlefield. As such, the ninjas that arrived at the battlefield endured the charring smoke that choked their throats and high temperature that caused heat burns even from a distance and began using all sorts of water-style jutsu to extinguish the flames. However, some soon discovered that this unique type of golden fire was too violent and couldn't be extinguished by water. Fortunately, the fire was not spreading to the surroundings and was only burning this area so that was a bit relieving but they will have to put down the fire if the site analysis has to be done. Not long after, Shimura Danzo, the commander of the hunting operation soon led a team of shinobi and arrived at this burning site. Coming with Danzo were not only a large number of umbu of the root subdivision, many elite shinobi as well as the toad Sanin Jiraiya. Looking at the mess that this once upon a time calm mountain is now, Danzo had a gloomy look, nobody could understand what Elder Danzo was thinking at this moment. By now, the flames have started to gradually fade away for some unknown reason so it saved everyone a lot of trouble. Carefully walking through the battlefield, Jiraiya squatted before a long trench and looked at it thoughtfully. Hyuga Hizashi, who has recovered from his injuries walked to the side of the Toad Sanin and muttered in disbelief, what kind of ninjutsu can cause such trenches all over the battlefield? Are they caused by some kind of wind-style ninjutsu? Jiraiya knew that Hizashi wasn't asking this question from him but from himself, he still decided to speak, so shaking his head, Jiraiya spoke, these trenches are not made by the use of wind-style ninjutsu but because of sword energies. Unlike other shinobi from Konoha, Jiraiya's summoned toad, Gamabunta uses a tanto, of course, this tanto is small only relative to Gamabunta's humongous size but that's another topic of discussion. So, anyway, Gamabunta's tanto is a huge short sword. And Jiraiya is used to seeing many such trenches left on the ground every time he summons Gamabunta to participate in battles, therefore, he could easily tell that these trenches were not formed by some kind of wind-style ninjutsu but by some kind of giant sword slashes. Sword Energies Hizashi was stunned, what kind of sword can create such long trenches? This was beyond Hizashi's understanding if the trenches were tens of meters long then that could still be found acceptable, but hundreds of meters long? Were the people fighting here were humans or towering titans? 
While everyone was busy making their own analysis, the censor ninjas also got busy in search of any remains of chakra they can use to identify the people who fought here. The leader of the censor ninjas spoke, there are three types of chakra traces present here, two of which are very similar and should belong to the closely related people, and their chakra is very cold and evil, while the third type of chakra is kind of strange, I have never sensed something like this, but this chakra is unusually gentle and soothing completely opposite to that of the previous two. Uchiha Kaminari asked eagerly, can you identify who they are? Let me try and see if that is possible. The leader of the Sensornin again closed his eyes and tried to sense and after a few seconds, he shook his head, reading the characteristics of chakra is indeed possible, but their traces do not match with any type of chakra I have sensed before. But there's something strange, all the three chakras, he couldn't seem to be entangled in words on how to describe it. Jiraiya walked over at this time and questioned, what happened to these chakra traces? As soon as he noticed Jiraiya, he seemed to have found his point of reference and immediately spoke, Jiraiya-sama, the intensity of those two cold chakras is not any lower than yours, but what's troubling is that the chakra of the last one is much much higher than you. I have sensed the chakra of many people, even that of the Sandame Rakage, but it wouldn't be wrong to say that the chakra of this third person was even higher than him. And from this, I can conclude that the people who fought here are only three, not even a single more, moreover, that two evil and cold chakras were confronting that gentle and peaceful one. Jiraiya was also stunned if the chakra of those people reaches such an unusually high level and one of them even surpasses someone like the Sandame Rakage, then that is a very concerning issue. Not just Jiraiya, but even the other shinobi around were stunned by the censor Nin's words. It must not be forgotten that Jiraiya is one of the strongest shinobi of the current Kanoha, so the fact that it can be confirmed that all the three people who fought here were either on the same level as him or probably higher is indeed very concerning. One of the shinobi said, Could it possible that they are the last members of the Uzumaki clan? Censor Nin said, It's hard to judge, so I am not sure. Hizashi muttered anxiously, since when did so many powerhouses appear in the shinobi world? Akimichi Choza muttered with some sadness in his tone, if Yandame-sama was still alive then these rogue ninjas would have never dared to venture into the land of fire and cause so much trouble, sigh, but alas. And Uchiha spoke when he heard Akimichi Choza's, do not worry Akimichi Dano, as long as the Uchiha clan is in Kanoha, no one will be allowed to humiliate Kanoha get by after doing it. As he spoke, another Uchiha added, Yes, the Uchiha clan will never let these bastards get away after causing so much trouble for Kanoha. Another Uchiha question from the censor Nin, Can these chakra remains be tracked to find out where they went after the battle here? The censor Nin tried for a while and soon shook his head, I am afraid, but it's not possible. Is there really no way to track these three bastards? Questioned Uchiha Kaminari. The censor Nin said, there are traces remaining here, however, these three shinobi suddenly disappeared, as if they were never even here, so the most likely possibility is that they used some kind of space-time ninjutsu to leave this place as such tracking them is most likely impossible. Damn it! Uchiha Kaminari cursed, if only they can be tracked, then with the strength of Patriarch and Shir Sui, it might have been possible to catch them. From the beginning to the end, Shimura Danzo did not interject in the conversation, but he did pay close attention to it. And one doubt was lingering in his mind, he was wondering who the three of people who fought here are? If it is assumed that one side is related to Amitsukami then who is the other party? And why was that part confronting Amitsukami? Is it possible that they are Akatsuki, just like the last time? It does seem possible considering that the hostile relationship between the two sides is quite apparent. Kuroto's Secret Laboratory Looking at the two small nutrition tanks before him, each containing a pair of Manjiku Sharingan, Kuroto again breathed a sigh of relief. Although that stimulus test took too much of his time, and was filled with many accidents and variables, the final result he obtained was worth all the hassle Kuroto had to go through. Then Kuroto's gaze specifically turned towards the small nutrition tank containing Uchiha Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan, what could be Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan specific techniques? Since Hideki did not use any of the techniques in the battle other than the Susanoo, so it was a little hard to guess. 
Kuroto's thirst for knowledge is very similar to his sensei Orochimaru and is something he really can't restrain. For this reason, he has been so obsessed with all sorts of experiments. Discovering secrets and exploring the unknown gives Kuroto a sense of accomplishment and satisfaction which is one of his main driving forces pushing him forward towards his goal step by step. Therefore, Kuroto did not wait any longer and quickly used the remaining of the two low-quality clones, putting the clone body on the test bench, Kuroto quickly used the chakra scalpel to remove the semi-completed Byakugan from the eye sockets. Putting them in a solution jar at the side to keep them fresh, Kuroto transplanted Uchiha Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan in those empty eye sockets of the clone body. After having finished all of this, Kuroto sat on the chair at the side and made the hand seals, ten Tensegan Soul Descend. As soon as the seals were finished, Kuroto's main body suddenly became lethargic and lowered its head, and at the same instant, the clone body lying on the test bench opened its eyes. Chapter 237 After transferring his soul to the clone body, Kuroto suddenly opened his eyes, but a sudden sense of dizziness attacked, Kuroto had to grit his teeth and immediately close his eyes and then open again after a bit of adapting. At this time, Kuroto's brain was able to perceive a strange red and black pattern from his eyes. Kuroto's state was in sort of a trance due to the dizziness and he had to spend a few seconds getting used to the feeling and then try getting up. It's really not an easy task to use someone else's dojutsu. Kuroto muttered helplessly. Now Kuroto can somewhat understand that people like Nagato and Kakashi, who could adapt to the transplanted dojutsu albeit only to a limited extent really have a tough time. Shaking his head to let go of these thoughts, Kuroto focused on adapting to these eyes, and when the sense of dizziness subsided, he was finally able to concentrate to some extent, as such he carefully got up from the test bench and walked towards the mirror. He really wanted to observe these transplanted eyes, and Kuroto was a bit surprised as he saw those unique black eyes with a scarlet pattern but at the same time, there was a bit of letdown because the pattern was not that of the Manjiku Sharingan, but of the Three Tomo Sharingan. Understanding this, Kuroto muttered, no wonder the dizziness suddenly subsided. Initially, Kuroto was a bit happy and felt that the adaptability of the Manjiku Sharingan was much easier than he expected as it only took a few minutes to adapt to the transplanted pair of Manjiku Sharingan, but it appears that wasn't the case, as the Manjiku Sharingan automatically retracted to the three tomo state. But after pondering for a while, Kuroto felt that this is natural. After all, even Kakashi, whose Manjiku Sharingan was awakened by his own chakra also couldn't fully adapt to the Manjiku Sharingan and had to spend a whole lot of time to train and get used to the Manjiku Sharingan. Even Nagato's case was the same and so was Danzo's. This clearly shows that transplanting others' dojutsu is never going to be easy. Of course, Kuroto has a lot of advantages over these people. Firstly, Kuroto himself is a shinobi who has access to two dojutsu being the Byakugan and the Tensigen. Secondly, because of his experience in adapting to the Tensigen at the time of awakening it, Kuroto will obviously not face as many problems as Kakashi and others went through. Thirdly, his soul is used to the feeling of Tensigen Chakra, which is a superior dojutsu compared to Sharingan and Manjiku Sharingan so that's another plus point for Kuroto. And finally, compared to Kakashi who had no personal knowledge, resource material, or guidance on how to use Sharingan and Manjiku Sharingan, Kuroto is in a much better case, there is a lot of information he tortured out of the Uchiha brothers, then there is Shursui and Shinichi who would not mind giving him all the information he needs, thus Kuroto wouldn't have to spend a lot of time and effort in getting used to the basics, unlike Kakashi. With that clear, Kuroto used the same approach to activate the Manjiku Sharingan as he used with the Tensigen. And soon enough, as the chakra was directed towards the eyes, the three black tomos spinning in the scarlet copy wheel started converging together. Followed by the merging, the same sense of dizziness again struck Kuroto, the sudden trance caused by the dizziness interrupted the eye-opening process as the first attempt resulted in a failure. Huff, huff. Stabilizing himself to prevent the fall, Kuroto heavily gasped for breath, although this attempt resulted in a failure there was no sign of disappointment on Kuroto's face. This is because Kuroto understood that his approach was indeed correct as he expected, it's just that it would take some time to get used to the pressure of Manjiku Sharingan. However, time is a currency that Kuroto lacks the most. 
Slow adaption is also undesirable, although the current clone he is using does not have genes belonging to the Uchiha clan, no matter how much effort is required to adapt in the least amount of time possible, Kuroto must do it. Having made up his mind, regardless of whether he could bear the immediate burden or not, Kuroto Forcible directed Churka to the Sharingan to activate the Manjiku Sharingan. Under Kuroto's control, the chakra in his body violently gathered around the veins moving towards the eyes and flowed into the Sharingan, as a result activating the Manjiku Sharingan, but the sense of dizziness interrupted midway. TCH, now even a pair of Manjiku Sharingan wants to stump me? As he cursed, Kuroto's expression hardened and he put more effort. Kuroto didn't know how long it passed, but the dizziness finally started to diminish and no longer prevented Kuroto from concentrating and thinking. At the same time, his blurry vision also gradually started clearing up. On his image inside the mirror, Kuroto also saw that the pattern of the eyes has finally changed from the three tomo to that of Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan. Soon, information started coming to his mind about the name of some techniques and their mechanism. So, it's called Dekokuten? Kuroto muttered with a thoughtful expression. The techniques of both the eyes are the same, it is called Dekokuten and it guards the user against darkness and guides the user towards the light, the darkness can be anything, that is spiritual, Jinjutsu attacks, soul attacks, or Fuinjutsu attacks that affects the soul of the user can be counted in the range of Dekokuten's coverage. In other words, Dekokuten is a type of defensive jutsu that guards the user's soul. It's just that it does not have any active use, but a passive one that would help the user stay guarded against any type of soul-damaging attacks. Jutsu like Kodoi Mitsukumi, Tsukuyami, Taikiyakuzu, Shiki Fujin, Dead Demon Consuming Seal, would no longer have any effect on a person who has Dekokuten in his arsenal. Understanding this, Kuroto thought, although this dojitsu wouldn't be useful most of the time when needed in the face of people like Shursue, Itachi, Fugaku, and Uzumaki Fuinjutsu users, Dekokuten will be a real lifesaver. As such this technique was really valuable. Who knows what is the true extent of this ability, there might even be a possibility that this dojitsu can even resist jutsu like Mugen Tsukuyami and Karma Seal to a certain extent, and if that's really the case, then Dekokuten is incredibly valuable, and Kuroto can't help but feel greedy for this technique. Since he has already found out the technique of Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan, next he replaced those eyes with Ryota's Manjiku Sharingan to better understand what are the techniques Ryota awakened. As soon as, the information was received by his brain, Kuroto learned that the two techniques Ryota awakened are called Yayorozu and Amatsuhikon for the left and the right eye respectively. Yayorozu the technique of the left eye is an augmentation type technique and allows the user to increase the physical stats of all the things that he wants to, sort of like a buff or strengthening for the physical aspects of things. While Amatsuhikon the technique of the right eye is also an augmentation type technique, but it is different from its antipode, Amatsuhikon that allows the user to increase the energy stats of all the things that he wants to, sort of like a buff or increase the energy aspects. After getting this information, Kuroto was able to understand how Ryota was able to maintain such a large Susanu with the condition he was in and was still alive even after suffering damage from Azure Will Reincarnation Explosion. Ryota used Yayorozu to increase his own and Susanu's physical aspects, then used Amatsuhikon to increase the chakra in his body to supply the necessary amount of chakra needed to maintain such a large full-body Susanu. But there was still one thing confusing Kuroto, if the two techniques are these then what was that golden fire? I mean his Susanu's color is indeed golden but those golden flames were a bit different so they couldn't have been the same or is it possible that he created that golden fire using these two techniques? This might be the case, or is it possible that those golden flames are abilities of Ryota's Susanu itself? Each Susanu grants its user some kind of weapon, perhaps Ryota's Susanu allowed him to wield those golden flames. I will have to look into that later on. Mutter Kuroto With that out of the way, Kuroto was now in another dilemma. He has to choose two techniques out of the three that he is going to keep at the time of fusing the two Manjiku Sharingan pairs into the Eternal Manjiku Sharingan pair. 
It is inevitable that when the two pairs fuse to give the eternal Manjikyu, the abilities of one of the pair will be lost, and since all the three techniques are incredibly useful, so there is a tough decision before him, and Kuroto will have no choice but to make it sooner or later. Which one to abandon, Dekokuten, Yayorozu, or Amatsuhikon? A tough decision indeed. Chapter 238 about the method of fusion of two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan into a pair of Eternal Manjiku Sharingan and key points related to it, Kuroto isn't really sure how it's achieved, because there is not much information available in regards to this that Kuroto can use for reference. After all, there were only two people shown to have ever awakened Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, and they were obviously Uchiha Madara and Uchiha Sasuke. In Uchiha Madara's case, Close to nothing but speculations are known about Uchiha Madara and Uchiha Izuna's Manjiku Sharingan abilities. Senju Tobarama may have stated that he has seen Amaterasu before, and even if we assume that Amaterasu was related to Uchiha Izuna, but there is no hard evidence to prove whether that speculation is indeed correct or not. Even the techniques Uchiha Madara had after awakening the eternal Manjiku Sharingan are unknown. Therefore, the only one Kuroto can refer to is the eternal Manjiku Sharingan of Uchiha Sasuke. Itachi's Manjiku techniques were Amaterasu and Tsukuyami and before his death, Itachi used transcription seal to seal Amaterasu and Sasuke Sharingan for it to be activated the moment Sasuke sees the so-called Madara's Manjiku Sharingan. And coincidentally enough, Sasuke awakened Amaterasu as one of his Manjiku techniques. Although Sasuke's awakening was also related to his hatred and intent to destroy Konoha, the fact that he specifically awakened Amaterasu couldn't have been just because of his hatred. Of course, Kuroto isn't sure whether this conjecture of his is correct or not, but it could be true as there is no evidence to deny this possibility. So, there is a possibility that Itachi's sealing of Amaterasu and Sasuke's Sharingan played some role in Sasuke's awakening of Amaterasu. Therefore, we can consider that the transcription seal might have some degree of influence on the Manjikyu technique of an awakener. And if this conjecture is true only then can Kuroto make the choice. Kuroto has decided that he would choose Dekokuden of Hideki's Manjikyu Sharingan and Yayorozu of Ryota's Manjikyu Sharingan. The idea is to seal Hideki's Dekokuden into Ryota's right eye using the transcription seal. In this way, it may be possible for Ryota's right eye to gain the technique Dekokuden of Hideki's eye at the time of awakening Eternal Manjiku Sharingan. As for the original ability of Ryota's right Manjiku, which is Amatsu Hikon, Kuroto feels that although this technique is also incredibly useful, it is would be relatively unnecessary for him, after all, he already has Ryumyaku with him so Kuroto wouldn't be facing problems of chakra shortage as far as he could think and Kuroto still finds Dekokuten to be more useful with more potential compared to Amatsuhikon. Therefore, Dekokuten and Yayorozu are the most optimum choices. Mutter Kuroto while walking towards the other room of his secret laboratory. This room was only recently created and was equipped with all sorts of medical devices, additionally reinforced walls and surroundings with complicated sealing combinations capable of completely destroying the room instantly if Kuroto desires so. Although it is said that the room is equipped with all sorts of medical devices, but in actuality, not much is present here of significant importance. There are only two large nutrition tanks equipped with a complete life support system. The people inside the large nutrition tanks are none other than the Uchiha brothers who were being tortured by Kuroto until not long ago. After the previous battle, Kuroto gouged the Manjiku Sharingan of both the brothers coupled with irrecoverable injuries they suffered during their time in prison cells, and in the following battle, both of them are in a deep coma and would have died within minutes if not for Kuroto to keep them alive using the life support system. But even Kuroto knows that although they are alive, their bodies and spirits are beyond exhaustion and will never experience true recovery as such they won't ever be able to get back to their peak state. Therefore, ideally, both of them are useless more so given the fact that Kuroto has stolen the eyes of both of them so they should be disposed of as early as possible to avoid any risks but Kuroto wants to keep them alive a little longer. And to not be careless, he has made sure to put seals all over their body including their blood, therefore, Kuroto can be sure that let alone breaking the seal? They wouldn't even be able to blink their eyes unless Kuroto orders so. They are also being continuously injected with anesthesia so would always be staying in a coma unless Kuroto feels the need to wake them up. 
there are many reasons Kuroto kept them alive, first is obviously to show that he will always remain grateful for both of them that they volunteered to be tortured and willingly offered their Manjiku Sharingan to Kuroto as such they must suffer less pain from here on until their eventual death. After all, Kuroto is not a lunatic or a madman who has a special interest or takes pleasure from torturing his captives, right? So, there is obviously not much reason left for him to torture these two anymore. The second reason is obviously that their use has not ended yet. Until he finally obtains the eternal Manjiku Sharingan, it would be best to keep both of them alive for convenience's sake as Kuroto could need their further assistance in the fusion process. Nodding to himself, Kuroto left the room where the two Uchiha would be living their last days and returned to the main lab while thinking, it would be best to learn transcription seal before the fusing the two pairs of Manjiku into eternal Manjiku. Based on the two known instances of transcription seal being used, it was used by the people of the Uchiha clan being Madara and Itachi indicating that the transcription seal was undoubtedly developed by the Uchiha clan, so if Kuroto wants to learn transcription seal he can only obtain information about it from the Uchiha clan. But that aside, what Kuroto must do at the earliest are not the Manjiku fusion or learning transcription seal. Kuroto's current top priority is something else. The top priority right now is to clear up the suspicions on Shir Sui being Homosubi, the matter of learning the transcription seal, Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, cultivating the fire clone body with Uchiha clan DNA and all can be done at a later date, but suspicions on Shir Sui must be resolved first so the restrictions imposed on him will be cleared up. With this thought, Kuroto sat on a chair and devised the outline of the next plan he is going to be using to achieve this purpose. While thinking he can't help but let out several yawns one after another. Honestly, Kuroto is a little tired after tonight's ordeal. It was only due to the adrenaline rush because of the excitement of obtaining two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan that he did not notice it until now but now that this excitement has subsided, the exhaustion has taken over so Kuroto closed his eyes and took a temporary rest to recover his spirits and counted all the gains from the Echiha brother torture arc. After a short rest of an hour, Kuroto took a deep breath and unfolded the latest outline map to plan out the next course of action. Being an umbu has many perks and this task where Team 11 was responsible for monitoring the entire hunting operation of Amitsukami allowed Kuroto to be aware of all the routes that were being used, are being used, or will be used in the future. Therefore, it is very easy for him to find the safest and most effective location to bring Homosubi into public sight. Next morning. Uchiha clan grounds, Shirsui's house. Similar to the past few days, Shirsui was doing some practice in the training range in the backyard training range of his house. Although he is under house arrest under Patriarch's order, Sher Sui is allowed to carry out his training in the backyard to keep his skills rust-free. Tuck! 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 Amidst the sound of shuriken piercing the wooden targets, Sher Sui who was flipping in the air slowly landed on the ground with his back facing the targets. Turning around, Sher Sui glanced at the several targets placed at different angles and distances from his position and was happy to find that all the shuriken he threw were piercing the center point of the targets, and the corners of his lips curved in a proud smirk. Even in the Uchiha clan, not everyone can use such meticulous and precise shuriken jutsu therefore Sher Sui's mastery and skills in shuriken jutsu are undoubtedly recognized as the best within the clan. Of course, Sher Sui will feel some pride about this. Clap 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 clap. At this time, the sound of clapping was heard from the other side of the training field. Turning his head towards the direction from where the sound of clapping came, Sher Sui said with a smile, Itachi, you are here. Yes, Sher Sui San, Itachi nodded. Oh, Sher Sui San, I. I am also here. A small figure that sprang out from behind Itachi said. Sher Sui quirked his eyebrow and spoke with a sly grin, Era. Sasuke, you are here too? I am really sorry, Sasuke. You are just too small that I was unable to notice you a moment ago. Chapter 239 Sasuke pouted and looked a little upset after hearing Shirsui's words. Although Sasuke was abused by Yama, he didn't suffer much damage aside from some traumatic experience. And that trauma was also relieved because of the psychological care Itachi provided Sasuke after that experience, 
After all, Uchiha Itachi wouldn't want his brother to suffer, right? And unlike the cold and indifferent Uchiha Sasuke who fell into loneliness and hatred after the annihilation of the Uchiha clan at the hands of Itachi, he is still a cheerful and sweet kid who seeks his brother's and father's attention and acknowledgement more than anything. So Shursui's words made him a bit sad and annoyed. Itachi noticed Sasuke's change and flicked his forehead, Shursui-san is just teasing you Sasuke. Sasuke blushed and after nodding at his brother's words, Sasuke turned around as his gaze turned towards the shuriken targets spread all over the training field, and his expression turned to an eager one, it seemed as if he was itching to try. Understanding Sasuke's eagerness, Shursui handed him a shuriken and said, Wanna give it a try? When Itachi was around your age he was already very good at it, he was even able to hit multiple targets easily. Sasuke's eyes gleamed with excitement, taking the shuriken from Shursui's hand, Sasuke turned his head and looked at his brother, Nisan, is that true? Were you really able to hit the bull's eye of multiple targets when you were of my age? Itachi smiled awkwardly and finally nodded in acquiescence. In fact, when Itachi was four years old, he had even been to the battlefield, killed enemy ninjas, and had to burn the sight of mountains of dead bodies to understand what war truly is. Something that is much traumatizing from what Sasuke went through a few months ago. If Nii San can do it, then I can do it too. After saying that, Sasuke who was full of confidence aimed at the target directly in front of him and threw the shuriken with all his strength. Why-ish? With the sound of cutting through the air, the shuriken thrown by Sasuke flew out of Shursui's courtyard and disappeared. Aho! 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 An awkward silence. And the calling of Aho crow. Immediately afterward, a shout came from outside the courtyard, who is throwing shuriken around. Sasuke immediately shrank, his face full of frustration and disappointment. Even Shursui didn't know what to say, in the past two years, he has been so busy with the missions of Team Eleven and the matters between the clan and the village that he had no time to pay attention to Sasuke, only now did he realize that compared to Itachi whose talent is simply otherworldly, Sasuke's talent may not be same. While three remained in silence, a crow flew down from the sky and sat down on his shoulder. Shursui received the secret message scroll from the crow and unfolded the scroll without minding Itachi and Sasuke's presence. As soon as Shursui saw the content of the scroll he frowned slightly, the reason was that the scroll only recorded a time and the name of the location. Seeing Shursui's expression, Itachi asked, What's wrong Shursui-san? Asked by Itachi, Shursui just shook his head in response without giving any detail and burned the scroll immediately. Shursui may have confessed to Itachi that he is Homosubi, but he still doesn't want Itachi to get involved in the matters of Amatsukami, for the time being at least. Somewhere in the hinterland of the Land of Fire. Uchiha Haragi with whom Kuroto once had a duel and Uchiha Yuto Atokabetsu Jonin were patrolling the territory. This route is a shortcut connecting the Land of Fire with the Land of Hot Water and is often used by bounty hunters, missing Nin, and other mercenary ninjas because of its remoteness and complex terrain. Uchiha Yuto said, did you hear the news that a mountain not far from the village suddenly collapsed last night? Achiha Haragi nodded, mm, there are even speculations that someone of Amatsukami was fighting there, and the result was an explosion that left a great amount of damage to the nearby territory. Yuto sighed with frustration, just what in the hell is this Amatsukami? Why is there no information about this organization? Haragi glanced at Yuto and snorted, hmm? Are you scared? Yudo chuckled condescendingly, aren't you scared at all? The village has been searching for their traces for the past two months and yet there is no success. Ryota-sama and Hideki-sama were captured so easily by them, Shursui was defeated by them, even Sandane couldn't. Yudo suddenly stopped and his gaze narrowed at something. Hiragi turned towards him and asked, what happened? Yudo raised his hand and pointed into the distance with his finger trembling, you... Do you also see those two? They, they, they wouldn't happen to members of Amatsukami, right? Hiragi followed the direction of Yudo's gaze and his expression shrank immediately. The sight he saw was not at all horrifying or anything, just two people wearing the unique type of black cloak with a golden threading pattern all over it, a unique symbol around the chest part of the cloak, and finally a mask over their face. 
The symbol on one of their chests was that of the fire chakra nature while the other one had the symbol of wind chakra nature. Similarly, the masks they wore were also different, one wore a fire pattern mask while the other one had a wind pattern mask. You are right, they, they have to be members of Amitsukumi. Hiragi was surprised and thought silently, damn it. They have come after us this time, what, what should we do now? The achievements of Amitsukumi can really make anyone panic when they suddenly encounter members of that fearsome organization. Successfully infiltrating Kanoha, assassinating the leader of Kumo the Cure's peace delegation and finally managing to escape with his body, even under the combined siege of Sandame Hokage, a large number of Umbu, and Kanoha military police force. Successfully defeating Uchiha Shursue, as well as kidnapping Uchiha Hideki and Uchiha Ryota one after another without leaving any trail behind makes everyone subconsciously have a fear of Amitsukumi. And now that Hiragi and Yudo have suddenly noticed two members of Amitsukumi coming from the opposite end, they are clearly frozen and can't think of anything. Based on the intelligence, the two members who are coming from the opposite end are already known, the one wearing the fire pattern mask is Homosubi, the person said to have the Manjiku Sharingan. While not much is known about the second person walking on the side, but he did participate in ambushing two members of Umbu Team 11 and based on the intelligence those two have given, he seems to be stronger than Suijin and Homosubi. Yudo took a deep breath and spoke with a stammering voice, What, what should we do, what should we do now? Immediately Hiragi also took a deep breath and shouted, Fire the signal flare. What? Yudo was taken aback and immediately spoke, Then what about us? We will definitely have the same fate as Ryota-sama and Hideki-sama if, if we stay here. Do you want us to just die? How about, why why don't we run away now? Hiragi took out the signal flare from the ninja bag on his waist and spoke with a bitter tone, Don't be stupid. Do you seriously think that we can escape now, at least this way, it will be known? Saying that Hiragi immediately fired the signal flare. Bang, why I asleep. Boom! As soon as the signal flare was fired successfully, Hiragi breathed a sigh of relief. Although it is still daytime, the signal flare will be easily noticed, therefore, Hiragi was not worried that others wouldn't be able to spot the signal flare. The two members of Amitsukumi noticed that Hiragi was firing the signal flare, but they did not take any action to interrupt him and were calmly walking towards them. Seeing that the two members of Amitsukumi did not have any intentions of retreating, both Hiragi and Yudo looked at each other and gulped in nervousness, following which they both nodded to each other with a hardened gaze, if our death is unavoidable then it is better to die fighting rather than running, were the silent words that their gaze said to each other. Both of them immediately took out their weapons and got ready for the fight, Hiragi had his favorite and trusty sword, while the other one had a kunai in both his hands. As the two members of Amitsukumi came closer and closer, Hiragi let out a battle cry, Although the odds are not in our favor, as Uchiha, we must not cower or run away in the face of the enemy of the clan and village. Yudo also gritted his teeth and finally nodded. Yes. Fight to the death. At the moment Hiragi and Yudo finished, the two members of Amitsukumi were just seven steps away from them. Step. Traces of sweat flowed down the temples of both the Uchiha. Step. Gaze hardened and locked at the enemy. Step. Chakra started to flow down to muscles amplifying strength. Step. Muscles started expanding, ready to take action any moment. Step. Weapons were drawn backward to give them momentum. Step. Lungs expanded to fill in the necessary air. Step. Both Hiragi and Yuta ready for the battle. Step. 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 Both Hiragi and Yudo were ready to die, but the two members of Amitsukumi did not give the two Uchiha even a single glance from beginning to end and passed by them as if both Hiragi and Yudo were just ordinary rabbits in the forest. A strange silence. Uh, Uchiha Yudo let out an awkward groan at what just happened. Hiragi also had an awkward expression but indescribable humiliation suddenly flooded his mind. Damn it! You dare ignore us. With a roar, 
Haragi turned around and rushed towards the two members of Amatsukumi. At this time, Homosubi turned his head to look back causing Haragi to suddenly stop his attack, no word was spoken between them and Haragi suddenly dropped his sword. The other member of Amatsukumi did not even turn around from beginning to end as if he did not care about what Haragi intended to do. With Hiragi frozen midway, Homosubi retracted his head and walked away. As the two members of Amatsukumi walked away, Achiha Yudo carefully came next to Hiragi and spoke while shaking him, Hiragi-san. Hiragi-san, what's wrong with you? Are you all right? Urged by Yudo, Hiragi finally took a breath and immediately collapsed to the ground, the pressure and bloodlust a few moments before were too much for him to bear, his expression was in a daze and he murmured, Manjiku Sharingdon. That, that person really has Manjiku Sharingdon, moreover, the pressure he released was too terrible. Chapter 240 Inside a Hidden Cave in the Territory of the Cough 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 Coo, as soon as Kuroto removed the Homosubi mask that he wore earlier, he started coughing uncontrollably, and the coughs did not show any signs of subsiding but became more and more intense to the point that blood started to come out of the throat, it felt as if someone was choking his throat a few moments ago. After a long time passed, the coughing finally calmed down and Kuroto could finally breathe in relief. While wiping away the blood from the corner of his mouth Kuroto sighed and took in the nutrition drug especially created by him to prevent this low-quality clone body from degrading before getting the job done. At this time his face was dull and showed clear signs of weakness, undoubtedly the burden of Manjiku Sharingan on this body is very severe, Kuroto only activated the Manjiku Sharingan for a few seconds to scare Achiha Hiragi but those few seconds also seems unbearable. It's no wonder that even keeping the Sharingan in the three tomo state is very difficult and exceedingly exhausting for Kakashi, makes me wonder if he isn't secretly half Uzumaki or possibly half Senju that he even managed to master the use of his Manjiku Sharingan albeit through some training but that's a big achievement compared to Danzo who had to rely upon the Hashirama cells to achieve Inyang balance so as not to not lose himself or be overwhelmed. Mutter Kuroto while still panting for breath. Judging from the current condition of this low-quality clone, using the full potential of the Manjiku Sharingan will be next to impossible. While playing with the Homosubi mask in his hand, Kuroto thought, if I want to truly be able to use the power of Manjiku Sharingan or the eternal Manjiku Sharingan then it can only be done by cultivating a clone body with the Uchiha clan DNA. Otherwise, being able to fully display the power of Manjiku Sharingan is only a dream, neither Shimura Danzo nor Hitaki Kakashi was ever able to display the full power of Sharingan. Understanding this, Kuroto muttered, other than Sharingan, the Uchiha clan is also known for their mastery over the fire style so using Uchiha DNA for cultivating the fire nature clone to be used for the Chimera technique will not deviate from my main plan and I will also be able to use Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, but the question is, whose cells should I use for the cultivation of the clone? Kanoha Village The news about the sudden appearance of members of Amatsukumi soon spread towards the land of fire and was relayed to Kanoha Dakur with the fastest posts. Sandame who received the news immediately ordered an emergency Jonin Council summon. The shinobi participating in the meeting included Sandame along with the three elders of the advisory board, Sanin Jiraiya, patriarchs of all the major clans, including the Uchiha clan of course, as well as several elite Jonin. A series of discussions took place in the meeting and the details were only known to the people participating in the meetings. After the Jonin Council meeting was over a private Uchiha assembly was organized upon Uchiha Fugaku's orders. In the assembly hall, Uchiha Fugaku sat with a serious expression. The elites participating in the assembly also sat quietly with serious expressions on their faces, although nobody spoke anything, all the members had a strong will to fight and avenge the two missing Uchiha while there were also some traces of an unspeakable dread and nervousness in everyone's heart that they chose to keep hidden in there. Fugaku could see the psychological state of all the people present at the meeting but he did not point that out, these are the trials that everyone must overcome on their own, as the patriarch, he will of course be their support and guide if necessary but this does not mean that he will spoon feed them. Death is something that a shinobi must always be prepared to face, and Fugaku trusts that these Uchiha shinobi loyal to him will not disappoint him. 
Finally, his gaze turned toward Shursui, and a trace of doubt appeared in Fugaku's mind. After having tested Shursui with his dojutsu, Fugaku was convinced that Uchiha Shursui is homosubi therefore Fugaku did not have any more interest in the hunting operation organized by the village to hunt down Amitsukumi, on the contrary, he was more concerned about what Amitsukumi really wanted or to be specific, what was their goal that Shursui was convinced to not only betray the clan but also the village. But now that the news of the sudden appearance of Homosubi was passed back from the front lines, especially by Haragi and Yudo, so Fugaku isn't sure anymore whether Shursui is really Homosubi? Is it possible that I misunderstood Shursui? The reason for Fugaku's doubt is not wrong, even if someone else is changed into his position, then they will also reach the same conclusion. After all, there are only two people officially known to have the Manjiku Sharingan, one of them has already betrayed the village and joined the mercenary organization Akatsuki, so it's not impossible that the only other shinobi who has the Manjiku Sharingan also chose to betray the village and join the other mercenary organization, therefore the possibility of Uchiha Shursui being Homosubi cannot be denied. After thinking for a while, Fugaku said, Homosubi of Amatsukumi has appeared, and we of the Uchiha cannot allow a traitor to continue to harm the clan and the village, this time once again a hunting operation is being organized, I will also be participating this time, and our main objective is to either kill Homosubi or capture him or seize his Manjiku Sharingan, is that understood? Yes. All the Uchiha present in the meeting responded in unison. Fugaku again looked toward Shursui and said, Uchiha Shursui, you will stay with me. Yes. Fugaku-sama. Although Shursui wasn't sure exactly what Kuroto-san planned, the fact that he received that message must mean that there is something he has planned which will clear away the suspicions on him, therefore, Shursui wasn't much worried about this hunting operation and nodded without any hesitation. In fact, he also understands that just because Homosubi appeared in public sites does not mean that the suspicions on him will be cleared, only if he and Homosubi fight and that fight is witnessed by many people then the suspicions will be resolved. While Shursui thought this, the meeting proceeded further and after some more discussions, the meeting was concluded. Shursui returned to his home and recalled the information sent by Kuroto through the secret message, the location sent by Kuroto-san is at a distance of about six days, so do I have to enact a scene there? But if I play Homosubi there, then who will play Uchiha Shursui? Although he was a bit doubtful, this did not stop him to make all the preparations. Looking at the map spread before him, Shursui analyzed the terrain of the Tajinbo mountain range, which is close to the border of the land of hot water, the terrain is quite complicated and also has many deep lakes. And precisely because of this, the Tajinbo mountain range is pretty much inaccessible to most and has therefore become a paradise for birds of all kinds. Putting away the map, Shursui thought, regardless of what's going to transpire there, I will have to trust in Kuroto-san's plan and hope that it works. Somewhere in the land of hot water. At the temporary Kumogakure military camp. Akumo Ninja walked into the tent with a document in his hand, Rekage Sama, we have just received the news that the members of Amitsukumi were cited. Yandame Rekage, I took the document and after reading through it, he immediately ordered, Assemble 8th Unit. At this time one of the elite jonin in the tent spoke, Rekage Sama, please forgive me but I must remind you of the peace treaty signed with Kanoha, at this time, Rashly entering the hinterlands of the Land of Fire will brew another conflict with Kanoha and various diplomatic problems will occur, and considering the recent feuds we are having with Iwabakure, if Kanoha too chooses to cause trouble then I am afraid that we will fall into a very disadvantageous situation. Urged by the elite Jonin's words, Rakich did not scold him but took out a confidential document and passed it to the Jonin, you needn't worry, this is a request for cooperation from Kanoha, signed by Sande Mokage himself, Therefore, there wouldn't be any diplomatic issues, and possibly Tsuchikage will also back off and giving in to our demand upon hearing the news of this cooperation. The elite Jonin read the document and nodded in understanding, with no more opposing opinions, ICE order was conveyed and the 8th unit was assembled at the earliest. Before the departure, Rekich did not give any long speech just shouted, those bastards of Amitsukumi not only assassinated Watanabe but also sent his body to the black market in exchange for the bounty on his head, will Kumo the Cure sit back and bear such humiliation? And oh, 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 oh! Everyone responded in unison. 
Then what are we going to do? Rakage question. Avenge our comrade. Then let's go. Rakage said while raising his right fist in the air. Yes. All the shinobi responded. With the momentum boosted to the limit, the Rakage personally led the 8th unit and marched towards the hinterlands of the Land of Fire with great momentum. Chapter 241 Kanaha Dakur's reaction this time was not only very swift but also very decisive, from the notice of mobilization to the final departure, it only took a few hours. Almost all the elites of the Uchiha clan, including Shursui and the Patriarch Fugaku, as well as other clans, were also participating in the encirclement and hunting operation, as such the overall momentum was very great and eye-catching. After the departure, it only took a few days of trekking, and the entire unit finally arrived at the area where Uchiha Haragi and Uchiha Yudo encountered the two members of Amitsukumi. While gathered in a temporary tent, a war council was organized. At the time, the commander-in-chief of the hunting operation, Shimura Danzo, pointed at the detailed map spread on the table with his cane and explained all the information, while also announced the deployment and encirclement teams that will be responsible for different sub-areas. Jiraiya, you will leave the 2nd and 7th unit and will be in charge of searching in the west. Narashikaku, you will leave the 3rd and 8th unit and will be in charge of searching in the south. Hyuga Hizashi, you will leave the 4th and 9th unit and will be in charge of searching in the north. Uchiha Patriarch will leave the Kanoha Military Police Force along with the 5th unit and will be in charge of searching in the east. Everyone responded to Danzo's orders in unison. The areas of deployment were predetermined at the Jonin Council meeting behind the closed doors of the Hokage building, so nobody had any objections. After everything was said and done, Shimura Danzo finally glanced at Uchiha Shursui who hasn't made any public appearance for quite some time on the account of a leave of absence because of facing some health issues but immediately retracted his gaze back to the map and continued with a cold tone, we are not yet sure for what purpose has the Amitsukumi appeared this time. And the possibility of all this appearance being a trap or diversion is certainly a possibility, as such everyone must pay special attention during the search process and keep a regulated communication between the various teams. At this time, Jiraiya said with a serious expression, although we do not have much intelligence about the ability of this new member with the green wind type mask, based on what we know about Amitsukumi, he must be a shinobi specializing in wind release or a Kekiai Genkai user derived from wind release chakra nature, his strength is estimated to be on the same class as Suijin and Homosubi or probably even higher. Therefore, it would be prudent to strategize counter-strategies when we encounter him. Everyone nodded after hearing Jiraiya's words. When facing a strong enemy, the results of a battle with a predetermined counter-strategy and no predetermined counter-strategy will often have very different results. As such, collecting information and devising an effective counter-strategy is always one of the crucial things that makes a shinobi strong. Of course, on-site analysis skill is also extremely important as most of the time what you plan ends up useless but that does not mean that predetermined strategies do not succeed, therefore both are necessary skills that a true shinobi must have. Jiraiya's words concluded the meeting and as per Shimura Danzo's orders, everyone went to their respective camps to make preparation for following the deployment and leading the units they were in charge of. Uchiha Fugaku and Uchiha Shursui also returned to the temporary Uchiha camp. Uchiha camp, all the elites of the Uchiha clan gathered in the tent waiting for the patriarch's order. Uchiha Fugaku stood by the table and drew a circle on the map while stating, this is the area that the Uchiha clan is in charge of. One of the Uchiha elite frowned, the terrain of this area is too difficult to trek in, especially the Tajinbo mountain range. The search will be extremely difficult. Fugaku stated indifferently, this was assigned by Shimura Danzo but it matters not, the people of Amitsukumi are undoubtedly going to come after the Uchiha clan, so the more complicated the terrain the better advantage we can have if we play it wisely. Shursui was glad that the Uchiha clan was responsible for the area around the Tajinbo mountain range, which is obviously a good thing for him, and decided to volunteer. Patriarch, by your order, I would like to be responsible for searching the Tajinbo mountain range. Fugaku thought for a while and finally nodded. For extremely complex terrains like the Tajinbo Mountain Range, 
he had already decided that either he or Shursui both of whom have the Manjiki Sharingan will be responsible, as the possibility of encountering the enemy here is the greatest, and if Shursui does encounter Homosubi, then that would be the best chance to verify whether Uchiha Shursui is Homosubi or not. After everything was planned and decided, the subcommanders took quick actions, and a large number of Kanoha Shinobi spread out in all directions in an orderly manner. At this time, if someone were to look at the ground from a high altitude in the sky they would find countless heads spreading from one center point akin to a large net. Shursui and the team he led were also an unremarkable part of this large net. A total of eight people, including him were part of the team and traveling according to the route Shursui determined, and soon arrived at the Tajinbo mountain range. The team consists of Uchiha Shursui as the captain of the team, with three other Uchiha shinobi part of the main combat force, additionally, there are two shinobi of the root subunit of the Umbu department and finally two other ninjas, one from the Inazuka clan and the other from the Aburame clan. Before long, the eight people who entered the Tajinbo mountain range started a carpet search of the entire mountain range. Whoosh! 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 With the sound of breaking past the wind, sure sway, and the others landed on the huge rock boulder one after another. Standing on top of the rock, Shursui looked around with a little anticipation. Counting the time, today is the day that Kuroda-san informed him, therefore, Shursui knew that Kuroda must have arrived at the Tajinbo mountain range, and therefore, Shursui was both nervous and anticipation because he didn't know what Kuroda had actually planned. At this time, the Aburame Shinobi said, the insects I had distributed through the eastern peak of Tajinbo mountain range have all disappeared but they did manage to send back a message, the members of Amitsukami are there. Shursui nodded and after taking a deep breath, he ordered, I and Hiragi-san will go from the front, Fuji-san and Kane-san will circle around from the left, while you two will trap them in a pincer attack from the right, and also pass on this message to the headquarters stating that the enemy is confirmed to be present at the eastern peak of the Tajinbo mountain range. Yes. Everyone nodded in unison and proceeded further with caution. While traveling as soon as they passed three large swamps, the team was forced to come to an abrupt halt, as the two members of Amitsukami were present before them, one Kami sitting on a high cliff while the other one indifferently standing behind him. Achiha Haragi was the first one to shout, It's them. Achiha Haragi couldn't have been more familiar with those two figures. In the past few days ever since he encountered those two and was treated like dirt by that bastard Homosubi, he has been having nightmares, he is still frightened to directly look at those cold and indifferent eyes, but he is unwilling to endure that humiliation. Shursui also looked at the two figures on the high cliff, especially the one sitting and dangling his legs playfully, and thought in confusion, who is that person wearing Homosubi disguise? Bang! Why a soul? Boom! While Shursui was wondering about this, the shinobi of the route as per Shursui's order has already fired the signal flare. As soon as the signal flare was fired, the two members of Amitsukami disappeared from their positions and appeared before Shursui and Hiragi in an instant. Translators note, I will be referring to Hugo Kurodo as Homosubi while he is playing Homosubi. Heh. I didn't expect that Uchiha Shursui will personally come to us so that we can gouge out his Manjiku Sharingan. Hugo Kuroto controlling the low-quality clone and wearing the Homosubi disguise said with a chuckle as his gaze was fixed on Shursui, you know, you got lucky on our last encounter, I was on a tight schedule and didn't have enough time to steal your eyes, but now that you have personally come here, I wouldn't have to go through the trouble of specifically looking for you at Kanoha. Shursui was taken aback by the sudden initiation of the conversation, then immediately realized what was happening and responded accordingly, last time you managed to ambush us using the element of surprise, this time, won't be the same. I will definitely catch you this time and you won't be escaping. Escape! Homosubi quirked his eyebrow with a chuckle as his chakra started flaring up and golden orange chakra phantom started to appear around him, why would I want to escape? Followed by his words, the chakra phantom projected outwards of Homosubi's body grew inner bones then the upper body ribcage, soon musculature and skin formed over it. Susanu. Shursui was startled and subconsciously asked, W who are you? Although he was surprised this did not stop Shursui to react instinctively and a green chakra phantom started appearing over him. 
The showdown of Susanoo vs. Susanoo between Shirsui and Homosubi is the best way to prove Shirsui's innocence. Although he does not who the person wearing that Homosubi disguise is, it is obviously not the best time to delve into that issue. As such, Shirsui did not hesitate at all and urged his Susanoo, instantly Shirsui's green Susanoo also appeared opposite to Homosubi. Looking at the two titanic figures of Susanoo facing each other, the root shinobi who was observing the battle from a distance to strike Homosubi at the right opportunity was again taken aback and muttered in shock and disbelief, is this, is this the true power of the Manjiku Sharingan of the Uchiha clan? Chapter 242, Boom. 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 The huge roars and explosion sounds made everyone's ears numb, the earth was trembling due to large impacts, lightning was crackling in the black clouds gather in the sky, and the whole scene looked extremely frightening. No one could have thought that the battle in front of them would escalate to such a level right from the start. The shinobi cautiously looked at the two humongous figures that stood like gods and their every move changed the terrain of the battlefield, they couldn't help but develop a sense of fear and retreat backward to not be swept away by the stray attacks. Giant chakra blades, countless chakra sanban, chakra shuriken, occasionally Asaka magatama, and what not was continuously being used in the battle as a result of which many of the huge rock cliffs of the eastern peak of the Tajinbo mountain range were continuously smashed and broken to pieces and small boulders and gravel. The falling gravel accompanied by the smoke and dust further caused much damage to the surroundings. Flocks of birds and animals of various varieties also ran away from the forest in mayhem as the scene here looked nothing short of an impending doomsday to them. Amidst all this chaos, the shinobi that were part of Uchiha Shirsui's team were safely hidden in the cover and continued observing the battle. Uchiha Haragi had a very excited expression on his face as he watched the battle between the two almighty Susanoo at the far end, he can't help but want to be part of such a battle and also want to have such godly powers. This is it. This is the true power that the Uchiha clan represents. If only I too can have such power, then I would no longer be looked down upon by him, and no longer be treated like dirt by him. Hiragi muttered with an expecting expression. Hiragi may fear Homosubi and he may resent Homosubi, but that doesn't stop him from admiring the power Homosubi has, and even though he doesn't have any ability to interfere in such high-level battles, Hiragi still feels very proud, after all, both of them are people of the Uchiha clan. Their mere presence shows just how terrifying the people of the Uchiha clan can be. The mood of the other Uchiha present at the scene was no different from Hiragi, and a sense of honor and superiority over the other clans was constantly growing in their hearts. Contrary to the excitement and ecstasy of the Uchiha shinobi, the other members of the team were both shocked and panicked, the Manjiku Sharingan technique seems to be beyond the scope of their comprehension and understanding of ninjutsu. Seeing the two gigantic figures, they can't help but think, is that even a power that a shinobi should have? Taking a deep breath to calm himself, the root shinobi questioned, how long will it take for the reinforcements to arrive? The other root umbu responsible for the communication spoke, the news has been received by Danzo-sama and Uchiha Patriarch, they will soon be arriving here. The Kuoichi of the Aburame clan questioned the other Uchiha shinobi, can Uchiha Shirsue win? Hiragi thought for a while and answered with a confused expression, I can't judge for the time being. If the enemy was someone else, Achiha Hiragi might have been able to confidently say that Shirsui will win unconditionally, but now that the enemy is Homosubi who is an Achiha and also has Manjiku Sharingan, it is difficult to judge whether Shirsui would be able to win or not. Another Achiha Shinobi said, Don't worry, even if Shirsui can't win, he will be sure to hold off the enemy until Patriarch arrives. Hiragi nodded and moved his gaze towards the other member of Amitsukumi who stood on a distant cliff, indifferently watching the battle between the Homosubi and Uchiha Shirsui, that guy doesn't seem to have any intention to take any action, but we can't be careless, his strength is probably on the same level as Homosubi, therefore, we have to stay alert. Hearing Hiragi's words, everyone immediately turned their eyes towards the other member of Amitsukumi. At this time, the other member of Amitsukumi wearing his outfit quietly stood on a distant cliff, there was no chakra fluctuation around him and he seems to exude a coldness as if he wasn't even alive, this greatly puzzled everyone. On Uchiha Fugaku's side As soon as he received the message from the Tajinbo mountain range, Fugaku was shocked and confused, 
and immediately rushed in the direction of the Tajinbo mountain range, while jumping from one tree to another, Fugaka can't help but wonder, although I knew that Amatsukami will target the Uchiha, they really appeared at the Tajinbo mountain range? Is it just a coincidence that Shursui is also there or am I being overly dubious and misunderstanding Shursui? And if Shursui is not the one behind that mask, then who is that person? Was he really the one controlling Kyubi on the night of Kyubi's attack? While Uchiha Fugaku led the Kanoha Military Police Force and the 5th Unit to the Tajinbo Mountain Range, Shimura Danzo, who was at the command headquarters, also frowned after receiving the message. Tajinbo Mountain Range? Danzo's face had a confused expression. What is Amatsukami doing in such an isolated place? Is it possible that their hideout is located there or is it a trap? The root ninja who passed the message asked, Danzo-sama, which other teams have to be notified? Asked by the root ninja, Danzo groaned for a few seconds and said, Notify all the other teams and surround the Tajinbo Mountain in an unbreakable formation. Tajinbo Mountain Range, on the battlefield at the eastern peak. Continuing the battle, Homosubi and Uchiha Shursui went deeper and deeper in the mountainous forest, and the distance from the other shinobi who were watching the battle increased. Throughout the battle, the scene may have appeared that both Homosubi and Uchiha Shursui are fighting unrestrained and aiming to kill or mutilate each other, but in fact, both of them have been incredibly restrained all the while and the power of Susanoo was majorly displayed in the stray attacks that left deep scars in the surrounding mountain range. Homosubi instructed the other member dressed in the Amatsukami outfit to intercept the other Kanoha shinobi led by Shursui, while he led Shursui deeper into the mountain range such that their battle was temporarily obscured by a giant rock. Shursui continued the make-believe battle and questioned with some vigilance, So, just who are you? Do not worry, Shursui, it is I. Homosubi took off half of the mask he was wearing to show Shursui that it was him, Hugo Kuroto, and then put it back on immediately. As soon as he saw that it was none other than Kuroto-san who wore the Homosubi disguise, Shursui's was extremely shocked and remembering the unique pattern spinning in Kuroto-san eye sockets, Shursui asked with an expression that stated, I don't really want to hear the truth of this, but I don't have any other choice, and asked in a whisper that was only heard by Homosubi, Kuroto-san. S-H-H-H-H-H. Homosubi, I am Homosubi right now. Homosubi interrupted midway. Right, Homosubi. So, Homosubi, why do you have the Manjiku Sharingan? Shursui asked with a sluggish tone. Things have gotten way beyond what he expected. I will answer that question once this matter resolved, first we should conclude our make-believe battle. Speaking up to here, Homosubi added, Remember Shursui, after I retreat, you have to inform the others that you managed to extract some information out of me, and according to the intelligence that you have gained, Amatsukami will soon start targeting the bijas kept by the different shinobi villages. Shursui was startled by the sudden reveal and asked, Why? Homosubi explained, we made a critical mistake before, how can a secret organization like Amatsukami who has amassed such great power not have a goal, right? Hmm, you are right I suppose. Shursui nodded and then asked with a confused expression, but why target bijus? Bijus are the war weapons of the other villages and are highly guarded, wouldn't putting them as the target be a bit too much? Amatsukami will be considered too arrogant and a very big threat by the entire shinobi world. Homosubi chuckled, the more threatening everyone considers us, the better for us. There's also the fact that currently, I can only think of collecting bijou as a suitable fake goal that would make other villages also feel the crises and subside the conflicts with Kanoha. Besides, from the information I have gained, the goal of the Akatsuki organization is to collect the nine bijous, so our early warning will make the other villages vigilant, which will be beneficial for us in the bigger picture. This is the original goal of Kuroto, besides making Amatsukami seem more real and threatening, there is also the consideration of preventing Abito's plan from succeeding if possible. Once the news that Amatsukami is targeting the nine bijus kept by the different shinobi villages spreads in the entire shinobi world, all the villages who have bijus will obviously strengthen the protection of their Jinchuriki. By that time, Akatsuki's bijou collection plan will obviously not progress as easily as it did in the original series. 
Shursui was surprised by this new information and nodded, if that is the case then it works for Kanoa's benefit, so not delving too long in this matter, Shursui's attention turned towards the other member of Amitsukumi and asked in confusion, so, Homosubi, is that the other member of the organization you mentioned to earlier? But who is he? Homosubi smiled lightly and stated, oh, you have already seen him before, why don't you try to guess? Hearing Homosubi's words, Shursui thought of all the possible identities that could fit that person and can also be convinced to be a part of Amitsukumi, and soon an identity appeared in his mind. As soon as Shursui thought of that possibility Shursui's eyes widened in surprise, he, he wouldn't happen to be the Sandin Kazakage puppet, right? Homosubi nodded, yes, that's him all right, and his disguise name will be Fujin. Fujin! Shursui muttered. Yup, Fujin of the Wind Chakra Nature. Homosubi said. B but then how will his strength be even higher than Suijin and Homosubi? Shursui can't help but ask, Sandin Kazakage may have been the strongest Kazakage ever, but that puppet is not Sandin Kazakage himself, it's just a shell of the previous Kazakage and that autonomous puppet wouldn't ever reach the level of a Kage much less that exaggerated strength. Homosubi nodded, true, but nobody other than the two of us knows about this, and that's something we can use to our advantage, other than that I will also try some methods to increase the strength of that puppet so we have nothing to worry about for now. Shursui was speechless and did not know what to say anymore. With all said and done, there are only two alive people in the Amitsukumi organization but the Amitsukumi has already shown off four of its members being Yama, Suijin, Homosubi, and now this Fujin, Shursui can't help but feel that they are going in the wrong direction. Taking a deep breath, Shursui calmed his emotions and quickly said, Anyway, you should retreat as soon as possible, this time, the encirclement is very systematically prepared, the Sensornin and Sealing squads have also been assigned a special duty to keep track of the enemy and trap them in barrier formations, I am afraid that if you don't leave now you won't be able to leave at all. Homosubi smirked, Is there anyone who can fly at a high altitude? Chapter 243, uh, Shursui was again speechless by Homosubi's words. Kanoha has every kind of talent, the Taijutsu experts, the Ninjutsu expert, the Jinjutsu expert, Fuinjutsu, Juinjutsu, Bokujutsu, Shurikenjutsu, Kinjutsu, Irio Ninjutsu experts, carcinogenic shinobi that decay the village internally, loyal shinobi who are ready to lay down their life for the village, many types of talented researchers, sensors, trackers, brainwashed shinobi, brainwasher shinobi, torture class, tortured class, and many more, but the kind of talent that has always been rare in. Kanoha are the shinobi who have the ability to fly. And as far as Shursui can remember currently there is no shinobi in Kanoha who has the ability to fly, except for Kuroto-san nor does Kanoha have any extensive measures to deal with the shinobi who can fly and are masters of air-to-air -air combat. And it is for this reason that even in the canon, the Land of Sky was able to cause extensive damage to Kanoha during their air raid, causing Kanoha too much loss. At that time, the Godem Hokage, Tsunadeheim could only watch the actions of the Land of Sky from the Hokage building with rage and anger but was actually helpless and did not have any good way to fight back. Later, they may have dealt with the Land of Sky thanks to Kanoha 11, Hataki Kakashi, Sai, and Uchiha Sasuke but that's another thing that we aren't going to delve into as that mainly involves the presence of Sai and Nara Shikamaru. Coming back to this story, the encirclement troops deployed this time may not lack anything and the extremely strong shinobi are sent for the hunting purpose, but what they still lack is a shinobi apt with their combat, as such there is no reason to worry. Homosubi said, that's why I was saying, do not worry, I will be perfectly fine. One of his purposes of bringing Fuijin here is to have a secure retreat, otherwise, Kuroto may be able to stay alive, but he will have to give up a pair of Manjiku Sharingan which is a loss Kuroto can't afford, after all. It took a great amount of hard work to torture Uchiha Ryota and Uchiha Hideki and finally got the yield in the form of Manjiku Sharingan and if Kuroto were to give it away so easily then wouldn't that work all be meaningless? So, not getting sidetracked, it must be known that Sandame Kazakage who has mastered magnet release can easily fly through the air and is very apt in air-to-air -air as well as airborne combat, and his method of flying is also very different from the low-altitude flying that Kuroto used while controlling Suijin clone body. Being an umbu, 
he is naturally aware of most of the deployment, so he is confident that he can make an easy escape with the help of Fuijin, and nobody would be able to stop him. Shursui thought about it a little, then as if he suddenly remembered something, he stated, Homosubi, Kumo forces are also participating in the hunting operation Thin Time. What? Homosubi exclaimed in shock, and then asked, Why am I not aware of this information? Shursui explained quickly, High Level suspects that there are spies planted by Amitsukumi, so only people who are aware of this intel are the people who participated in the War Council and the Rude Shinobi, and I am sure that none of the Umbu, including Captain Kakashi and Gaisan, also don't know about this intelligence. I know because I attended the War Council meeting. What the? Cough. What hell is my Shadow Clone doing? After coughing heavily because of the burden from maintaining Susanoo for so long, Homosubi controlled his rugged breathing and asked, Kumogakure does not have anyone apt in air-to-air -air combat, right? Shursui thought for a while and said, I am not much aware in this regard. As far as I can think, there shouldn't be anyone, but even if there is, I am not sure if they are participating in the hunting operation. The Kumogakure unit participating in this operation is only known by Hokage-sama and Danzo-sama in the village. Not even the leaders of various teams are aware of their members. But considering what Amitsukumi did with Watanabe, it can be presumed that whoever the Yandame Rakage sent to avenge the death of one of their head ninjas wouldn't be weak. Is it, is it possible that the Yandame Rakage will come himself? Homosubi thought, in his heart, he really wants to fight with the Yandame Rakage, the shinobi bearing the title of the fastest ninja alive. It's just that the clone he is controlling at the moment wouldn't be able to bear the burden of competing with the Yandame Rakage with the pressure that the Manjiku Sharingan pair put on the clone, even if he strengthens the physique with Yayorozu, it still wouldn't be able to last for much time. Sigh, I guess I will have more opportunities to fight the Yandame Rakage in the future, there is no need to take unnecessary risks at this time, shaking his head in disappointment, Homosubi said to Shursui, don't worry, I will be careful. At this moment, Fuijin suddenly appeared in front of the two and spoke in a not-so-cold yet indifferent tone, Homosubi, the reinforcements from Kanoha are here. Shursui was dumbfounded, Homosubi. Homosubi, am I the one hearing things or did it, did it just speak? Ignoring Shursui's expression full of surprise, Homosubi turned over and jumped on the top of a huge rock and looked into the distance, he was able to see that a large number of shinobi of the Kanoha military police force as well as members of the 5th unit were coming here under the leadership of none other than Uchiha Fugaku, the patriarch of the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Fugaku's side While rushing towards the eastern peak of the Tajinbo mountain range, Fugaku was able to notice the two giant phantom figures, one of golden orange chakra color while the other of the green color, and as soon as he saw this, the last bit of suspicions he had regarding Shursui also disappeared instantly. Previously, he received the transmission and was still a bit doubtful as Homosubi appeared exactly where Uchiha Shursui volunteered to be. This can, of course, be a pure coincidence, but in the same way, it could also be a planned out strategy to clear the way suspicions on Uchiha Shursui, because there are countless ways to disguise into someone else, through transformation, shadow clone, shadow clone transformation, jinjutsu, Sharingan Jinjutsu transformation, etc., but Fugaku knows that there is. No one can disguise two completely different Susanoo. This is because the color of Susanoo is the representation of the color of a shinobi's chakra, and just like no two shinobi have exact same chakra signature, similarly no two Susanoo can be of the exact same color, there will be minor differences. And the color of Susanoo is not something one can ever change that's because one can never change the color of his chakra. Therefore, disguising or faking a Susanoo is impossible. With this confirmed, Fugaku can confirm that the Manjiku Sharingan user posing as Homosubi of Amitsukumi is not Uchiha Shursui. While increasing his pace to hurry towards the battlefield as soon as possible, Fugaku made up his mind, Damn you Homosubi, no matter the price I must pay today, I will eliminate you this time. It did not take much longer for Uchiha Fugaku and the shinobi led by him to arrive at the battlefield and spread out everywhere surrounding Homosubi and Fuijin at the center of the battlefield. After taking a brief look at Homosubi's golden orange Susanoo, Fugaku shouted towards Shursui, Shursui it's the best opportunity. For a single moment that Shursui turned to look towards Fugaku, 
Homosubi sharpened all the four chakra blades of his susanu with the help of Yayorozu and slashed them towards Shirsui's susanu. Shirsui's susanu was heavily damaged by this sudden attack as many of its parts were cut open by the four chakra blades. Fugaka's eyes narrowed at this moment, and he started running towards the battlefield. I guess I will have to use susanu to fight him, but if I do so, my Manjiku Sharingan will no longer be a secret, but I guess I do not have any other option either. Everything be damned. Once Homosubi is taken down and his Manjiki Sharingan is obtained, Achiha clan will no longer have to bear suppression from Hokage faction. Such a small sacrifice is nothing if it's for the survival of the clan. While a certain unique chakra fluctuation started to emit from Fugaku's body who was running towards Homosubi, Homosubi who damaged Achiha Shirsui Susanu with his previous attack did not turn towards the incoming Fugaku but released his golden orange Susanu. At the same time, Fujin disguised started printing hand seals and shouted, Iron Sand, Black Iron Wings. Instantly, Black Iron Sand emerged from inside of the Black Fujin cloak that the puppet Kazakage wore and the Iron Sand gathered at his back giving form to a pair of Iron Sand Wings, Fujin with the Iron Sand Wings immediately flew in the air. Fugaku's expression changed drastically, he was instantly surprised and came to a sudden halt, even the chakra fluctuations subsided and he muttered in disbelief, magnet release. Not only Fugaku but even all the members of the Kanoha military police force were also shocked. No one could have expected that the other member of Amitsukami who has been watching the entire battle so indifferently could be the possessor of magnet release, the unique Kekiai Jinkai of the Kazakage clan. Taking advantage of everyone's momentary shock, Homosubi leaped high into the sky and gently landed on the back of Fuijin, and without even glancing backward or any word of greeting, he flew away from the battlefield, leading the shocked shinobi in a daze and awkwardness. Not only do they have Manjiku Sharingan of the Uchiha clan, ice release of the Yuki clan, but even the magnet release of Kazakage clan. Damn, just where in the hell are these people emerging from one after another? Seeing that Homosubi disappeared into the sky, Achiha Fugaku who is accustomed to suppressing his emotions also showed anger and depravity. While standing on the back of Fuijin, Homosubi looked at the ground leisurely. From his current point of view, he was able to see countless Kanoha shinobi coming towards Tajinbo mountain range from all directions, he could even spot Jiraiya among them. Of course, Jiraiya, who was running towards the eastern peak of the Tajinbo mountain range, also noticed Homosubi and the other Amatsukami member flying high in the sky. It's because the outfit they were wearing is really too conspicuous to go unnoticed. Staring at the sky with a helpless expression Jiraiya sighed, now there is a shinobi in Amatsukami who is able to use magnet release. Is the next question I am going to be asking will be about what release? When speaking till here Jiraiya suddenly shook his head and laughed at himself for overthinking, as that is something that's not going to happen, there is no way a wood release user will suddenly appear in the shinobi world, right? Everyone. Right. Jiraiya asked again, only with more pressure. By traveling at a high altitude in the sky, it did not take long for Homosubi and Fuijin to get past the encirclement deployed by Shimura Danzo. Seeing that there was no presence of any more Kanoha shinobis left on the ground, it was at this time while Homosubi started to consider whether to land on the ground or continue traveling as they are. Boom, why I is to we. Suddenly a sharp sound of something cutting through the air at an extremely fast speed came from behind him. Homosubi instantly looked backward and without delaying for even a second he used all his chakra that he could control to activate the Susanu. The reason? The reason is that he saw a freaking Vijidama coming towards him. Chapter 244 With an ear-piercing sound, a huge explosion took place in the sky. Homosubi did not have enough time to react, just as the skeletal body of the Susanu armor covered over him, the Vijidama that was coming towards him at an incredibly fast speed collided with the Susanu causing a massive explosion, it not only produced a huge rumbling sound there was also terrible air pressure that knocked him and Fujin away. Walla. Walla. Whoosh. During the fall, Homosubi still had tinnitus and could barely hear the screaming wind in the ear. At this moment he was both dizzy and, in a stupor, and lost control over his body as if his nervous system was a bit unresponsive, being unable to even control his thought process, Homosubi wasn't able to confirm what happened to the Kazakage puppet who was disguised as Fujin. 
Slowly and steadily, he was able to get some air in his lungs and finally regain his thought process. After taking in a few deep breaths during the continued fall, Homosubi managed to get rid of the dizziness. Although his ears were still buzzing, he started to hear some of the things around him and trust me it's really not of the best experience to fall be falling from such a high altitude. Gulping down the surging blood down his throat, Homosubi tried to adjust his falling posture. If he was going to be injured then it was better to be injured in a way that would at least not affect his mobility. After some twists here and turns there, he was finally able to adjust his falling posture. Soon his eyes widened as he spotted Fujin that was not far away from him and was similarly falling down to the ground. Now there was some hope to be able to land safely but the problem is that most of the iron sand around the puppet that is used to fend off against the incoming Bijidama was blown away by the explosion caused by it, as a result, the puppet's control over the blown away iron sand was lost, so, at this time, only a small amount of iron sand was left around. Perfect, just perfect. Homosubi cursed in annoyance and unstoppable anger started taking over him, but I guess there is no use in complaining. The fact that the Kazakage puppet managed to help and bear a Bijidama alone is worth the praise, having too many expectations is only going to lead to disappointments. Taking a deep breath Homosubi calmed his emotions and thought, what was that just now? I rarely lose control over my emotions, so how could I have gotten angry? Is it possible that the Sharingan is affecting my emotions? After just a momentary thought, Homosubi put it at the back of his mind to consider it again in the future, Currently, he did not have enough time to be entangled with this issue. Closing his eyes, Homosubi focused on sensing his connection with the puppet and was soon able to re-establish the telepathic link between the two and confirm that there were no serious damages on the puppet as the explosion was majorly tanked by the Yayorozu hardened Susanoo. The only problem was temporary chakra system disordering making the puppet non-responsive for a short while but now that the telepathic link was re-established the puppet was working to stabilize as soon as it can and will shortly be back to a functioning state. After confirming that the puppet will soon recover, Homosubi who was midway down the fall looked in the direction that the Bijidama came from. The attack was all too sudden and with how fast a Bijidama travels, Homosubi was unable to notice the exact direction it was fired from. Fortunately, he was able to use Yayorozu hardened Susanu to shield against most of the damage, causing both him and the puppet to only suffer some extent of damage and violent shock. Otherwise, if both of them were directly hit by Bijidama, then let alone an arm or leg, not even bones would have been left by the time dust of the explosion would have cleared away. While he was searching for the exact direction that the Bijidama came from, Homosubi's expression turned into a solemn one, this is because he was able to notice a row of dust clouds that was continuously rising and was moving in the same direction that he was falling in. Aside from that, there was also a faint sound of lightning flickering and someone running towards this side while plowing the ground. Seeing that faint glow of lightning amidst the dust and smoke, Homosubi's expression condensed, that has to be Yandame Rakage. No one other than Yandame Rakage can have such violent lightning chakra nature at this point in the timeline, therefore, Homosubi did not need to think about it too deeply, as only Yandame Rakage who bears the title of the current fastest shinobi can have lightning chakra that could even rival that of a bijou. As soon as he realized this, he can't help but feel a bit depressed, if only he was in his main body right now, not only would he have sensed the incoming Bijidama before it was even fired but would have also absorbed it pretty easily. And he could have also thrashed the Yandame Rakage who would have lost his title as the fastest shinobi alive. Alas, that's just wishful thinking, the Manjiku Sharingan might also grant high-level insight and all but it does not give you 360-degree vision, unlike the Byakugan and the Tensigan. While Homosubi was mulling over this, the Kazakage puppet regained complete control over its body as such he was able to use magnet release, controlled the remaining iron sand to form a smaller pair of iron sand wings, and immediately flew towards Homosubi, caught him mid-flight and controlled the falling speed such that the two of them somehow managed to offset most of the impact and safely landed on the ground. As soon as he landed, Homosubi noticed the tremors on the ground coming closer and closer as such he understood that Yandame Rakage would soon arrive, so regardless of the burden that this clone body would bear, he again urged his chakra and used Susanu to defend against the incoming attack. In an instant, the Manjiku wheel spinning in his eyes shed bloody tears, and the golden-orange chakra phantom emerged with a roar. From bones to musculature, 
Then the golden flame armor and the two swords on the two hands appeared, while the other two hands were kept free, and in just a few breaths the half-body Sisanu was ready for the warfare. Thump! Thump! He is here! Just as Homosubi thought this, suddenly something flew out of the smoke cover with a whistling sound that carried buzzing of lightning along with it and directly pounced on the golden chakra phantom. Whoosh! Zzzzz. At the moment that something appeared out of the cover of smoke, Homosubi was able to easily notice that it was just an ordinarily massive boulder, therefore, instead of taking any rash action, he controlled Susanu to shatter that giant boulder to pieces with a United State of SMMHHHHH. BOMM. The giant boulder, which was thrown by rakage as a feint, was shattered to hundreds of pieces with just one punch. The splattered gravel and rock chips flew everywhere like tiny raindrops, while Homosubi also blinked subconsciously. Whoosh! And just as he opened his eyelids past the blink, another shadow jumped out of the cover of smoke, but the difference this time was that this shadow had a blue aura around it, to be more specific, this shadow was clad in a blue lightning chakra armor. Rakage! As soon as Homosubi's words fell, the Yandame Rakage who was already clad in the violent lightning chakra armor jumped out of the smoke cover and pounced on the Susanu with all his might, overturned it in the process. The overturned Susanu knocked down several trees on the way, Homosubi who was finally able to stabilize his figure spoke in wonder, was Yandame Rakage always so fast and strong? Although he knows that Yandame Rakage is incredibly fast while using the lightning release chakra mode, he was still very surprised when actually facing the real deal. Thinking of Rakage's incredible speed, he can't help but wonder, will Sher Sway be able to reach such speed? And if he will, by when? While Homosubi was thinking that another person appeared on the battlefield. Looking at the shinobi who was wearing oval-shaped sunglasses and carrying seven swords on his back, Homosubi instantly realized who this person is, and his face sank because it is none other than Killer B, the Jinchuriki of Hachibi. Kumoga cures AB combo. Homosubi muttered in surprise. After turning over the Susanoo, Rakage landed on top of a tree and shouted at Homosubi, You two are the members of this so-called Amatsukumi? Come on! It's time for you to pay the debt you owe to Kumogakure for killing Watanabe. Although AB Kombo was standing in front of him, Homosubi was not panicked and replied calmly, although I am a little surprised that Yandame Rakage would personally come here, and it's hilarious that the so-called great shinobi villages have fallen so low that they are colluding together to deal with a mere mercenary organization, but regardless of all that, whether you can make me pay the debt I owe to your village or not depends on whether you have the ability or not. You bastard. The already fuming Rakage was further angered by Homosubi's words, You think that just because you have gained the Manjiku Sharingan you will be able to escape? Today is the day that I will extract out all of the debts you of Amatsukumi has ever owed in your whole life. Finishing the sentence, he suddenly disappeared and the next instant flashed directly next to Homosubi. But this time, Homosubi was prepared, he has already activated Yayorozu and strengthened this clone body in Susanoo, coupled with the Manjiku Sharingan, even if Rakage's movements were extremely fast, they didn't go unnoticed by him, just based on the trajectory he was taking, Homosubi was able to judge the direction he would be taking and controlled the Susanoo to wave a chakra sword. Slash. The chakra sword swept across the ground, evenly cutting off everything in its path. However, just at the moment, it was about to chop the rakage in half, several octopus legs came out of Killer Bee, clutched the Susanoo's arm that was waving the sword. Chapter 245 While Homosubi started battling Killer Bee and his eight octopus tails, the Yandame Rakage again turned into a blue flash of light that traveled from one position to another rapidly, and taking advantage of the fact that Homosubi was busy in battle, he again pounced at the Susanoo's chest and punched with all his strength. Crack! Followed by a crisp sound, the upper armor and some of the bones of Susanoo cracked inch by inch, and soon the cracks spread to some parts of Susanoo. But Rakage wasn't finished there. Elbow bolt, lightning oppression horizontal, lightning oppression horizontal chop, lightning straight, were some of the attacks used by him one after another, without even giving Homosubi any time to take a breath who was busy fighting Killer B. Boom! Once again, a heavy fist slammed. Boom! Again! Boom! 
again. Boom, the rakish fist that was especially heavy this time again slammed at the cracked chest of the Susanoo. Finally, the Susanoo couldn't bear the damage anymore and with a loud noise, it was completely shattered from the front. Seeing that there was an opening, his figure again flashed and broke inside the Susanoo. Leaping high, he rushed towards Homosubi while shouting, Go to hell! Homosubi's face inside the mask was a bit panicked. This AB combo turned out to be completely unreasonable that he didn't even know what to say anymore. Firstly, Homosubi didn't expect that in just a few years Rakage has become so reckless that he dared to use pure brute force with lightning release chakra armor to battle with Susanoo. And what's more surprising is that he actually managed to get past the so-called unbreakable defense of Susanoo. While Homosubi was a bit panicked as Rakage was approaching him and was just about to hit him, suddenly a black barrier made of iron sand appeared between the two while another arm of iron sand dragged Homosubi backward. Rakage's attacks obviously pierced through the iron sand barrier but it also created a short time window for Homosubi before Rakage gains enough momentum again to start another round of attacks and that small opportunity was enough for the other hand to pull Homosubi back. At the same instant Homosubi retreated backward and got some distance between himself and the Rakage who was now covered with iron sand all over, he urged his chakra through the Manjiku Sharingan and again used Susanoo. Other than Susanoo he doesn't really have any better way to fight both Rakage and Killer B at this moment, as a result, he used Susanoo, so Susanoo again appeared on the battlefield. Roar! However, this time, the Susanoo was different from the previous as it was more massive and let out a heart-quivering roar. Immediately afterward, golden flames covered the entire Susanoo body. These flames seemed to have a soul of their own. They seemed alive. The chakra swords that protruded out of his hands were now covered with these golden flames that burned as hot as the sun itself. Without the slightest hesitation, Homosubi who was inside the armor of Susanoo waved two swords at once slashing towards the rakage who was currently entangled in prison iron sand burial. Slash. Slash. The two upper to lower slashes cut apart a large cavity in the ground and stirred up a lot of dust and smoke, anything that came in the way was also cut into fragments and turned into ash with ease. Did it work? Homosubi muttered while trying to observe the area of attack. The rising smoke and dust were also having an effect on his vision as even Sharingan's vision is hindered by smoke, therefore, he was unable to see the entire battlefield clearly. When the smoke was cleared up by the wind-style jutsu used by Fujin, all Homosubi saw was two large ravines in front of him that stretched far away but there was no corpse of Rakage who had actually retreated far away thanks to his brother B. Seeing that the planned attack failed, Homosubi frowned, just when he was confused why the attack failed, the Kazakage puppet's telepathic message arrived, the lightning release chakra armor of Rakage has very strong lightning chakra reaction on his body and it is interfering with the electromagnetic field induced by my magnet release chakra. Hearing this, Homosubi realized the problem and nodded in understanding. Magnet release may be a Kekiai Jinkai, which is the result of the fusion of wind chakra nature and earth chakra nature, however, its principle and mechanism are quite complicated. Generally, wind nature has an advantage over lightning because of its cutting properties, but iron sand is controlled using an electromagnetic field. Therefore, lightning is a weakness of magnet release. In the presence of a strong electric current, the magnetic field would either disrupt or another magnetic field will be induced in the system depending on the direction of the flow of current, ultimately causing the iron sand attacks to fail. And Yandame Rakage's lightning release chakra armor is doing just that Sandame Kazakage's iron sand. Of course, the stronger your magnet release chakra the stronger electric attacks would be needed to disrupt the electromagnetic field, but Yandame Rakage happens to possess as the strongest lightning chakra among the people currently alive, and his lightning chakra is more than enough to disrupt Sandame Kazakage puppet's chakra. What to do, thought Homosubi as he observed I. At this moment, I dusted off the iron sand on his body and looked around the battlefield, there were many spots ignited with that raging golden flames and the temperature of the battlefield was continuously rising, seeing this his expression became a bit dignified. Just a moment ago, he was about to be cut by that chakra sword which is covered in those golden flames, and if that attack really hit him, then it would either mean death or he would be forced to cut off the affected part of the body, and both options are unacceptable for him. 
It appears that I have to be a bit more cautious, the enemy is by no means weak, and seeing that his actions are calm all along, he hasn't been cornered enough. Thought Rakage as he seriously tried to evaluate the enemy's strength. While Rakage was evaluating Homosubi and the other guy's strength, Homosubi was also evaluating Rakage's strength. In terms of speed alone, although the Yandame Rakage is clearly inferior to Yama when Yama uses the Tensigen Chakra mode, however, against the current Homosubi, Rakage has an absolute advantage when it comes to speed, and considering how high his defense and brute strength is, it is really impossible for Homosubi to win this battle against Yandame Rakage with Killer B by his side. Sigh. And here I thought that I might be able to give AB Brothers some tough time with this weak clone body too, but it appears that I was getting too ahead of myself. Side Homosubi. Based on the strength and speed Yandame Rakage has displayed up to now, Homosubi can judge that the current Yandame Rakage is clearly stronger than the current Sandame Hokage. The reason why he is so sure is that he has already experienced Sandame Hokage's strength as Suijin. Although at that time, Sandame Hokage was very restrained and did not use his complete strength, Homosubi still feels that Sandame Hokage who has been getting older has already been surpassed by Yandame Rakage. As far as Homosubi can think, other than Yama, only the Toad Sanin Jiraiya, when using the Sanin mode can match up to the Yandame Rakage. Aside from the two of them, no matter who they are, it would be almost impossible to defeat Rakage, and because Yama's presence in Tensigen Chakra mode is unknown to most so Yandame Rakage feels that no one matches him in terms of speed. This is the most likely reason why Rakage has started to flare up so much and become unruly to such a degree. Fortunately, there was Namake's Minato during the Third Great Shinobi War who kept AB Combo in check, otherwise, Kimogakure would have continued the war in the same unrestrained manner. Such a thought suddenly appeared in his mind. Cough cough. The blood that he has been suppressing down his throat was no longer restrained and was coughed out violently, shit, this clone is about to reach the limit and will no longer be able to bear it anymore. Realizing that if he didn't hurry, he will be in a pickle very soon, Homosubi controlled the Susanu who brandished four golden flame swords and started to continuously slash towards both Killer B who was clad with Hachibi's chakra and I who was clad with lightning release chakra armor. Slash. 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 The continuous onslaught of slashes started, each slash caused massive damage to the surrounding forest, and courtesy to the golden flames, each slash carried an extreme amount of heat that would melt you alive if not burn you into charcoal with the slightest of contact. The forest was already engulfed in golden flames, countless trees that were cut in half by the sword winds were now charcoaled in those golden flames, tens of meter deep ravines were left in the surroundings, the sky was also full of black smoke and cloud of eroded dust. Clearly telling the tale of the apocalypse. As soon as they were covered in smoke and dust, Homosubi who was coughing turned over and jumped on the iron sand platform created by Fujin and said, Go! Fujin immediately sprouted iron sand wings at his back and flew away from the battlefield using additional wind chakra to increase their flight speed. Chapter 246 While they were leaving, Homosubi still didn't let down his guard and continued firing Susanu Senban from the chest part, shuriken from two arms of Susanu while also adding Yasukani Magatama amidst those shurikens and senbans made out of golden flames, and that wasn't all. The other two hands kept waving the twin golden flame swords continuously which again caused devastating damage to the surroundings, these series of attacks when combined were no less catastrophic than the explosions caused by Bijidama. After making sure to leave horrifying scenery to be burned in the memory of all witnesses, Homosubi did not wait here to confirm the result of the battle but chose to tacitly escape. As Fujin and Homosubi kept moving away from the battlefield, Homosubi turned back to look at the large mushroom-shaped cloud which rose to hundreds of meters in the sky and the endless sea of raging golden flames continuously spreading throughout the forest like an unstoppable forest fire and nodded in appreciation towards his artwork. Although he wants to fight Rakage in a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle, but not in the situation Homosubi is currently in. Kuroto's face under the Homosubi mask was extremely pale as if all the blood was drained from the body, like a corpse, 
but that very face still had an unusual calmness on it, as if whatever he had done just now did not bother him, he knew that there are very small chances that Yandame Rakage will be injured or burned by these attack. Most likely Rakage would have managed to retreat considering how fast his speed is, but that did not matter anymore. This is just the start. With this series of events, Amatsukami has taken a solid footstep into the shinobi world and will soon become so fearful that no Kage would ever think or dare to face any of its members head on. Cough cough. As another violent fit of coughing started, he had to withdraw his gaze. At this time, the speed at which the Susanoo armor was dispersing also hastened, and the outer armor started becoming blurry, transparent, and soon disappeared. Following which the turbulent golden flames that were ignited around the Susanoo armor also went out, then came the next layer which was the skin and musculature, and then the final one, the golden orange skeletal body of the Susanoo was left. However, the skeletal body projection of the Susanoo also did not last for very long and soon disappeared without a trace. As soon as the Susanu armor dispersed, the Manjiki wheel in the eyes also stopped spinning and deactivated soon enough, first retracting back to the three tomo state then to the onyx black color. But his cough still did not subside, rather escalated, and the blood that has been continuously coming out of his throat could no longer be held back, removing the mask, Kuroto did not hold it back anymore and let it flow out, as a result, he vomited out a large amount of blood from his mouth and nasal cavity, his hand and chest were already soaked, and he suddenly started to feel dizzy and soon collapsed. Although not unconscious he didn't have any more strength or energy to get up anymore. Kuroto tried to take some deep breaths to calm and restore, the Ryumyaku also helped in treating the body to some extent, and soon enough he was in a state where he could at least think if anything. Being able to think in process allowed Kuroto to analyze the current state of this clone body and dam, he could only sigh helplessly. The clone body was in a terrible condition such that there was not even a single body part that might have remained unaffected, but that is also natural. To be honest, Kuroto isn't really surprised by the terrible state that the clone body is in, Using Susanoo is highly burdensome even for the Uchiha and here Kuroto not only used Susanoo but also the other two techniques of the Manjiku Sharingan simultaneously with the Susanoo. And that too when this clone body wasn't even cultivated with the intentions of being able to use Manjiku Sharingan as such the burden he was put under was really too much and highly unbearable, he even estimates that. He would have already collapsed while fighting Rakage if not for continuously using Yayorozu. If any other shinobi who has just transplanted Manjiku Sharingan pair is switched in his place and is asked to do what he was doing, that is using all three of Manjiku Sharingan abilities at the same time, they might just fall in eternal sleep just by attempting to do so, in fact, only using the Susanoo would also be too much for them. Using Manjiku Sharingan without Uchiha clan genetics will always be a drag, I'll have to see that the next thing I focus upon is making a clone body with the Uchiha clan DNA thought Kuroto. He can now judge that no matter the Kekiai Jinkai, those without the true DNA for that ability will always have a hard time mastering it, and even if they do master it somehow by whatever method for instance by stealing it as he did with this pair of Manjiku Sharingan, they will still never be able to showcase its full potential unless they are genetically apt with it. And this is true even in Kuroto's case. Ads by Pub Future. The body he is using now is cultivated from his genetics purely, and the quality of the clone is also not much high in comparison to Suijin clone body or his main body, but considering that this clone body is his, that alone makes it have good basic stats. In terms of strength alone, this clone body reaches the level of a Jonin without counting the Manjiku Sharingan of course, so it does surpass the majority of the shinobis, and yet it collapsed so easily because of the burden imposed by a pair of Manjiku Sharingan. And this has been proven again and again by the likes of Kakashi, Negato, and Danzo from the original Naruto series. All three of them were able to use the transplanted eyes, but neither of them was ever able to bring out their true potential. The reason for this? There are many, but one of the major reasons is the lack of proper genes. On the battlefield at this time, the massive eight tails of Hachibi retracted revealing two figures they were guarding, these two people are obviously none other than the Rakage and the Hachibi's Jinchuriki, Killer B. Homosubi's frantic attacks just now also posed a huge threat even for Kumodakure's AB combo. 
especially the last sword attacks and the fact that Homosubi actually even threw off those two swords from the air using Susanoo. Those two swords flew at an extremely fast speed and were directly aimed at the heads of AB combo, if not for Killer B's instant approach to shield them inside the Beige's defense, then it is hard to say whether Rakage would have survived that attack even after taking the sturdy defense of his body into account. Coming out unscathed, Rakage looked around the battlefield with a gloomy expression. Right now, he can see many things on the battlefield, the devasted forest, sea of golden fire that was spreading everywhere and burning anything and everything to cinders that it came into contact with, massive ravines caused by swords slashed, cracked up ground, and pits because of giant chakras and bond and susanu punches, and much more, but the only thing he couldn't see the presence of the two members of Amitsukumi. That is to say, both of their presence has long since disappeared, apparently, they managed to escape using the chaos to their advantage. When he thought of the fact that both members of Amitsukumi managed to slip away from his hands, I couldn't help but feel anger surging inside him, gritting his teeth in frustration, I slammed the ground with his fist and roared, damn it. And not far away, Killer B crouched on the ground and curiously looked at the burning golden flames in front of him, he outstretched his finger and tried touching the golden flames in front of him, and soon cried out in pain, ouch, 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 burns, burns, it burns. Rakage, who was already very frustrated, gave Killer B a punch in the head, which soon turned into a bump, while also added, idiot, don't touch that fire, these are obviously not your regular flames. Fear not, brother, I am stronger, Bakayaro Kanayaro. P.S. Uh, that's the only rhyme I could come up with. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Before Rakage could continue chiding B, one after another, silhouettes of shinobi started to appear on the battlefield, and these shinobi had three different styles of clothing they wore, few were dressed in Kumodakure shinobi uniform while some were in Kanoha Umbu gear, subunit root, and the rest were dressed in Kanahadakur shinobi vests. These shinobi are obviously members of the Kumo unit led by Rakage as well as Kanoha shinobi who were chasing after the two members of Amitsukumi. Rakage was long since aware of them and was not surprised by their arrival, instead as soon as that particular person appeared on the battlefield, Rakage turned towards him and shouted, You of Kanoha are really incompetent, what good was the entire encirclement when both of the members of Amitsukumi managed to escape so easily? Shimura Danzo, who was observing the battlefield and some of the signs that very much reminded him of that mountain collapse a few days ago tapped his cane on the ground upon hearing Rakage's words and snorted coldly, Rakage Dano's method of single-handed approach also didn't work, or did it? I did not have any words to refute Danzo's taunt and could only say, I really don't understand why there are so many defected Neen from Kanaha de Kur? Hokage should be ashamed of himself that so many of his shinobi are betraying the village one after another. Shimura Danzo obviously wanted to refute those words, but when he opened his mouth to speak something, Danzo was at a loss, nothing came to him that could counter Rakage's words. Ads by Pub Future In the eyes of the public, a shinobi who has Manjiku Sharingan is obviously a member of the Uchiha clan of Kanoha, it does not matter whether he has betrayed the village or not, but this fact remains unchanged, so it is very reasonable to classify Homosubi as a former member of the Uchiha clan. And counting, Homosubi together with Orochimaru, Hiroko, Achiha Shinichi, etc., it wouldn't be wrong to say that half of the missing Nin, regardless of whether they belong to Amitsukumi or Akatsuki, have belonged to Kanaha Dakur at some point in time and have now defected. Because most of these shinobi have defected during the reigning period of Sandame Hokage, then obviously he must be ashamed of himself. Someone who can't even keep the subordinates under him in check is totally unworthy to be a Kage of a shinobi village. Therefore, even if he tries to think of something to counter Rakage's words Shimura Danzo couldn't think of anything that would pose a sound argument. While both parties stood in silence and all the other shinobi that were present around did not dare to interrupt anything, Uchiha Fugaku and Uchiha Shirsue arrived at the battlefield and they were also followed by many other shinobi who were part of the units led by Fugaku. Fugaku had a grim expression as he looked at the battered up and the burning battlefield, just seeing the scene before him, Fugaku can roughly judge how the fight between Amitsukumi and Kumodakure's AB combo turned out. While Fugaku was busy thinking some things, Shursue sighed in relief. He was really worried about what would happen when he learned that Yandame Rakage and the Jinchuriki of Hachibi had managed to knock down the escaping Amitsukumi members, 
although he understands that Kuroda-san's strength is very high, Sure Sui wasn't sure whether Kuroda-san would be able to resist the combined might of AB combo, after all, both of them working together undoubtedly makes the strongest tag team. The reason for worry was more reasonable because Kuroda-san didn't have Byakugan in his eye sockets, rather it was a pair of Manjiki Sharingan, so he would obviously not be able to use that chakra mode, right? Fugaku obviously wasn't aware of Shirsui's worry and after signaling him to follow behind, Fugaku once again glanced at the battlefield and walking towards Danzo and Rakage, he said, Shirsui managed to extract some information out of Homosubi while the two were fighting, and according to what he has obtained, Soon Amatsukami will be targeting the bijou of the different shinobi villages. What? Both Rakage and Danzo were shocked by this news and exclaimed in unison. Danzo was surprised because he couldn't quite understand Amatsukami's purpose for eyeing the bijou. After all, someone like Kana Adakur, who is the strongest of all the shinobi villages can't properly control the bijou, so why would Amatsukami want bijou? Was it just so that they can gain war weapons? This cannot be the only reason. Because they would be extremely stupid if that is true. After all, controlling Bijou is obviously extremely difficult, and if Amatsukami is eyeing Bijou understanding this, then does that mean they have some means to control Bijou? But if they start eyeing Bijou, Amatsukami will make itself an enemy of the five great shinobi villages at the same time, would they be foolish enough to take such risks? because offending one or two shinobi villages at the same time in itself is extremely foolish not to mention offending all five great villages at the same time. Or do they have the confidence to take on the combined might of the five great shinobi nations and still come out and skate? So, many questions, but not a single answer. Contrary to Danzo who was confused and trying to figure out Amatsukumi's purpose for going after Bijou, I was extremely angry as soon as he heard this information, he didn't expect that Amatsukami would have enough courage to eye the bijus. Today, Kumogakure has three shinobi who reach the level of Akage, and two of them are obviously Jinchuriki of their respective bijou, and if Amatsukami manages to take steel both the bijou then that would put Kumogakure in an extremely passive position. Not to mention, one of the Jinchuriki, the Jinchuriki of Hachibi is Killer B, who is his sworn brother, so upon learning the news that Amatsukami is eyeing Bijou, Rakage clutched his fist in anger, whether for his village or for his brother, he would not let those bastards have their way anymore, now things just got personal between him and Amatsukami. Danzo noticed Rakage's reaction to the news and spoke after thinking a little bit, Amatsukami's threat is greater than we initially expected, not to mention their intentions are more harmful to the entire shinobi world, the other shinobi villages must also be informed of the news that Amatsukami is eyeing the Nine Bijou. As such I suggest that we must convene a Gakage summit as soon as possible to discuss a suitable method to deal with the rising threat posed by these upstart bounty nine. Organizations Rakage thought for a while and he also understood the threat posed by these bounty nine organizations and nodded in agreement, as Yandame Rakage, I agree to the proposal to convoke the second Gokage summit. Chapter 247 Inside Kuroto's Secret Laboratory Phew, when his soul returned to his main body, Kuroto finally breathed a long sigh of relief, he felt very relaxed and energetic as if his soul was very lively. Looking at the clone body lying on the test bench, Kuroto had a contemplative look on his face. For the past few days that he has been Sharingan and Manjiku Sharingan, he has deeply experienced the difference between Sharingan and Byakugan, at the same time, Kuroto has also developed a personal understanding of Manjiku Sharingan. And from his personal experience, the first conclusion that Kuroto has reached is that Kakashi is really worth respecting, to be able to bear continuous chakra drain and an additional burden imposed by Sharingan for almost two decades is really not an easy feat. Not to mention he isn't an Uzumaki or Senju, neither does he has Hashirama cells transplanted into his body nor does he have any bijou to support him, and yet he managed to keep that Sharingan for almost two decades. That's something really worth respecting. Kakashi might really have the potential to reach Super Kage level in strength if not for the restraint that Sharingan put on him. Kuroto muttered with emotion, but soon he calmed himself down and focused on the matter at hand. Kuroto knows that it is impossible for him to convince Kakashi to give up that Sharingan and doing so forcefully would only have a negative impact, therefore, he decided to not think about this matter for now and focus on the clone lying on the test bench. 
Taking out the experimental records log, Kuroto began recording the data of this clone which is way past the stage where it could be recovered or healed. He then analyzed and compared the recorded data with the data he recorded at the time of taking out this clone from the nutrition tank and found that the most severely injured part of the clone was its nervous system. And even in the nervous system, the damage was most severe to the cranial nerves, whether it was the optical nerves or the oculomotor nerves both of them were way beyond recovery even with the best Irio ninjutsu. Why are cranial nerves most damaged? Kuroto muttered to himself, I guess it's because the ocular nerves of this clone couldn't bear the burden of Manjiku Sharingan for too long and were damaged beyond recovery. This does sound reasonable. After recording some more of his analysis about Manjiku Sharingan in the experimental log, Kuroto removed the Manjiku Sharingan pair from the eye sockets of the clone body and then processed the clone to be destroyed. At this point, the Manjiku Sharingan project has finally come to an end. In the whole project, including the two clones that Kuroto destroyed to make the Uchiha brothers witness the death of their brothers, the clone that Ryota destroyed at the time of escaping from his prison cell, and this final clone that Kuroto himself destroyed, he has destroyed a total of four clones. Combining the total cost of all the raw materials that were used up to cultivate these four clones, then the cost of these four clones is worth more than 70 million Ryo. And if he adds up the loss of equipment, cost of construction of the prison dungeon, as well as the various props and pieces of equipment that were required to carry out this whole Manjiku Sharingan project definitely exceeds 100 million Ryo. And this is just the start, any high-end experiment project involving any field requires a lot of economic funding, something that only a daimyo, a shinobi village, or some extremely rich such clans and families can afford. Individual shinobi such as him or Orochimaru without a suitable background funding will always be constrained by their budget unless they have a source of solid funding. But there is nothing he can do about this issue for now. After destroying the clone, Kuroto thought of a short fight with Kumogakure's AB combo. In the original Naruto story, Yandame Rekage did not have many records, but the few records or battles that he had were very meaningful and clearly dictated his strength especially the fight he had with Uchiha Sasuke at the Gakage Summit in the Land of Iron. The speed and strength he showcased at that time were extreme, Rikage was even able to dodge Amaterasu while in his lightning release chakra mode, that alone is an accomplishment worth mentioning. After all, the appearance of Amaterasu is at the same instant that Sasuke would use the ability of his left Menjiku, and being able to dodge something so dangerous in such a short instant is incredible indeed. If Yandame Rekage had shown some degree of restraint in that battle, did not recklessly attack the Amaterasu in case Susanoo with the intent of sacrificing his arm if necessary, then he might have truly killed Uchiha Sasuke in that battle. After all, at that time, Sasuke not only had to maintain Susanoo armor but had to also use Amaterasu and Kagatsuchi to cover the Susanoo armor with the black flames using the shape transformation. Simultaneously using all the three Manjiku Sharingan Dojutsu is obviously not easy even for the shinobi of Uchiha clan, therefore Sasuke had to bear a great amount of burden at that time and he wouldn't have lasted much longer if Reikage had opted to have a battle of endurance while also simultaneously putting enough pressure on Sasuke to keep him on edge. And then there is Killer B, the Jinchuriki of Hachibi, who singled out the entire Team Taka and almost killed Uchiha Sasuke, if not for Yugo to save Sasuke at that time by merging some of his cells with Sasuke then Sasuke might have been done for at that time. And even then, Killer B might have killed the complete Team Taka if he didn't use that opportunity to sneak out of the village to take a holiday. From both of these battles, it wouldn't be wrong to judge that whether it is Yandame Rekage or the Jinchuriki of Hachibi, both of them had strength higher than Uchiha Sasuke when he awakened the Manjiku Sharingan. Although, we have to also take into account that Sasuke had just awakened Manjiku Sharingan and did not master that completely at that time while both I and Killer B were already through countless battles and were more than familiar with their powers, still, it wouldn't be wrong to say that both of their strength reaches a high tier Kage level. And when these two works together as the AB combo, they really make the strongest duo, therefore, the fact that Kuroto managed to escape from them is also not a small achievement. The next thing Kuroto thought was about the suspicions on Shursue, I made such big disturbances this time as Homosubi, so the suspicions on Shursue should be completely cleared up. Now that the suspicions on Shursue are cleared up, 
Kuroto can calmly carry out the fusion of the two Manjiku Sharingan pairs into the Eternal Manjiku Sharingan and the Fire Nature clone with Uchiha genetics. But as said before, to fuse the two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan into Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, he has to first learn the transcription seal, and for that purpose, Kuroto will have to seek Shirsui's help. Because Kuroto thinks that only Uchiha clan will have the knowledge of the seal, and there will be no scroll in Kanoha's ninjutsu library about it. It is because all the time transcription came into play in the canon, all the time it was used by the Uchiha, and nobody else, therefore, Kuroto thinks that this technique must be in the hands of the Uchiha Patriarch. So, only Shirsui can help Kuroto with this. Then next comes the matter of Fire Nature clone with Uchiha clan genetics. When thinking about this matter, Kuroto is in a bit of a bind. The issue that is entangling him is the choice of genetics, whose genetics should he choose from. There are too many options that he has. To be honest, if it is up to Kuroto, then Uchiha Madara is undoubtedly his first choice, but Kuroto did not consider this option more than a few seconds, this is because of two reasons, first is that Uchiha Madara's body age is really old so even if he was a beast in his prime and the first and the only person after the Sage of Six Paths to have awakened the Rinnegan, his body would have undoubtedly deteriorated to the point that Kuroto doubts whether the cultivated clone will be good enough. The second and more important reason is that the place where Uchiha Madara's body is located slash buried should only be known to Abito and Zetsu, therefore, Kuroto has no way of finding where that body is located and he certainly does not have enough time to specifically search for that location. So, the option of using Madara's genetics is directly ruled out by Kuroto. Then the next few choices that Kuroto has are Hideki, Ryota, Fugaku, Shinichi, Shirsue, Itachi, and even Sasuke is available for Kuroto to choose from. Rubbing his hand over his chin, Kuroto muttered, which one to choose from, Fugaku? Hideki? Ryota? Shinichi? Shirsue? Itachi? Or Sasuke? Chapter 248 While rubbing his chin, Kuroto muttered with a thoughtful expression, I suppose I should not count Uchiha Fugaku as an option, it's because obtaining his cells would be very troublesome, so it's best that I don't take him as an option. And the next is Sasuke, aside from Madara, Sasuke is technically the best option, but I am not sure if I should use his cells and DNA for the clone, after all, he is the current reincarnation of Atsutsuki Indra, therefore, it is hard to judge how will Rakuto Sinin respond if I create a clone with the chakra of the current reincarnation of Indra. It is obviously hard to infer Rakuto Sinin's thinking in regards to his two sons, whether he is keeping a watch over Sasuke and Naruto and what are his plans for them is not something Kuroto can understand. After all, Rakuto Sinin has existed for centuries already, even if he is in his soul form after death, Rakuto Sinin is undoubtedly the current strongest being on the planet, therefore, I think that it is the best choice to not do anything that might offend him or leave a negative opinion. Towards me! What's more, Sasuke's Yin Chakra is probably the strongest so that would probably unbalance the intensity of seven chakra natures at the time of fusion through Chimera technique, as such it's best to avoid using his cells for creating the clone. After excluding Fugaku and Sasuke, the remaining choices that he is left with are Hideki, Ryota, Shinichi, Shirsue, and Itachi. Among these five Shirsue and Itachi are obviously the most talented, and it is very difficult for even Kuroto to judge whose talent is higher among the two of them. If the age at which they awaken Manjiku Sharingan is taken into account then that obviously Shirsue seems to be more talented, but then we have to also consider that Shirsue was born before Itachi and experienced more stimulations during the Third Great Shinobi War so he was able to awaken Manjiku Sharingan at a younger age compared to Itachi. Other than the age of activating Manjiku Sharingan, both of them are impeccable in all other shinobi arts so it wouldn't be wrong to say that both of them are equally talented, so both of them seem to be the best options. Thinking up to here, Kuroto suddenly remembered, but Itachi's illness. The illness Itachi suffered from was a bit mysterious, there were many speculations and theories about it, some stated that Itachi suffered from some sort of lung disease while others pointed to the illness being the result of the overburden because of being too strong for his own good. 
It could be possible that Itachi suffered from his Manjiku power being too strong and his body was unable to bear the burden it caused as a result he lacked the necessary stamina to partake in drawn-out battles. The illness could also be the result of his desire to die because of guilt, after all, depression, despair, and desire to seek death can stem from various causes that would ultimately kill you, it's similar to how the Solomon Islands cursing works. Then again, his illness could also be a result of a bloodline illness. So it is very difficult for Kuroto to judge what kind of illness Itachi suffered from, but one thing that is very clear is the fact that this illness took away Itachi's life. So without having a proper understanding of the true cause it is best not to use Itachi's cells, after all, if Itachi is suffering from bloodline disease then his cells are obviously not suitable for making the fire chakra clone. Therefore, Shursue's cells seem to be a better option of the two. Although both Itachi and Sasuke are also very good choices, there are still some hidden dangers in choosing them, but no such danger is associated with Shursue, so it is obviously better for Kuroto to not take unnecessary risks. And Shursue's talent is unquestionably superior to Hideki and Ryota, so there is no need for consideration. Finally, there is also an option of choosing Shinichi, but I guess I will start with Shursue. If my and Shursue's cells do not have compatibility then I guess I will try using Shinichi's or Itachi's cells, till then using Shursue's cells is fine. With that decided, Kuroto packed up everything and left the secret laboratory. One week later. In this one week, the various units part of the hunting operation carries out some intensive search to locate Homosubi and the other member of Amitsukumi but since there was no result so the troops returned back to the village. The shinobi who participated in the encirclement operation brought back all sorts of news with them and aside from the classified news that was not to be released in public, most of this news was now the talk of the village. Kanoha's repeated failure to capture or kill Amitsukumi only flared up Amitsukumi's reputation and people even started to wonder whether Amitsukumi was truly an organization with God's part of it as its name suggests. Of course, such devoted religious people were very few and were mostly ignored by others. Although the intelligence about Amitsukumi's next target being the Nine Bijou was not made public, the threat that Amitsukumi poses to Kanoha and the other four great shinobi villages was now more than ever clear to the high level of all the villages. Aside from all this, what was important was that rumors about Shursue being Homosubi were completely cleared up as Shursue's and Homosubi's fight was now public knowledge, with suspicions on him cleared, Shursue was no longer subjected to house arrest and was now again free. After regaining his freedom, the first thing that Shursue did was obvious, he hurriedly rushed towards Kuroto's home as he was in desperate need of so many answers, and only Kuroto had those answers that he needed. Arriving at Kuroto's home, he knocked on the door. Knock! 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 A few seconds later the door was opened, oh, it turns out to be Shursue Kuen, please come in. Shursue is both a member of the same Umbu squad as Kuroto and also a regular visitor to Kuroto's home, therefore Yui is very familiar with Shursue and welcomed him inside very enthusiastically. Sometimes when she sees Kuroto and Shursue working together or discussing some things, she even feels that both of them are like siblings. Shursue nodded politely, thank you Yui-san, and followed her to Kuroto's study. Kuroto who was busy doing some work was not surprised by Shursue's arrival and nodded for him to take a seat. Yui also sat on the other side of the kotatsu, and seeing that Kuroto was still busy she decided to ask Shursue a few things that she was somewhat curious about, so, Shursue Kuen, I heard that you fought against Homosubi of Amitsukumi again, is he, is he really that powerful, you know as powerful as the rumors describe him to be? Shursue was a little embarrassed by Yui's question and glanced towards the so-called Homosubi sitting on the side, seeing that the Homosubi that he fought against a few days ago had no intentions of speaking anything, Shursue scratched his hair awkwardly and nodded, uh, he, he is really strong, he was, even able to hold his own against Kumodikur's AB combo, which in itself dictates just how strong Homosubi is. Hearing the word Kumo AB combo, Yui was a bit worried and turned towards Kuroto she wanted to speak something but it was better to not be spoken in Shursue's presence. Kuroto seemed to have noticed Yui's worry, so he put down the scroll in his hand and said, Don't mind Shursue's presence, you can speak freely there is no need to be worried. 
Yui looked at Kuroto then turned towards Shirsue and then again towards Kuroto, and spoke will you really be all right Kuroto-kun? All the members of Amatsukami seem to be extremely strong one can fight against Yandame Rakage and Jinchuriki of Hachibi at the same time while the other can fight against Sandame-sama and still manage to escape, Amatsukami is too dangerous, even shirsue kuen says so. Right. shirsue kuen See. He is agreeing, should we, should we mention this matter to Hayashi-sama, so that, he can, you know, make arrangements with Sandame-sama? As the last words came, Yui's voice kept going light and light, if not for the fact that both Kuroto and Shirsue being extremely perceptive they might not have been able to hear the last part. And hearing Yui's words, Kuroto snorted in contempt towards Amatsukami, huh, what dangerous. Just some small-time mercenary organization, they even have the gall to name themselves Amatsukami? All they do is hide and don't even dare to come forward. From beginning to end, all they do is run away, in fact, I am telling you whether it was against Sandame-sama or AB Combo, both the time what Amatsukami did was run away. The last time I and Shirsue encountered them, we were unprepared and were ambushed by three of them at once, if not for that we would have obviously defeated them. When I meet them next time, you will see the result. As soon as she heard Kuroto's words, Yui complained, You always do this kuroto kun and I hate this, speaking up to here, she turned towards Shirsue and requested sincerely, Shirsue Kuen, I want to ask you something, will you please consider it? Shirsue, who was suddenly brought to attention, hurriedly nodded, Yui San, just speak what is your request. If, if I can do it, or it is within my power to be able to do it, I will definitely do my best to help out. Yui glanced towards Kuroto with the corner of her eye, then turned back towards Shirsue and spoke, Kuroto Kuen always does this, in order for me to not worry he always lighten up the threat posed by anyone when speaking about anything, he would look down on all the enemies and all when describing them to me, in fact, he even omits out most of the details where his life was in danger, although I understand why he does this, it still does not relieve me. Moreover, I don't even understand where Kuroto Kuen's confidence comes from. To be able to look down on people such as Homosubi and Suijin, Sai, even Hisashi-sama said that Amatsukami is very dangerous and here he is treating them as nothing. I can't speak about this to Kakashi-kun because of his, well I can't speak about this to Kakashi-kun due to certain reasons, and Gai-kun is just too weird and I am not too sure how to talk to him about this, so you are the only person I can ask of. Everyone knows that after awakening Manjiki Sharingan, you are no longer a normal shinobi, your strength obviously surpasses all four of your squad, so will you please do me this favor and look after Kuroto Kuen and make sure that he doesn't get careless and, when performing missions? But, Kuroto san, he, I, sure sway opened his mouth to speak, but he didn't know what to say anymore. Protect him? Protect him what? Amatsukami? What a joke! He is the leader of Amatsukami. And he is sitting right here. Aside from Amatsukami, even if a threat of such a level that could endanger Kuroto really existed, and if Kuroto-san couldn't deal with it with his strength, then Shirsue can be sure that there are very fewer chances that he would be able to deal with it. Seeing that Shirsue seemed to have some reservations, Yui said with a worried tone, Shirsue Kuen, is my request really so troublesome? Hearing Yui's request Shirsue was more embarrassed and turned looked at Kuroto as if asking what should I do? Kuroto also didn't know what to say and could only give him a look that said, Don't ask me. Shirsue's look changed from what should I do, to then who should I ask if not from you. You don't need to ask Kuroto Kuen's opinion on this, this is a request I am making and Kuroto Kuen would obviously not deny my request, right Kuroto Kuen? Yui asked Kuroto with a very sweet look that sent chills down Kuroto's spine, he knew that if he said anything other than a nod, he wouldn't be getting any food for the next whole month. Kuroto hurriedly nodded. Never anger or offend your woman, the consequences would be too terrible, and Kuroto has no desire to face those consequences. With Kuroto's nod, Yui again turned towards Shirsue and spoke, You see? Kuroto Kuen doesn't have any problem with it, now will you consider my request? Shirsue sighed helplessly and nodded, Uh. All right, you don't need to worry Yui-san. I will take good care of Kuroto-san. Finally, Kuroto said to Yui with a smile, Okay, 
no matter how strong Amitsukami may be, it won't be stronger than Konoha. You don't need to worry about these issues, for now, what you need to focus on is your training Yui, I hope you remember my words and understand what I said back then. That aside, I have some important matters to discuss with Sir Sui so you can leave us be and finish the things that you have to do. Yui nodded, well, I understand. I have some matters to take care of, I will leave you both to your devices, by the way, Sir Sui-san would you like to have dinner with us today? Uh, no I wouldn't want to intrude. Sir Sui said. It's not troublesome at all, after all, I will obviously be cooking dinner for both Kuroto Kuen and myself so adding for you would require the same amount of work therefore there is no trouble. Besides, there are very few opportunities when Kuroto Kuen stays at home because of all the missions and all, and we would really love it if you would have dinner with us, right Kuroto Kuen? Kuroto nodded, hmm, right. Have dinner with us. This is actually a good thing, Shursui is also an orphan just like Kuroto, so he obviously stays alone, therefore, it would be better for Shursui if he gets to experience some familial environment. Seeing that both Kuroto and Yui insisted, Shursui finally relented and nodded, All right, I will be troubling you then. In that case, I will be going shopping, I have to make sure that something good is cooked tonight that Shursui san will love. Yui said with a cheerful look, Please don't push yourself too hard, Yui san. Shursui said, Don't worry. Yui said to Shursui, nodded towards Kuroto. She got up, left the room. A few minutes later, she came back with a tray carrying two teacups, hot water, tea powder, matcha tea leaves, and some rice crackers for snacks. Without interrupting the light discussion that Kuroto and Shursui were having, she brewed the tea for two, placed the cup before them, placed the rice crackers, and then left. As soon as Yui left, Sher Sui couldn't hold himself anymore and hurriedly asked, Kuroto-san, what was up with that Manjiku Sharingan pair that you had in your eye sockets at that time? Kuroto didn't directly answer the question, but took out a storage scroll, printed the required hand seals, and tapped on it with his right hand. Poof! Poof! With a soft sound white smoke appeared over the scroll. As soon as the shite smoke cleared away, two small glass capsules appeared before the two. Looking through the glass cover of the capsule, Shursui noticed some light green solution that filled the capsule and two spherical objects floating within the light green solution in each capsule. As soon as he saw the two objects floating inside the nutrition capsule, Shursui's eyes narrowed, because those two objects make up a pair of eyes and not just any pair of eyes, they are Sharingan. But Shursui was doubtful about something, these are Sharingan? Kuroto nodded casually, right, these two pairs of Sharingan belong to Uchiha Hideki and Uchiha Ryota. Although Shursui expected this result when his doubt was confirmed Shursui had a complicated and saddened look, he understands that Hideki's and Ryota's death was inevitable but seeing their eyes floating in the capsule, Shursui only feels guilty that he didn't choose any other method. Kuroto saw that although a little saddened, Shursui was still calm so he decided to drop the bigger bombs, both of these pairs of Sharingan are Manjiku Sharingan. And boy did it work. What? Shursui suddenly exclaimed and stood up at his position when he heard Kuroto's words, looking at him with an incredible expression, seeing that Kuroto-san doesn't seem to be joking he looked at the two pairs of Sharingan that are actually Manjiku Sharingan pair with inexplicable expression, how is this even possible? Kuroto didn't answer this question as Shursui should already know how a pair of Manjiku Sharingan is born. Instead, he pointed at one of the capsules and said, This pair of Manjiku Sharingan belongs to Uchihara Yoda, and it is this pair that I was using when I enacted as Homosubi. Shursui looked at the two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan then turned towards Kuroto and asked seriously, Kuroto-san, what did Ryota and Hideki go through so that both of them awakened Manjiku Sharingan? Chapter 249 Since Kuroto showed both of the Manjiku Sharingan pairs to Shursui, naturally he does not intend to conceal what he put Ryota and Hideki through, as such he briefly mentioned the Manjiku Sharingan project to Shursui. Of course, Kuroto did not disclose everything and only roughly mentioned some of the details of the experiment with just a few words that would give Shursui a general idea of what exactly he did. After listening to Kuroto's words, Shursui's conscience was screaming to him, Kuroto-san, you really are a cruel person. From a rational point of view, 
Kuroto's Manjiku Sharingan project is not only a test on living humans but is actually mind-breaking gruesome torture. Of course, that's not a problem as shinobi have to constantly torture out all sorts of intelligence out of their enemies so torture is not that big of a deal, and even human experimentation is also not wrong after all if you don't study all sorts of things then how will new things be researched? What's important is that the subjects used for torture and human experimentation generally are enemies and criminals, but here the subjects of the experimentation were neither enemies nor criminals, putting them through such a stimulation test is really inhuman. But considering the fact that both Hideki and Ryota would have been killed anyway so whether the stimulation tests were carried out or not does not change their inevitable death. In the first case, they would have met a simple death, but because of the Manjiku Sharingan project, that was no longer the case. And the result of this project also cleared up the suspicions on Shirsue, at the same time created another homosubi of Amitsukumi who poses a great threat towards the Uchiha clan and the village. So, to a certain extent, this whole Manjiku Sharingan project helped in saving the Uchiha clan from heading towards destruction in one way or the other. But with human beings' hypocritical nature, no matter how rational and correct something is, they would feel some sort of aversion and rejection towards certain things. What's more, the test subjects Kuroto used were still living and breathing Uchiha clan members who were not even charged with any crimes. As such, Shursui can't help but feel a bit of disgust after hearing such a thing. It is basic human nature and there is nothing wrong with it. Unless you are too familiar with such things you would naturally be repelled. Therefore, Kuroto did not mind Shirsui's words, he knows that he was cruel towards them. Kuroto is not a saint like Uzumaki Naruto, nor does he plan to become one, he would do what's necessary, irrespective of whether that is morally a good thing or bad thing, it does not matter to him. Even though Kuroto did not say anything, Shirsui realized that his tone was not correct and apologized, I am sorry Kuroto-san, I was a little rude just now, I know you did this to clear up suspicions on me and for the sake of Uchiha clan, and yet I spoke as such. Please forgive my conduct. Shursui is obviously not stupid. He obviously understands that this is not the only reason Kuroto-san did so, but does it really matter? In the end, it did clear up the suspicions on him as well as paved a way for the Uchiha clan to integrate back to Kanoha. Throughout the incident of Uchiha Hideki and Uchiha Ryota, the tension between Uchiha clan and Hokage faction has calmed down a little, even people of Kanoha have some sympathy for the Uchiha that their shinobi had to go through such attacks by Amitsukumi. Overall, the emergence of Amitsukumi has not only disrupted the Uchiha clan's plans for the coup by shifting their attention from rebelling against the Hokage faction to destroying the Amitsukumi but also forced them to unite with the Hokage faction if they want to be able to do so. If Uchiha clan alone plans to destroy Amitsukumi or if the Hokage faction alone intends to annihilate Amitsukumi then that's just a pipe dream, as such both the factions have no choice but to work together to deal with Amitsukumi, and when people work together, they form emotional bonds which are hard to break so the relationship between two sides will obviously be mended and the distrust will also disappear, of course. All this will take time and continuous pressure. Kuroto did not say anything in regards to Shirsui's words, Clearing up Shirsui's name or preventing the annihilation of the Uchiha clan is not the only reason he conducted these tests, he obviously has his own reasons and selfishness involved, which he is obviously not going to mention to Shirsui for now, therefore, instead of discussing this, he changed the topic and said, I am going to fuse these two pairs into a pair of Eternal Manjiku Sharingan. Shirsui was confused, into an Eternal Manjiku Sharingan? From Shirsui's reaction, Kuroto can judge that he isn't yet aware of the secret of Eternal Manjiku Sharingan. In today's shinobi world apart from Kuroto, Uchiha Shinichi, Uchiha Hideki, and Ryota brothers, and perhaps the Uchiha Patriarch, only Abido, and Zetsu should be aware of what an Eternal Manjiku Sharingan is. And Kuroto thinks that Uchiha Fugaku would not be idiot enough to give out such critical and important secrets if not necessary for many reasons that aren't even needed to be explained. So, Kuroto thought a little and said, if I didn't guess wrong, your vision should have started to decline, right? Not to mention Shirsue's Manjiku Sharingan pair, even the vision of Ryota's Manjiku Sharingan pair that Kuroto used has started to decline because of such heavy use both the time. 
even in the original series, Sasuke who awakened the Manjiku Sharingan was nearly blind after using his Manjiku Sharingan in only a few battles, therefore it is not strange that Shir Sui has had his Manjiku for so many years and even used several times will start to have his vision declined. Shir Sui did not hide this and nodded, yes, my eyesight has declined somewhat. Hearing Shir Sui's words, Kuroto spoke, the reason why your patriarch chooses to keep his Manjiku Sharingan hidden and would rarely use its power is also somewhat related to this issue, a Manjiku Sharingan will always lose its vision after each use. Explaining up to here, Kuroto added, and that vision will keep declining until you become blind eventually, but eternal Manjiku Sharingan is one of the ways to not only gain eternal eyesight but also increase the power of the Manjiku Sharingan. Shursui nodded, but there was something really puzzling him, I guess I understand that but Kuroto-san I have a question, why do you know of so many secrets of the Uchiha clan that even I, as an Uchiha is not aware of? Kuroto said, I learned these secrets from some hidden scrolls that I permanently borrowed from Shimura Danzo's root base, without taking his permission of course, and from what I can tell, Nidin Sama seems to have conducted quite a lot of research on Sharingan and all that research was inherited by Danzo, and since I have borrowed some of that research, I managed to learn some secrets. Of course, that's a lie, Nidin Sama may have some research on Sharingan as Kuroto stated but Kuroto neither needed to borrow it nor did he try to, but Shir Sui does not need to know that, as long as the blame is put on Shimura Danzo or Nidin Sama, then everything is well and good for Kuroto, after all, these dead people and soon to be dead people must have some uses right? Permanently borrowed without permission? Isn't that literally stealing? Forget it! Just think that you didn't hear any such information. Shirsue thought with an awkward smile. Kuroto said, Well from there I learned about Eternal Manjiku Sharingan and the method to gain it. After a short pause, Kuroto continued, And I plan to fuse these two pairs into a pair of Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, but before doing so, I still need something from the Uchiha clan that only you can bring me, it's called a transcription seal. Transcription seal, I seem to have heard that term before, where have I heard it? Shirsue thought about this for a few seconds and then replied, Right, I remember, I heard Patriarch mention this technique once, it is a technique that can seal a Manjiku Sharingan Dojitsu power into the targeted subject which could be many things, like Sealer's own Sharingan, other Sharingan, and into some other objects. This seal can activate when a certain requirement set by the Sealer is fulfilled. Kuroto nodded, Yes, that's exactly the one I am talking about. Shirsue hesitated a little, then said, I will try to ask Patriarch if he can teach it to me, as long as this technique is not too dangerous, I think he should agree to it. Now that the suspicions on him have been cleared up, so Shirsue is once again the second figure of the Uchiha clan, therefore, Uchiha Fugaku should not deny his request. What's more, Transcription Seal is not some kinjutsu like that of Izanami or Izanagi, so Uchiha Fugaku should agree to teach it to Shirsue. Kuroto nodded and said, After these two pairs are fused into a pair of Eternal Manjiku Sharingan they will be kept with me for some time, when your eyes go completely blind in the future, make sure to inform me, I will replace your eyes with this pair of Eternal Manjiku Sharingan. Shirsue shook his head, I don't think I will ever transplant that pair, it's better that I stay away from them. Deep down inside, Shirsue was still resisting the two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan in front of him. In regards to Shirsue's words, Kuroto did not say much, he also understands Shirsue's character, therefore, there was no need. Moreover, it will be a while before Shirsue's eyes go completely blind because Shirsue has always had an awe of Manjiku Sharingan and has been very restrained in using it, even the few times he has used Manjiku Sharingan, he has mainly used Susanoo, did not once use Koto Emitsukumi, so the speed with which his vision is dwindling is a bit slow, as long as he keeps this up, he should be fine for a few more years. With that out of the way, Kuroto resealed the two glass capsules in the sealing scroll and put the scroll away. At this time Shirsue suddenly asked, Kuroto-san, you mentioned before that our method will delay the conflict between the clan and village, but it won't solve the conflict for good, and you also said that the situation in the village will change for the better in the future, what will be happening in the future? What is the way out for the Echiha clan from all of this? Kuroto raised an eyebrow, he didn't expect Shirsue to suddenly ask this question out of the blue and fell into a bit of contemplation. 
Shursui didn't interrupt Kuroto. While he was thinking, he sat in silence as he sipped the tea which was already cold and ate the rice crackers. After a long silence, Kuroto recovered to his senses and said, Shursui, do you believe in fate? Fate? Shursui muttered to himself. He was puzzled why Kuroto-san would suddenly ask something that has no definitive answer, so after a bit of thinking, he shook his head, No, I don't believe in the so-called fate. Duh. Kuroto smiled bitterly as he said, Yes, I don't believe in fate either, but what I want you to tell you, and what I want you to know is that this damn fate really exists. Chapter 250 the shinobi sect was founded by Rakuto Sanin. His intentions of spreading the Ninshu among all was because he believed that power must not be concentrated within one individual and must be distributed among everyone so that people could understand each other on equal grounds. Only then can people develop love and understanding for each other. The teachings of Ninshu were meant to give people a better understanding of themselves as well as others and eventually lead the world towards peace. It was all because he believed that the chakra is meant to connect people's spiritual energies with one another. However, Rakuto Sinan's elder son, Atsutsuki Indra, did not follow his teachings, not being chosen as the successor of Ninshu and because of being manipulated by Black Zetsu, Indra weaponized Ninshu into Ninjutsu, others followed his footsteps, and soon the two sons of Rakuto Sinan became the source of disputes in the shinobi world. From that first fight to this day, even if they have actually died, both brothers have been continuously fighting against each other. They reincarnate over and over and continue fighting each other, their perpetual battle is like a curse that the shinobi world has been enduring for the past millennia. Even the main cause of grievances between the Echiha clan and the Senju clan is none other than the reincarnations of Indra and Azura. The previous generation of Indra, Achiha Madara had his final battle with Azura of the previous generation, and that battle was also called the Battle of the Valley of the End. Although Achiha Madara died in that battle he greatly wounded Senju Hashirama in that battle, which made the already paranoid Senju Tobarama more vigilant of the Achiha clan, fearing that another Achiha Madara may again rise from this clan. The succeeding Hokage, Senju Tobarama excluded the Uchiha clan from the central politics by making Uchiha clan responsible for the security of the village and thus Konoha military police force became a second name for the Uchiha clan, although Konoha military police force seems to be a very glorified thing with honor and all, that is actually not true. By making Uchiha clan solely to be responsible for the security of the village and by establishing the Kanoha military police force next to the Kanoha prison, Uchiha clan's movements were greatly restricted, they lost their power in the central politics and were now guards of the village with superficial authority and complete restrictions on their movements. Moreover, the police duties come with an added disadvantage, as such, all the clans started to distance themselves from the Uchiha clan. And the same policy was continued by Sandame Hokage, if Yandame Sama did not die then maybe things would have turned for a better future, but unfortunately, he died on the night of the Kyubi's attack. And Uchiha clan was silently deemed as the culprit responsible for the death of Yandame Hokage. The Uchiha clan obviously can't continue bearing such unfair treatment, therefore the idea of coup germinated within their minds, which has led us to the current circumstances. Uchiha clan has fallen into such a precarious situation, it is not an exaggeration to say that it is fate, right? What exactly is fate? What exactly is a person's fate? Events that we don't have control over are what Kuroto defines as fate. And Kuroto is very disgusted with such things as fate or destiny, because fate also implies that everything has been prearranged and no amount of effort can change what's prearranged. No amount of effort will allow you to resist what has already been decided for you, you will never be able to change anything, it is as if personal effort and hard work one put in everything all amount to naught and meaningless in the face of the so-called fate and destiny. Can fate really not be changed? Kuroto who has been trying to resist the so-called fate has always wanted many things to change, but even he is not sure whether the fate that has been intervining this shinobi world can be changed or not. Shursui looked at Kuroto's face that had an uncertain look. Shursui was also a bit worried, Kuroto-san, are you alright? Kuroto sighed and did not think about all this extremely complicated stuff anymore, smiling bitterly he said to Shursui, it's nothing, I am no longer able to figure out the direction that this shinobi world will progress in. Why did you suddenly mention the topic of fate? 
Shursway asked in confusion, then as if he suddenly realized he's something, Shursway exclaimed, could it be, does it mean that the Uchiha clan is fated to doom, is there no way? Ads by Pub Future. Kuroto shook his head, don't worry. Whether it is fated or not no longer matters, I have given you my words, and I certainly intend to keep them. I will not let Uchiha clan be destroyed and I will not give back on my words, the Uchiha clan will not only not be destroyed but also gain everything it truly deserves as the co-founding clan, regardless of how much time and whatever means it takes, I will make it happen, this is my promise to you sure sway, both as a friend and as the leader of Amitsukumi. Kuroto firmly believes that as long as someone is powerful enough, they can have complete control over how things around him will progress, although Kuroto can't control everything now he can make it so that many of the major things change. As long as one works hard enough, everything is possible. Fate or destiny may as well be a shackle that restricts you, but it is not indestructible that you won't ever be able to break free of it. Shursway was really emotional by what Kuroto said, he couldn't describe how glad he felt when Kuroto said those words, all he could speak was, thank you so much Kuroto-san, your assurance means a lot to me. No matter how much effort I have to put in or how much trouble I have to go through I will continue to follow your lead, here and now, I swear that I, Uchiha Shursue will always be loyal to you, be that a Shursue of the Uchiha clan, Homosubi of Amitsukumi or Cat of Umbutim 11. Kuroto was surprised by Shursue's words, swearing eternal loyalty is a very big decision, and the fact that Shursue chooses to do so really surprised Kuroto. Kuroto did not deny it, Shursue is a truly loyal person, the most trustworthy person Kuroto could have ever asked for, therefore, he did not deny Shursue's decision. Because this decision represents Shursue's conviction, and if Kuroto were to deny it, then he would be disrespecting Shursue's determination, which he does not intend to do. So, all he did was smiling slightly and ruffled Shursue's hair slightly. With that, the serious talks came to an end, Kuroto and Shursue also discussed many things about various techniques, Jinjutsu in particular. Kuroto has never really touched the field of Jinjutsu, but now that he has Sharingan in his hand, Kuroto obviously plans to not let this opportunity go to waste. So, Shursue, who is undoubtedly one of the best Jinjutsu users in not only Kanoha but the entire Shinobi world gave Kuroto a lot of insight into this new field. The discussions continued, soon the sun dipped in the northwest horizon and it was already past the twilight. Both of them didn't know that Yui had returned home some time ago and the dinner was already prepared. By the time Kuroto and Shursue's discussion came to an end, the dinner was already set up on the dining table. Looking at so many dishes set up before him, Shursue couldn't help but salivate slightly, it has been so long since he has had such an incredible feast. Yui giggled at Shursue's childish antics, the three of them soon got busy with the food, talking, laughing, discussing many light topics during the meal. The atmosphere was very cheerful, giving an illusion as if they were no longer living in this war-ridden shinobi world, no burden was placed on any of their shoulders. Between the talks, the food was already finished, and Shursue undoubtedly ate the most. Yui was happy that Shursue liked her cooking. After the meal, Shursue expressed his gratefulness to Yui for letting him have such delicious food and promised that he would take extra care of Kuroto-san during the mission, especially when they encounter Amitsukumi, and then left. While Kuroto and Shursue were having a peaceful evening, the Hokage building was brightly lit and not having peaceful evening. Sandame, the three elder advisors of Kanoha, and Jiraiya sat together to discuss the matter of the upcoming second dockage summit. Although Saratobi Hiruzen was not very happy about Shimura Danzo's personal request with the rakage to hold the second dockage summit, he did not criticize Danzo for this. Because Danzo's reason is very good. Amitsukumi has declared that they will be going after the Nine Bijou, this declaration directly implies that Amitsukumi intends to make the enemy of all the shinobi villages who hold Bijou with them, and based on what little information about Amitsukumi they have, only three of its members aside from the leader are known, as for how many other members have yet to make an appearance is completely a mystery, therefore, it wouldn't be wrong to say that the organization is strong enough to be able to accomplish what they have declared unless the shinobi villages unite to resist Amitsukumi. Otherwise, whether it is Kanoha or Kumodakure, or any other shinobi village for that matter, 
it seems unlikely that any shinobi will be able to resist the combined might of Amatsukami alone. Therefore, it is very logical to hold the Gakich Summit to discuss the plans on how to deal with Amatsukami. After he carefully read the report of the entire hunting operation submitted by Danzo, Sandane frowned, so this member with the wind nature as his disguise has also appeared? Jiraiya nodded, I have seen him with my own eyes, it can't be wrong. Sandame said with a sigh, it seems that Eagle and Cat of the team, Eleven did really encounter an ambush from three members of Amitsukumi at once. Danzo said, if not for him to be able to escape with Homosubi by flying, we would have already captured him and Homosubi. Magnet release, huh? Sandame had a thoughtful look. Different from ice release, magnet release Kekiai Jankai has an extraordinary significance in Sunagakir. The research of magnet release was started by Naidame Kazakage then passed on to Sandame Kazakage who went missing mysteriously and is also the Kekiai Jinkai that the Yandame Kazakage uses, the Kazakage of the past three generations have mastered magnet release. Therefore, it wouldn't be wrong to say that once someone masters magnet release Kekiai Jinkai, he will naturally gain the qualification to be a Kazakage candidate. So, it is difficult to imagine that someone who can be a Kazakage candidate would choose to betray the village and join an organization such as Amitsukumi. Now that I think about it, Hugo Kuroto once encountered a mysterious shinobi with magnet release Kekiai Jinkai which resulted in the death of the root shinobi who was following him, is it possible that that shinobi with the magnet release is the same one from Amitsukumi? If they are the same then how did Hugo Kuroto manage to escape from him? Is it possible that Hugo Kuroto's strength has increased to such a level? No, that seems unlikely for now. So, the other explanation could be that Hugo Kuroto was not his target and the target was that root Umbu, members of Amitsukumi do not kill any shinobi who is not their target, this has been confirmed from their actions over and over, so it is possible. Hmm, I guess we will have to look into that root Umbu's history to have a better understanding of why he was the target, and see if we can find anything about this shinobi with magnet release from there. Thought Sandame. At this time, the elder consultant Yudatin Koharu said, first, a mysterious shinobi with the Kekiai Jinkai of Kiridikir, then another mysterious shinobi with the Manjiki Sharingan of the Echiha clan from Kanoha, now a shinobi with magnet release, if this continues then will a next member pop out of nowhere with Shodame Samas would release. Moreover, how in the world is Amitsukumi able to recruit shinobi with such sensitive identities, are they really not afraid to make an enemy out of the five great shinobi villages? Mitokato Hamura said, it's difficult to say, after all, other than Shodame sama nobody else has inherited the wood release, not even Senju Tsunade or her expired brother Senju Nawaki, who are descendants of Shodame sama so I think that is unlikely to happen. Rather than caring about whether they are afraid or not, what she should be worried about is this fellow Yama. Just how strong is he to be considered a leader by such strong individuals? Jiraiya thought of the more important issue and said, since Amitsukami has declared that their targets are the Bijou, then Uzumaki Naruto's protection must be strengthened. As soon as Jiraiya's words fell, a glint in Danzo's eyes and he immediately said, I propose that Root should be responsible for Uzumaki Naruto's protection. Jiraiya was immediately angry, are you kidding me? Sandame chided Jiraiya a little then said to Danzo, I have made arrangements for the protection of Uzumaki Naruto, so you do not have to worry about it. Danzo, for now, your task is to continue gathering intelligence about Amitsukumi and keep a watch of all their movements, very little is known about this organization with its secretive behavior and unique methods of working through things, now we have come to understand that Amitsukumi is not something we can deal with by using the conventional approach by using numbers or deterrence. So we have to change our methods and I trust that you will be able to figure out the perfect method. Danzo was not frustrated by Sandame's early words and nodded seriously after he heard the later part, I will make sure that Amitsukumi is rooted out if it's the last thing I do. By the way, what plans do you have for the second Dockage Summit? Sandame pondered over Danzo's question. It stands to reason that he, as the current Hokage should go from Kanoha's side for the Gakage Summit, but it's highly likely that Amitsukumi will take this opportunity to take advantage of his absence and cause all sorts of troubles, possibly even attempt to kidnap Uzumaki Naruto, who is the Jinchuriki of Kyubi. To make sure that such a thing does not happen, he has to stay in Kanoha. 
After thinking a little, Sandame ordered, Shimura Danzo, since you are the commander of suppression and encirclement operation to hunt down Amitsukumi, as such you will represent Kanaha Dakur at the Gakich summit as my representative. Danzo seems to have expected such a thing and nodded as if it was only a natural thing, do not worry, I will live up to your trust. With that, the meeting was concluded, and the three elder consultants left one after another. Now only Jiraiya and Sandame were left in the Hokage office, Jiraiya has obviously stayed behind because he has something to discuss with Sandame, Sensei, I am still a little worried about Naruto, with what happened to Minato it is difficult for me to forget it so easily if something were to happen to Naruto. Sandame was not surprised by Jiraiya's words and said, Do not worry, I am going to assign Umbu Team 11 with the mission of protecting Uzumaki Naruto, they are currently the strongest Umbu Team in Konoha, as such he will be safe. Jiraiya was frozen, Team 11. Isn't this the same Umbu Team that Uchiha Shursui is part of? Chapter 251 Hearing Jiraiya's worry, Sandame said, Uchiha Shursui also has Manjiku Sharingan, therefore he is the best candidate from the Umbu to contend with Homosubi, What's more, Hugo Kuroto, my guy and the captain of the team Ataki Kakashi will also be there. So, this Team 11 is the most suitable Umbu team to protect Uzumaki Naruto, as such, there should be no problem in regards to Naruto's safety. There is Manjiku Sharingan, the Akugan with sensory purpose, Minato's disciple is also there and finally my Dai's son is also in the team, you are right Sensei, Team 11 indeed seems to be the most stable choice to ensure Naruto's safety. Jiraiya nodded with a smile and continued, so I can leave with confidence. Sandame frowned, leave. Where are you going to leave? First and foremost, Gakage Summit is going to be held soon, as such no shinobi other than the team that will go to the predetermined location will be allowed to leave the village for any reason. Secondly, this is an order from me, you are no longer allowed to continue your travels in this period of emergency. Jiraiya put away his smile and said with a serious expression, I want to bring back Tsunade, the threat that Amitsukumi poses is too great. They are not doing massive damages to the manpower for now, but we don't know if that will remain the case in the future, so the village would definitely need her strength whether as a medical need or as a combatant. Tsunade Hearing Tsunade's name being mentioned, Sandame couldn't help but remember the days when he instructed the three children who later came to be known as the legendary Sanin, Sai. I wonder if she will choose to come back? Moreover, you should also be aware of her. Jiraiya did not let Sandame finish that sentence and said, I will definitely bring her back. Sandame sighed he did not say anything more about it, if Jiraiya can really bring back Tsunade then a lot of things will be solved. So, after nodding slightly, he closed up this matter and questioned another matter, you have personally observed the battlefield where Yandame Rakage and the Jinchuriki of Hachibi fought with the two members of Amitsukumi, what is your personal opinion on this? Jiraiya thought for a while and then said, if not for the fact that I personally saw that battlefield with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed that only four shinobi caused so much destruction, and from what Rakage has stated, most of the damage to the battlefield was caused by Homosubi, Rakage, Killer B or the other member of Amitsukumi played less part in that damage. Sandame asked again, and what about the report about the unique golden fire? Is it the same golden fire that appeared at the mountain a few days ago? Jiraiya nodded, yes, all the characteristics match. From what Uchiha Shursui can think of, those golden flames are probably a special ability of Homosubi Susanu, therefore we can assume that it was Homosubi who was responsible for the destruction of that mountain. The flames are extremely hot and very difficult to put down, the last time I had to use Senjutsu infused water release, and only then the golden fire was extinguished, this time Killer B used water release infused with Hachibi's dense chakra and that managed to extinguish the fire, therefore we can assume that normal water release will not work on that golden fire. Sandame was shocked because that golden fire is now a bigger issue, if Homosubi just lit Kanoha with that golden fire then the whole village will burn down to ashes unless Jiraiya is. Wait! Fuenjutsu should also work in dealing with that golden fire. While Sandame was thinking, Jiraiya continued, 
What I am more concerned about is the identity of the person Homosubi was fighting against at that mountain. After all, the opponent would definitely not be so simple for Homosubi to resort to using such power that literally destroyed entire mountain and so much area around it. Ads by Pub Future. One after another more and more unidentified individuals with Kage or a higher level of strength are appearing in the Shinobi world and this has only made Sandames feel more pressured. Go and get Tsunade back to Kanahagakur. Ordered Sandame. Two days later. Kuroto received the Sandame Sama's order for the summon of Umbu Team 11. After the four members of Team 11 were gathered at the Hokage office, Sandame ordered that their previous mission was officially put to a stop and then assigned a new mission. Taking the scroll from Sandame, all four of them read the content. After the team was finished reading all the details, Sandame ordered, from now on until ordered otherwise, Team 11 will only perform one mission, and that mission is to ensure the safety of Uzumaki Naruto. Captain of Team 11, Hataki Kakashi who wearing his dog Umbu uniform nodded seriously after realizing the seriousness of the matter based on the information written in the scroll. Kakashi obviously knows that Uzumaki Naruto is his teacher's, Yande Mokage Namike's Minato's son, therefore, Kakashi is really very concerned about Naruto's safety after reading the details that Amatsukami will start targeting nine bijou. The other three members of the team did not have any issues so they naturally did not object. With the mission assigned, the four of them left the Hokage building. While the team was leaving the Hokage building Uchiha Shursue and Hyuga Kuroto, who were in there, Cat Umbu and Eagle Umbu disguise looked at each other. From the fact that Sandame Sama has assigned the mission to ensure Uzumaki Naruto's safety, it can be understood that the village authorities have believed that Amatsukami's next targets are nine bijou, and therefore, Hokage Sama has made corresponding deployments. The four came to their usual meetup point, and at this time Kakashi said, We will follow the same approach as always, Team 11 will be divided into two sub-teams and will keep a watch over Uzumaki Naruto alternately. None of the three members of the team had any objection, obviously, all four of them cannot keep a watch over Uzumaki Naruto 24 hours every day, therefore, making sub-teams is only natural. Before Kakashi could subgroup them into two teams, Shursue raised his hand, in that case, it should be fine if I and Kuroto-san are a team, right? Kakashi was not so surprised by Shursue's question, over the years, he has come to understand that Kuroto and Shursue's understanding is very good and generally both of them forms a group if a subgrouping has to be done, so he just looked towards Kuroto, and seeing that Kuroto nodded, so he also did not object and said, all right, you two will be a sub-team, and I and Guy will be sub-team, we will work in shifts, of eight hours each, and after every eight hours we will switch, for the first eight. Hours I and Guy will keep a watch, and then both of you will switch. The four of them agreed, and with that, Kakashi and Guy did not waste any more time and immediately went to start the mission of protecting Uzumaki Naruto from Amatsukami. After Kakashi and Guy were gone, Shursue asked, So, Kuroto-san, how should we work on keeping a watch over Uzumaki Naruto? Kuroto said casually, Just send a shadow clone for now. Are you really going to go, guard, that kid all day? Shursue sighed, All right if you say so. By the way, Patriarch agreed to my request and passed me the scroll of the transcription seal. As soon as Kuroto heard this he was really happy, Great. Shursue said, the transcription seal is not that difficult, even I managed to learn it in just these two days, it does not even require hand seals to use it and is purely activated using visual prowess, according to the patriarch, only members of the Uchiha clan can use transcription seal. Speaking up to here, Shursue handed the scroll to Kuroto and continued, so I am not sure if you will be able to learn this technique. Kuroto thought a little and said, I will think of something, if nothing else works, then I could just transplant a pair of Manjiku Sharingan to learn it. Shursue nodded. Kuroto put away the scroll and said, I also need some of your blood as well as other cell tissues. Shursue did not think too much about this request nor did he deny it and allowed Kuroto to extract blood samples as well as cell tissues from nails, hair, skin peelings, etc. After collecting the cells, Kuroto bid farewell to Shursue and came to his secret laboratory. 
The first thing he did was to properly store all the cells he extracted from Sher Sui. The next thing he did was to spread the scroll he received from Sher Sui and started studying it seriously. The visual prowess is not unique to the Echiha clan. If the requirement to be able to use the transcription seal is to have strong enough visual prowess, then Kuroto should also be able to learn and use the transcription seal because he has the Tensigen. With that understood, Kuroto earnestly focused on learning the transcription seal based on the information written in the scroll. It was only a few hours later that he finally nodded to himself. Sure Sway was right, it truly is not as difficult as I initially thought it would be. After these few hours of studying, Kuroto has roughly understood the functioning and mechanism of the transcription seal, now all he has to do is use it practically. Chapter 252 From the Seal Kuroto has learned that there are two different approaches to using the transcription seal, and each approach has a certain difference in the result. The first approach is the same as when Itachi sealed Amaterasu and Sasuke Sharingan or when he programmed Shirsue's Manjikyu to activate Koto Amatsukumi when it encounters Itachi's Manjikyu Sharingan, in this method the seal would only work once, and then the programming will disappear. The other approach is to transfer a part of your visual prowess, but here's the catch. When you transfer a part of your visual prowess, then part of your visual prowess will be separated from you and will be sealed at the target, and when that part of visual prowess is separated from you, your visual prowess will decrease by that exact same amount, although it can be recovered at a later date. Until it's recovered the user's visual prowess will remain decreased. One of the advantages of this approach is that it works the same but there wouldn't be just one use, so long as the chakra supply is there the programming will keep working. But there is another limitation with the second approach, for this approach to work the user has to be alive, if the user dies then the programming will also disappear, which is not a limitation for the first approach in which the transcription seal will work exactly as it was programmed even if the programmer dies. Both approaches have their advantages and limitations and it depends upon the user's needs which one suits his needs. For Kuroto, the second approach is more suitable as such he is going to try the second approach. P.S. For convenience's sake, we are going to call them Transcription Seal 1 and Transcription Seal 2, respectively. To do so, Kuroto took out the Sui Gene clone from the nutrition tank and placed it on the test bench. After making sure that the clone was in perfect condition, Kuroto was ready to use the Transcription Seal 2. Closing his eyes, Kuroto urged the visual prowess of his Tensigen and then suddenly opened his eyes, the next thing he did was to gently touch the forehead of Suijin clone with his index finger. Instantly the seal was activated and Kuroto was able to feel a part of his Tensigen visual prowess separating from him and being sealed in the semi-finished Byakugan of the Suijin clone. After the seal was completed, Kuroto could feel that his inside has dropped a little compared to before. And that was not all, since he did not use Ryumyaku chakra while using the seal, Kuroto also felt that a fourth of his chakra was also emptied instantly, which led to a momentary sluggishness and Kuroto had to take the support of the test bench to stabilize his figure in order to not fall because his legs were a bit softened. It turns out that the burden of using transcription seal is so heavy. No wonder only a few individuals of the Uchiha clan are known to have used this technique, and it instantly resulted in Itachi's death as soon as he sealed Amaterasu and Sasuke Sharingan. Even without the use of Ryumyaku, Kuroto can certainly say that his chakra reserves have grown very high over the years, although not to the exaggerated level of Senju Hashirama or Uchiha Madara, it wouldn't be wrong to say that his chakra has far surpassed the chakra reserves of the legendary Sanin, which in itself says that his chakra reserves are also huge. And even then, a quarter of his chakra was consumed in using this just goes to show just how taxing transcription seal is. Kuroto soon stabilized his situation and after putting away his thoughts he walked towards the test bench to see what changes have occurred in it. After a while of observation, Kuroto frowned, as he found that there seems to be no significant change in the Sui Jin clone on the first observation. Did it not work? Kuroto was a bit confused. To confirm his doubt, he activated the Tensigen and again carefully observed the Sui Jin clone. Ah, that's a bit interesting I guess? Kuroto muttered with an intriguing look. This is because, in his Tensigen vision, Kuroto was able to notice an imperceptible chakra reaction inside the right eye of the Suijin clone lying on the test bench, 
but this chakra reaction was too subtle and if it wasn't for his Tensegan, Kuroto is sure that he would have been unable to notice it. And this is the exact reason why Kuroto found this turn of events to be a bit interesting. Almost a quarter of Kuroto's chakra was transferred while using the transcription seal and yet he only perceives a very imperceptible chakra reaction from the Suijin clone. Does that mean that most of the chakra was lost? Not really, the chakra is not lost and it has perfectly taken root inside that Byakugan as per Kuroto's programming. Then why the subtle chakra reaction? It just means that perceiving the chakra sealed using the transcription seal is very difficult and needs extreme insight. Since the seal was successful, Kuroto needs to see what is the exact difference between the previous and current state, after all, a part of Rain Will Interaction Power which is one of the many techniques that the Tensegan has to offer has been sealed inside the Suijin clone so Kuroto has to also understand these changes that this transfer of some of his visual prowess leads to. So, to be able to do so, Kuroto turned around and reached out his hand towards a large cabinet in the corner of the lab. Rain Will Pull Voila! Instantly the cabinet was pulled towards Kuroto under the effects of an attractive force. After confirming what he wanted, Kuroto used Rain Will Push to push back the cabinet to its initial position and thought to himself, sure enough, there is some decrease in the amount of force that I am able to exert using Rain Will Interaction with the same amount of chakra consumption. After confirming this, Kuroto understood that the transcription seal, too, cannot be abused. Because each time the seal is used, the caster's visual prowess will decrease which is a risky thing, therefore it is better to only use the transcription seal too when extremely necessary. With that confirmation and understanding, Kuroto sat on the chair and used the Tensegan soul to send to transfer his soul into the Suijin clone body. As Kuroto closed his eyes, Suijin clone's eyes opened, and he sat up. Suijin clone has already been used by Kuroto several times, as such, this time Kuroto did not feel even a bit of sluggishness and he was in perfect sync with the clone body. After spending a while getting used to the different body, Suijin jumped off the test bench swiftly and tried to use the rain while interaction which has been sealed inside this body by Kuroto using the transcription seal too. Hmm, I feel it, the transcription seal too has indeed worked and something is sealed in the right Byakugan of this body. To see the effects that this sealed ability will have, Suijin stretched out his hand towards the same cabinet and urged his chakra. Rain will pull. Voila. Just as intended, the cabinet was pulled towards Suijin under the traction force of rain will pull. Then he used rain will push to push back the cabinet into its previous position. After confirming that transcription seal 2 was indeed working, Suijin thought, although the effect of the rain will interaction is 20% weakened, there is no doubt that transcription seal is working perfectly as intended. With this guess confirmed he did not stay in the Suijin body any longer and used Tensegan's soul to send to transfer his soul back to the main body and also withdrew back the chakra he sealed inside Suijin's Bikugan. Although this method seems to be very useful, Kuroto does not intend to divide his strength. Despite all of its shortcoming, the transcription seal is really amazing, whether type 1 or type 2, both of them have their uses and will be very useful. Prior to this, Kuroto was always doubtful that how come Uchiha Madara managed to fool Shodame sama and Naidame sama after all, if there is a Zanaji pre-programmed in his Sharingan, there should have been some chakra reaction. And it must be known that the perception abilities of Shodame sama and Naidame sama are obviously extremely good, as long as there is even a bit of chakra reaction in Madara's body both of them would have easily discovered that something is wrong. But they did not, and Uchiha Madara fooled them with his Anaji. They were unable to notice because the chakra reaction of the transcription seal is extremely subtle. Even Abito suffered from Itachi's Amaterasu because of this, otherwise, how come Abito did not notice that there was Itachi's chakra present in Sasuke's Sharingan? It is obviously because the chakra reaction of the transcription seal is imperceptible. Understanding this, Kuroto can't help but think that how so many amazing techniques have been held in the Uchiha clan, Izanami, Izanagi, and the transcription seal are some of the few techniques that Kuroto knows, this does imply that these are the only techniques. The destruction of such a clan is a huge loss for the world of Shinobi. 
From Kuroda's perspective, whether as a shinobi or as a scientific researcher, the Uchiha clan is just too valuable to be allowed to be destroyed, therefore, even if not for the promise he made to Shirsue, Kuroda would not allow the Uchiha clan to disappear. All that aside, now Kuroto has confirmed that he can use the transcription seal too so he can now begin the fusion process of the two Manjiku Sharingan pairs into the eternal Manjiku Sharingan pair. Of course, before the process begins, he first needs to seal Uchiha Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan technique Dekokuden into Ryota's right eye with the transcription seal. Chapter 253 To seal Dekokuden into Uchiha Ryota's right eye with the help of the transcription seal, Kuroto must first transplant Uchiha Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan. Kuroto would obviously not risk removing the Tensigen from his main body, and since there are no other clones aside from Suijin clone currently so Suijin clone is the only option he has to use for the fusion process of the two Manjiku Sharingan pairs. Using the surgical instruments, Kuroto carefully removed the semi-finished Byakugan from the eye sockets of Suijin clone. In the future when he is going to use the Suijin clone for the ritual to achieve Kekiaimura through the Chimera technique, there must be no defects in his main body or any of the clones, even the eyes in the eye sockets of the clone will also be the same semi-finished Byakugan, therefore, this pair of semi-finished Byakugan must not be lost or destroyed, otherwise, the whole clone he has cultivated up to now will become useless. Therefore, Kuroto carefully sealed the semi-finished Byakugan in the preservation solution and then transplanted Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan in the eye sockets of Suijin clone. Next, Kuroto brought out Uchiha Ryota's body that was in a temporary stasis and reinstalled his Manjiku Sharingan into his eye sockets. With that done, the initial preparations were completed, and the next thing he has to do is to use the transcription seal, too. For this purpose, Kuroto again used the Tensigen soul to send to transfer his soul into the Suijin clone. Coming to the test bench where Uchiha Ryota laid unconscious, Suijin activated the Manjiku Sharingan. Then after completing all the preparation, Suijin used his index finger and gently tapped Uchiha Ryota's forehead. As soon as the action was performed the transcription seal activated and Hideki's Manjiku technique Dekokuden was sealed into Ryota's right Manjiku Sharingan. The moment the transcription seal was completed, Suijin felt a sudden weakness. Ha! 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 Leaning against the wall, Suijin panted for a while to ease his breathing. Using this clone body to cast the transcription seal is quite difficult. When Kuroto used his main body to cast the transcription seal from Tensigen, he only felt a momentary weakness, but this time, he used Suijin clone to cast the transcription seal from the transplanted Manjiku Sharingan, so he had to bear more pressure. Fortunately, the transcription seal only needed to be used once otherwise this clone would have been damaged due to bearing excessive pressure. Suijin muttered while shaking his head slightly. After recovering, he tried to perceive the transcription seal, and as he expected, there was nothing he could perceive from Ryota's right eye, so changing his approach, Suijin tried to check his eyes and found that Dekokuden was exhausted from his eyes. The reason why it was lost was that he transferred it completely. Confirming his guess, Suijin muttered, I just hope that my guess is right. The reason for going to so much trouble is to ensure that the eternal Manjiku Sharingan that will be obtained after the fusion of two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan can have Dekokuden in the right eye and Yayorozu in the left eye. However, this will only happen if his assumption that transcription seal will have some influence is correct, otherwise, the eternal Manjiku Sharingan will not have Dekokuden, instead, it will have Okinanoshi, which is the original dojutsu that Ryota awakened. After completing the second step, now only the final step is to implant both Manjiku Sharingan so as to initiate their fusion into the eternal Manjiku Sharingan pair. To do this, he used the Tensigen soul to send and transferred back his soul to the main body. The next was to place the Suijin clone on the test bench and remove Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan pair from the eye sockets and replace the semi-finished Byakugan pair back to the eye sockets it belonged to. With that done, Kuroto took the removed Manjiku Sharingan pair and walked to the other test bench on which Uchiha Ryota was lying. The reason Kuroto did not kill Hideki and Ryota was that he knew that later on, he would need them to fuse the two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan into the eternal Manjiku Sharingan. B. 
because the fusion process requires that either one of the owners of the ManGQ acts as the host body to initiate and carry out the fusion process, the reason is obviously to provide a continuous and stable chakra supply. As for who to choose as host, this decision entirely depends on Kuroto. Ads by PubFuture And since Kuroto has chosen Ryota's ManGQ Sharingan pair as the base because of the ManGQ techniques, Therefore, Kuroto is obviously going to choose Ryota to be the host. Coming to the side of the test bench on which Ryota was kept, Kuroto reconfirmed that all the seals that he has cast on him were working, as well as all his indicators were normal, and since everything was right, exactly as it should be, Kuroto took a deep breath and started the final step to the fusion. The fusion of two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan into the Eternal Manjiku Sharingan happens when one pair completely swallows the visual prowess of the other pair. Therefore, the surgery for fusion is actually transplanting, not the correct term to what is referred to here, Hideki's Manjiku Sharingan into Ryota's eye sockets, who already has his pair of Manjiku Sharingan in his eye sockets. In short, Ryota's eye sockets will hold two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan one over another, at the same time. And this is also the reason why the pattern of Eternal Manjiku Sharingan is a combination of both pairs of Manjiku Sharingan. The space in the eye sockets is obviously limited, and the area that connects the optic nerve is extremely delicate, so it is actually very difficult to accommodate two eyeballs in one eye orbit at the same time. Even a small mistake will not only damage the orbits, especially the nerves, it will also damage the Manjiku Sharingan pair, which will directly lead to the failure of the fusion process, so even Kuroto who already has rich experience in transplanting eyeballs will have to be extremely careful when carrying out this overly complicated operation. After opening Ryota's eyelids with the help of the surgical instruments, Kuroto started the operation to transplant the left eye. Human eye sockets are surrounded by soft tissues, and the eyeballs are also made up of soft tissues, as such, it is not impossible to squeeze it to accommodate two eyeballs within the eye socket. What's important is to ensure that neither the eye orbits nor the eyeballs are damaged during the transplantation process. The difficulty of this operation is so high that it took Kuroto one whole hour to transplant the left eye alone. After the left eye was transplanted, Kuroto breathed in relief and wiped away the sweat from his forehead. The transplantation of the left eye was successful without any rejection. After drinking some water and a five-minute break, Kuroto again started the transplantation operation, this time for the right eye. Similar to the left eye, the right eye was also transplanted smoothly without any rejection. With this, the transplantation operation is completed, and Kuroto wrapped Ryota's eyes with an antibacterial cloth that will also keep the eyes moist. Kuroto does not know how long it took Uchiha Madara to fuse the two Manjiku Sharingan into Eternal Manjiku Sharingan pair, but he does remember it very vaguely that it took Sasuke a few days to completely merge the two Manjiku Sharingan pair into the Eternal Manjiku Sharingan. And considering the fact that Ryota is and will stay unconscious, the time required for fusion may in fact be longer than Sasuke. Chapter 254 After several days of observation, Kuroto was able to confirm that the two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan in the eye sockets of Ryota have begun a preliminary fusion, however, the fusion speed is very slow. Standing in front of the test bench, Kuroto helped his chin with his right hand and his left hand over his chest thinking posture and muttered to himself, at this speed, both the pairs will take at least three months to fully fuse into Eternal. Ryota, the host carrying out the fusion, is in a state of coma, so the fusion of two pairs is not being guided by his will like a voluntary process, rather it is taking place as per his subconscious. Because of this, the fusion of both the pairs into Eternal Manjiku Sharingan has slowed down. And Kuroto does not seem to have any effective solution to solve this problem and has to calmly wait. As for whether the two pairs will truly fuse successfully or whichever techniques will the eternal Manjiku Sharingan awaken, Kuroto no longer has any say in this, it all depends on the end result. So, putting away the matter of the eternal Manjiku Sharingan, for now, Kuroto started to begin the plan for the cultivation of the Fire Nature clone. The difficulty of cultivating the Fire Nature clone is undoubtedly much higher than the previous Water Nature clone. 
This is not only because fire nature is extremely violent and burning and therefore is not as stable as the water nature, but also because the subject whose genes Kuroto has chosen for the fire nature clone is a member of the Uchiha clan. Although the Uchiha clan is born with a natural affinity for fire release, it is still considered the secondary chakra nature, while in nature is a more common chakra natures that the members of the Uchiha clan have, and Kuroto also has extremely dense and potent in chakra, which symbolizes spiritual energy and is necessary for dojutsu type Kekiai Jinkai. As such during the whole cloning process, Kuroto not only has to filter out his own in chakra but Shirsui's in chakra as well to make fire chakra nature the main nature of the resulting clone, otherwise the clone would become a waste of effort and resources. Kuroto already has some experience in filtering out the in chakra because he filtered out his own in chakra while creating water nature clone, as such he understands that the process of chakra nature filtration causes some degree of damage to the cells. At that time, only Kuroto's cells were required to be filtered while Yuki Haku's cells were used as is, but this time both his and Shirsui's cells have to be filtered. In other words, the damage to cells will be higher, which will reduce the probability of successful fusion of the two cell types. Buzzing At this time the alarm from the large centrifuge filter sounded indicating that the cell samples he placed in the centrifuge filter for the in chakra filtration of both his cells and Shirsui's cells have been completed. Initially, Kuroto prepared 500 samples from his cells. Since Kuroto already has a certain level of experience filtering out in chakra from his cells, therefore, he had a better understanding of which potencies to use to not damage the cells too much. As such more samples survived the filtration process than the last time, the number stretched to 89. That is correct, the total number of samples that survived the filtration process is 89. As for the rest? They are either too damaged or completely lost their cell activity. Similarly, Kuroto prepared another 1,000 samples from Shirsui's cells. He prepared twice the number because this was the first time he carried out chakra filtration for Uchiha cells, as such he had to work his way through various potencies and find which one suited the cell's samples perfectly, this again was manual work and took a lot of days. Finally, the number of samples that survived is 73. These 89 and 73 samples were deemed suitable to be processed and used for the next step which is the cell fusion process while the rest were discarded and disposed of. Without any further ado, Kuroto started the cell fusion process. Similar to last time, the ratio of the number of cells he used for fusion was 99 to 1. In simple words, for each cell of Shirsui, 99 of his cells were used. This means that the stem cells that will be used to create the cell bud for the cultivation of Fire Nature clone will have 99% of Kuroto's cells and 1% of Shirsui's cells. For those wondering how is that even possible, as the number of cell samples does not match this ratio? The answer is very simple. Before we talked about the number of cell samples, not the number of cells, each sample contains more than one cell as such maintain the ratio is very easy. The final number of samples that went through the fusion process is 73. After injecting Shirsui's cells into the 73 samples one by one, Kuroto quietly waited for the fusion process to begin. Soon, failed results started to appear, which means that the cell fusion did not occur and resulted in a rejection. There could be multiple causes for this, which includes insufficient cell activity, unmatchable DNA, death of the fused cells midway through the fusion process, and so on. In less than an hour, the fusion reaction of 59 samples resulted in a failure. In the next few minutes, the leftover 14 samples also started to lose cell activity. By the time the entire fusion process was over for all the samples, only one sample survived the fusion process, while the rest all were dead. Kuroto, who was observing the entire fusion reaction, had a serious look on his face. During the cloning of Suijin clone, the number of samples that went through the fusion process was only six, and even out of those six, three samples successfully survived the fusion process, showing a success rate of 50%. But this time, 73 samples went through the fusion process, and still, only one sample survived the fusion process, the success rate of the experiment is not even 1.37%. Does the DNA combination of Hyuga and Uchiha has such a high rejection rate? 
Although Kuroto expected that cultivating Fire Nature clone would not be easy and would require repeated trial and error even during the cloning process, he did not expect that the success rate of the fusion process would drop down to such a low percentage. Sighing slightly, Kuroto collected the only sample that survived the fusion process, named it Sample 1A, placed it on top of the stage clip of the high-precision microscope, and observed it through the ocular lens. While observing the fused group of cells, Kuroto's face was full of disappointment. This is because the only sample that successfully survived the fusion process is also very severely damaged, and the cell activity is also very low, as such it does not fit the minimum standard necessary for creating the cloning bud and was therefore classified as unsuitable. But Kuroto thought a little and after a while of hesitation, Kuroto decided to not discard it but put it inside the incubator to start the budding. In the following weeks, Kuroto continued this experimentation, chakra filtration, fusion, and so on, and the results were far worse than he expected, no matter how many samples were used or how many samples went through the fusion process, none of them were deemed successful, each and every reaction for the fusion process resulted in failure. This became a reason for Kuroto's distress, even after spending so much time, money, effort, and energy, the result he obtained were repetitive failures, finally, he couldn't help but wonder, is it possible my and Shirsui's genes are non-compatible that the fusion process is resulting in all but failures? This doubt is not unreasonable, the success rate of the previous fusion experiment was as high as 50%, but the overall success rate this time is not even 0.1%, and gene incompatibility is the only reason that Kuroto can only think of for such a result. And strangely enough, while Kuroto continued his experimentation process, the cloning bud that was made out of the sample 1A, which Kuroto deemed to be unsuitable but did not discard, and was placed in a large nutrition tank to undergo the cultivation process was lucky enough to develop. However, Kuroto would always have a frown whenever he would observe this developing clone. Because Kuroto can't understand why this unsuitable sample underwent some kind of change as a result of which, its gender changed into that of a female as it developed from the stem cells to its current state, completely deviating from Kuroto's plan. Naturally, Kuroto can't accept using this female clone, so he had to continue the cloning experimentations with different cell samples including Itachi, Shinichi, etc. Now, Kuroto no longer feels that he has so many choices to choose from because the rejection between Uchiha and Hyuga genes is extremely very high. Chapter 255, Land of Rain while Hyuga Kuroto was busy carrying out various experiments for the cultivation of Fire Nature clone, Hiroko, a Kanaha de Kur missing mean, was also conducting various experiments in his laboratory in the Land of Rain. Ah! Suddenly, a loud screaming and wailing sound echoed in his laboratory. On the test bench, a certain man's body was constantly swelling into various blobs of huge sarcomas that glowed with purple light. The number of these blobs was quite a lot, giving the man a distorted and disgusting appearance. But, Hiroko who stood at the side did not detest this, and in fact, had a happy and ecstatic look, his eyes clearly dictated that he was very excited by observing the changes that the man went through. At this moment, the wailing and screaming of the man on the test bench gradually subsided. The huge blobs of sarcomas that stood out of his body also shrank back one after another, as if they were never even there a few moments ago. Boom! Then suddenly, the man's body that had just recovered suddenly burst from inside, splattering blood, gore, meat, and bones all over the laboratory. Splashed with blood and gore all over his body, Hiroko was not only not angry, but in fact, had his lips curved into an evil grin. Heh, dark medical ninjutsu turns out to be more useful than I thought. In the original story, in the same time period, Hiroko had to constantly avoid being noticed by Kanoha's umbu and therefore had to change his hiding place from time to time, and had to work in extreme secrecy, moreover, he was also busy with the matter of funding for his big project, so the development of Chimera Jutsu was very slow, almost close to a standstill. But that's not the case here, after being forced to join Akatsuki organization, Hiroko no longer fears being discovered by Kana Dakur, and also has support from the Akatsuki organization in terms of funds. Moreover, 
He also has Shino's assistants, who is extremely proficient in human physiology, has remarkable medical knowledge, and is also a master of various regeneration techniques. There is also Yomi, who is a master of dark medical ninjutsu. So, having to not work in so secrecy, access to proper fundings courtesy to Akatsuki, coupled with the advice and assistance from Shino and Yomi, Hiroko was able to speed up the development of the Chimera technique by many times and has now made a major breakthrough in it. Hiroko walked out of the laboratory while wiping away the blood and gore on his body. In another room, Shino was discussing some of his ideas about artificial bijou with Yomi. Similar to Hiroko, joining Akatsuki has been quite beneficial for him, as his rabi project has also proceeded very smoothly. At present, there are only a few technical difficulties he has to solve to become a perfect Jinchuriki of rabi. Seeing that Hiroko walked out of his experimental laboratory, Shino immediately stopped his discussion with Yomi and asked eagerly from Hiroko, How was it? Did you succeed? Hiroko threw the bloodstained towel to the trash can and spoke, the initial phase was a complete success, but the body of the test subjects are too fragile to be able to bear the burden of holding in the chimera buds. Shino was a little disappointed and sat back with a dispirited look. If Hiroko's experiment had succeeded, Shino would have also started his rabi project because all those technical difficulties would have been solved more or less. Hiroko did not care about Shino's downcast look and spoke with a Cheshire grin, but dark medical ninjutsu was indeed more useful than I thought, if the core of the subject that will take in the chimera buds is strong enough, then the probability of success would be as high as 95%. Yomi laughed immediately, I am happy that dark medical ninjutsu is useful. After being saved by Hiroko and Shino, Yomi also joined Akatsuki but in terms of rank, he is Hiroko and Shino's subordinate so his authority is not much, as such, Yomi has to always maintain a polite and careful tone when talking to them. Really, 95%? Shino exclaimed when he heard the words again, and said, if that's the case, then that means we can start to implement both of our plans, right? Hiroko tried to suppress the excitement in his heart but it was difficult to suppress it while he nodded to Shino's question. After his recent breakthrough in the study of the Chimera technique, Hiroko is confident in the success of his plan, and therefore, he can officially commence the Kekiai Jinkai stealing plan, he has been making preparation for this moment for so long, now all that he lacks are the Kekiai Jinkai users that he is going to absorb inside him to become the perfect ninja. And Hiroko knows that with the power of Akatsuki, gathering all those targets will be very easy. Soon, Hiroko came to the tallest tower of Amage Kure, the place from where the god of this land watches over the people of this nation. Under the leadership of Angel Sama, he was allowed to meet Lord Pain, the savior of this world and the leader of the Akatsuki organization. For a moment Hiroko looked at the pair of Rinnegan, the eye with the purple ripple pattern then looked away immediately and said, Leader, my experiment has reached a critical juncture, and I believe that I am extremely close to success, to finally complete the project I need help from organization. Tendo Payne had an indifferent look as if he was not interested but still choose to humor himself, what do you need from the organization? He questioned in a deep voice. Hiroko immediately said, I. I need the organization's help to gather a few ninjas with selective Kekiai Jinkai so that I can finally start the preparation for the ritual. Angel on the side spoke, gathering shinobi with Kekiai Jinkai wouldn't be an easy thing. Hiroko nodded slightly, I understand that well enough, I have already marked all of them with my puppet curse a few years ago, but gathering them will take a lot of time and will, therefore, attract the attention of other shinobi villages, and precisely why I need organization's help, I believe that with the power of the organization, it should be easy to capture them in the shortest amount of time possible. Payne questioned, who are the shinobi you have selected, and what are the kekiai jinkai they have? Hiroko immediately answered, the shinobi I have selected belong to the five great nations, and the kekiai jinkai they possess are swift release, steel release, dark release, storm release, and sharingan of the Uchiha clan from Kanoha. I believe that gathering the first four should be much easier, but I am not so sure about sharingan. For that reason I marked Hataki Kakashi with the puppet curse as he owns one sharingan despite not being an Uchiha, but I am still not sure if that would work as. There would definitely be people stopping him. After hearing Hiroko's answer, Payne was silent for a few seconds and said, 
I will consider your request, you can go back for now. Hiroko wanted to add something but looking at those indifferent and cold eyes, he tacitly chose to shut up and obediently left as per Lord Payne's order. After Hiroko left, a spiraling whirl appeared in the void, and out came the masked Uchihamadara from the whirl. A few seconds of silence later, he asked, What do you think about his project? Payne did not give any answer, his attitude clearly depicted that he was not much interested in this ritual whatsoever. For him, who has the Renegan, the eyes of Rakuo Sinin, Kekiai Jenkai's stealing plan is all but meaningless, and therefore, he doesn't have much interest in it. Madara crossed his arms over his chest and while leaning on the wall and spoke, the most recent information I have received has confirmed that Amitsukami can no longer be ignored, as they are also targeting the Nine Bijou. Payne's gaze narrowed, a trace of coldness appeared. Madara seemed to have noticed this change, but he continued, It is said that Kanaha Dakur has proposed to hold the second dockage summit to deal with mercenary organizations like Akatsuki, Amitsukami, and Nokizuru Group. At present, the four other villages seem to have accepted their proposal and are in discussions to decide the location where the Gokage summit will be held. Conan asked, Can Amitsukami really pose a threat to us? Madara said, Suijin was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sande Mokage, Homosubi was able to fight against Kumodakir's AB combo with some help from the third member who uses magnet release, rumors say that this third member is even stronger than Suijin and Homosubi, there is no information proving whether that is true or not, but what other abilities he has are unknown for now, so it could be possible, finally, there is that mysterious Yama, who we know nothing about other than his name and the disguise he wears, and we also don't have any information if there are other members in their organization. Overall, I don't believe that they pose a threat to us, but given that their goals are also the Nine Bijou, as such they will be a force we will have to deal with at some point in time, and I have a feeling that we will need more combat personnel with high power to deal with the upcoming future events. Payne pondered over those words a while and spoke, if that is the case then agree to Hiroko's request, and gather all the Kekiai Jinkai that he needs for his ritual. Conan nodded and walked out. I will solve the problem of Sharingan. Leading that sentence Madara disappeared in the spiraling whirl. Chapter 256 A few days later, The Land of Birds The four shinobi wearing the traditional turtleneck cloak of Akatsuki were walking through the dense forest. Glancing at Hiroko next to him, Sasori, who was hiding in his Hiroko puppet armor complained, I really don't understand why Payne agreed to your absurd request and assigned all the members of the organization to kidnap so many shinobi with different Kekiai Jinkai. Hiroko was not bothered by Sasori's question and spoke, even the leader with the eyes of Rakuto Sinin must realize that my plan is very useful, therefore, he took my request seriously and agreed to help me with the power of the organization. Inferiority has always been hidden in Hiroko's heart, he has always wanted to prove himself and show that he too is no inferior to any legendary shinobi, but his mediocre talent has always gotten in his way which has caused him to be ignored time and time again. When he was in Kanoha, Hiroko did all he could to prove himself that he was not inferior to the Sanin, but the difference between the Sanin and him was too wide and that difference kept becoming bigger and bigger as time passed. Unwilling to accept this reality, and anger at himself for not being good enough, Hiroko broke through all moral shackles and dealt himself into the study of the human body, and carried out many crazy and cruel human experiments. The Chimera Technique is the culmination of his hard work and the fact that the leader of Akatsuki chose to support his Kekiai Jinkai stealing plan deeply moved Hiroko's heart and made him very happy. Hiroko's greatest desire is not strength, but recognition, and the fact that Payne, who is Renegan, the eye of Rakuto Sinin supports his plan, which in itself is akin to recognition, and this also made him feel a sense of belonging with the Akatsuki. Sasori snorted disdainfully after hearing Hiroko's words. Hiroko did not care about Sasori's sundra attitude and spoke with a grin, Sasori, I have to tell you that your choice of giving up your physical body is wrong. Sasori stopped and stared at Hiroko with a murderous look, his eyes carrying the killing intent that he would kill Hiroko any moment and make him into a puppet, ignorant guy, do you think you have the qualification to challenge my art? In the previous battle against Sande Mokage, Sasori lost an arm, which motivated him to finally give up the useless human body and completely turn his body into a puppet. 
Hiroko chose to ignore the term qualification and said, You don't need to get so angry over a small suggestion, facts will prove everything to you. Sasori said coldly, When you have completed your so-called plan, I will teach you in person about my puppetry. Unlike Sasori and Hiroko who were having a constant conflict, Shino and Kakuzu who were at the front were mostly silent with occasional few words. At this time, Shino smiled and spoke, The task this time will really be troublesome for Kakuzu-san, I just hope that it will not delay Kakuzu-san's personal matters for too long. Everyone in the Akatsuki knows Kakuzu's love of money and they all understand this full well that as long as there is some free time between the assigned tasks, Kakuzu will most definitely go to the black market to take bounty tasks and earn more money, therefore, Kakuzu is generally a very busy person. Kakuzu said with a gloomy expression, not only the land of fire, but even the other countries are persecuting and suppressing the black market circle, as such no decent tasks are available in the black market. Shino spoke with a frowning expression, Amitsukumi's actions have caused much more damage for people like us haven't they? With his experience, Shino is also quite clear with the pattern of the shinobi world. As far as he understands, the Akatsuki organization that he is part of is an extremely powerful secret organization in the world, and no matter which shinobi village, Akatsuki is fully capable of destroying them and subverting the pattern of the shinobi world. And the fact that Amitsukumi which popped out of nowhere also seems to have a similar level of strength as Akatsuki and has already started to pose such a great threat to the five great villages really makes Shino feel very surprised. After a moment of consideration, Shino asked, Shinichi is also from the Uchiha clan, shouldn't he be aware of the real identity of Homosubi? Kakuzu shook his head, the last time I met him, I asked Shinichi if he is aware of who Homosubi could be, all he said was I don't have even the slightest of the clue of who Homosubi is, and how he popped out of thin air. And based on his expression, I can judge that he wasn't lying about it. Shino also muttered with a thoughtful expression, firstly, ice release user who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sande Mokage, then an unknown missing Uchiha with Manjiki Sharingan who can fight against Kumogakure's AB combo, then there is magnet release user, and then there is mysterious leader, Yama such strength is more than enough to completely destroy a small shinobi village within minutes if anything. Even I am unable to understand how they are appearing out of thin air. Kakuza grunted in anger, ever since I fought with Amitsukami, my source of fortune has been cut off, on our next battle, I have to make sure that I take their hearts to make up for my losses. After this, some small discussions continued, and soon, the four people arrived at a fork in the road. One path leading to the land of bears and the other towards the land of earth. Looking at the two different paths before him, Hiroko said, from here, let's split up, I and Shino will go to the land of bear to deal with the shinobi with the dark release Kekiai Jinkai, while your duo will bring the steel release user from the land of earth. Sasori did not reply to Hiroko, just started to walk towards the land of earth together with Kakuzu to bring the steel release user as fast as possible and be done with it. As Sasori and Kakuzu disappeared on the path, Hiroko and Shino nodded towards each other and moved towards the land of bear. Somewhere near the land of whirlpools. Boom! With a loud muffled noise of colliding with wood, Achiha Shinichi was violently knocked several trees along the path and finally stopped the fall. But before he could calm down, a high speed after image flickered through the cover of smoke and dust and disappeared instantly, and just a moment later a fast kunai pierced through his heart. It was at this moment that Biwa Juzo arrived with his Kubikiri Bocho, and waved it fiercely, slashing across the incoming path of the after image with his trusty sword. Ding! The sword that the after image carried with him collided with Kubikiri Bocho, and for a moment several ear-piercing sounds of metal collision resounded through the forest when suddenly there was a loud explosion. After temporarily repelling the afterimage, Biwa Juzo watched his surroundings vigilantly and retreated near Shinichi who has already recovered from the injury just a few moments ago. Are you okay? Asterisk asterisk puke asterisk asterisk Shinichi vomited out the blood stuck in his throat and asked Juzo with an annoyed tone, Answer me Juzo, just why in the hell are we fighting this guy? Biwa Juzo said, Obviously because this is the leader's order, you can't complain about it. But wasn't he supposed to be controlled by some sort of puppet curse? Then why in the hell is he not? His speed is too fast, 
I reckon that only Yandame Rakage would be able to match such speed. Shinichi paused here and wiped away the blood from the corners of his mouth and continued, even if I can keep track of him with my Manjiku Sharingan, what's the point if I can't even keep up with that freakish speed? Juzo also thought about what Shinichi said, based on the information they were given at the time they were issued with the task, it was stated that the target would be under the control of a puppet curse, and their job was to only safely bring him to the target destination, but that's not happening here. Well, for now, we can't figure out the reason why the puppet curse that was supposed to work is not working, we have to deal with him regardless of any issues, remember the detail we have, he is a shinobi with swift release Kekiai Jinkai, and the fact that he has those light red hair must mean that he has Uzumaki blood in his body. Shinichi nodded but he was more confused, but wasn't the Uzumaki clan annihilated by the four villages even before the second shinobi war began? Juzo sighed, it's true that Uzumaki clan was annihilated, but some members of this clan still exist in the shinobi world. Shinichi muttered with a sullen look, swift release coupled with Uzumaki physique and large chakra reserve, this guy is not only extremely fast but is also very apt in taijutsu to complement his kekiai jinkai, it's going to be a pain in the ass to capture this guy alive. Biwa Juzo nodded and gave Shinichi a serious glance, right, so it's about time you start taking this seriously. If we don't catch him, it will be difficult to explain this to the leader, you can't be lazy here unlike all the time. Shinichi who was reprimanded by Juzo grinned slightly, so you have been noticing my laziness all the time, huh? Juzo sighed, I don't understand why you don't take anything related to Akatsuki seriously, but since you have decided to join the organization, you should at least perform the mission regardless of whatever other things you have in mind, I don't care what you do in your free time, but it's about time you start taking things a bit seriously, otherwise, I won't have anything to explain to leader. Chapter 257 Having been seen through by Juzo, Shinichi sighed, he knows that although Juzo tries to be an indifferent and cruel person from the outside, in reality, Juzo is quite the opposite, for this reason, Shinichi has always teased Juzo saying that he is nothing like a brutal or ruthless person as most of the missing mean. Therefore, Shinichi also understands that this time Juzo reprimanded him, it is purely out of goodwill, as such decided to put away his lazy look for a while and take this mission seriously, okay okay, I will complete this mission earnestly. Seeing that Shinichi finally decided to be somewhat serious, Juzo stopped talking nonsense and asked directly, so, what's the plan? While observing his surroundings carefully with his Manjiku Sharingan, Shinichi said, let's try going with plan 33A, we came up with it a few days ago, it should work perfectly in this situation. Juzo nodded in agreement. While the two were busy planning their next move, the swift release user saw this as an opportunity and immediately went for an attack, using the fastest speed he could reach, he rushed towards Biwa Juzo and stabbed through his throat fiercely. Almost at the same instant, Shinichi who was already prepared completed the hand signs and shouted, Fire Release, Fireball Jutsu. Prompted by his chakra, a billowing hot stream of fire gushed out of Shinichi's mouth and rushed towards the incoming enemy. The swift release user didn't expect Shinichi to suddenly use fire release jutsu at such a perfect opportunity, and he knew that if he insisted on continuing the attack towards Juzo then he would be burned to crisp. So, he immediately changed his movement trajectory to the right and dodged the incoming fire. Suddenly, Juzo who was standing near Shinichi turned into water, and at the same time, another Juzo appeared on a tree opposite the fire and shouted, Water release, Great Waterfall Jutsu. The huge streams of water and fire collided together, and in an instant, the entire forest was covered in mist. Juzo continued to print the head seals, and shouted ninja art, hiding in the mist jutsu. Instantly, the pre-existing mist grew thicker blocking all the visual acuity. But there lied the advantage, they have already confirmed that the swift release user is not a sensor neen, as such he will no longer be able to discern the direction he will be going, nor will he be able to locate his targets while Shinichi can see through the cover of mist with his Manjiku Sharingan. Although Juzo will have some trouble normally, he will still be able to discern the directions the enemy is moving in thanks to the chakra disruption and the mist giving feedback to Juzo. Moreover, Juzo can also use silent killing, so there will be no sound from his movements. Overall, this situation will be a complete advantage for Shinichi and Juzo's duo. 
and the swift release user seems to have realized that he was in a tough spot for now and tried to escape out of the forest. Wherever he moved, he left behind a trail, which was easily noticed by Shinichi and easily sensed by Juzo. The moment Shinichi captured the enemy's movement trajectory, he suddenly flickered from his position and appeared at the spot where the enemy will be appearing in a second. The swift release user had to attempt a change of direction at this instant, but the moment he tried to turn away, a silent sword cut through the cover of mist and arrived towards him. The swift release user had to immediately use the sword in his hand to block that attack, but that short moment of pause was more than enough of an opportunity Shinichi needed to disrupt his chakra flow, successfully putting him in a Jinjutsu with mirror contact. As soon as the enemy showed a momentary sluggishness, Juzo successfully knocked him out and immediately injected the special drug inside the body of the captive. This drug would put him in an unconscious state until its antidote is injected into his body. After confirming that the captive was in an unconscious state, Juzo sighed in relief and said to Shinichi, Manjiku Sharingan's Jinjutsu is really useful in such battles. Shinichi didn't care, Manjiku Sharingan is nothing more than a tool for him now, and he really doesn't care anymore, so long as it keeps working then that's all that matters. Now that he has been captured, let's return to the land of rain and deliver this guy to Hiroko for whatever reason he needs him for. Juzo nodded and after tying the captive limbs with chakra sealing tags, he passed him over to Shinichi, who held him over his shoulder and both started moving towards the land of rain. Somewhere around the border of the land of fire and the land of hot water. A spiraling whirl suddenly appeared in the void and out came a masked man wearing a black cloak over his body. After taking a casual look around him, he jumped over a tree, as if waiting for something. At this time, Zetsu's body rose up from the tree bark and informed the masked man, our spy in Kumo the Cure has given information and confirmed the location where the second Gokage summit is going to be held, the Kages have agreed to assemble at the Hozuki Castle in the Land of Grass. The masked man was surprised, Hozuki Castle? Why there? Zetsu said, none of the five great shinobi villages trust each other, and they have been in a stalemate with each other, so finally they decided to meet at Ozuki Castle, which is located at a fair amount of distance from all five of the villages. The masked man nodded and asked again after thinking a little, Have you confirmed Kumodekure's candidates who will be attending the meeting? Zetsu nodded, From Kumodekure, Reikage will obviously be attending the summit, but because Amatsukami's targets are the nine bijou, so he has decided to not take either of the Jinchuriki with him, as such two Jonin will be following him, one is the shinobi who was the vice-captain of the peace delegation that went to Konoha, while the other one is a user of storm release Kekia Jinkai. As soon as he heard this, the masked man smiled, very good. One of the Kekia Jinkai that Hiroko needs for his ritual is storm release, although there are many users of strong release, most of them are concentrated in Kumogakure. As such, if Akatsuki plans to catch a storm release user, then they will have to attack Kumogakure, although there is no problem with it, it is still hassling. And now that the masked man has the information that a storm release user will be going to the Ozuki castle as the rakage guard, so it is obviously best to capture him, this will be much easier than sneaking into Kumogakure and fighting and whatnot. Not letting this opportunity go away, Masked Man took out two black cloaks with some golden patterns sewn on them, wore one of them upon him, and passed over the other to Zetsu. Put on this cloak and cover your face with those leaves. After you are ready, you will be the bait and lead the rakage away from his two guards. Zetsu who received the black cloak from the Masked Man observed it for a while. He was able to notice that this cloak was very similar to the disguising cloak that the members of Amatsukami wear, as such Zetsu can't help but be surprised. You want us to pretend to be members of Amatsukami, so as to put the blame of the missing ninja upon Amatsukami's head? The masked man nodded. Since now he has been unable to find any useful information about Amatsukami, therefore, he has to be extremely vigilant when dealing with them. Initially, he did not care too much about Amatsukami's goals as long as they don't interfere with his project Suki no Mi, but now that Amatsukami has officially declared that they will start targeting the Nine Bijou, so Masked Man can no longer ignore their presence. At this moment Akatsuki has not started to collect the Bijou and is still in the initial phase of gathering excellent shinobi under their command who can contend with Bijou, so the Masked Man is unwilling to fight Amatsukami head-on for now, but at the same time, 
he can no longer sit back and watch Amitsukami growing stronger. Therefore, this second dockage summit is another opportunity for him to indirectly target Amitsukami. When the blame of the missing shinobi from all the villages is put on Amitsukami, then Amitsukami would have made an enemy out of all the shinobi villages, and all of them will unanimously point their fingers and weapons towards Amitsukami and do all they can to eradicate this organization. And when that happens, Amitsukami's threat will either be completely eliminated or will be lowered down so that the masked man will no longer have to worry about them. As such putting the blame on Amitsukami's head is extremely necessary for the Kages to direct their fingers towards Amitsukami and using this disguise is the best option to achieve that objective. Zetsu understood the masked man's approach and complied. With both of them disguised as the member of Amitsukami, Zetsu led them towards their goal and the two soon discovered Rakage and his two guards rushing towards the land of grass for the Gakage summit. Looking at the Rakage and his entourage moving towards the land of grass, Masked Man signaled Zetsu, Go! Zetsu who was dressed as an unknown member of Amitsukami retracted into the ground. POV Change Yandame Rakage and his two guards were moving towards the land of grass. Then suddenly one of his subordinates stopped and whispered while pointing in a certain direction, Rakage Sama, look there, from the type of clothes he is wearing he seems to be a member of Amitsukami going somewhere. I narrowed his eyes as soon as he heard those words and looking in that direction, he was indeed surprised because from the disguise which included the black cloak printed with some strange golden pattern and that green leafy structure over his head, whether he is a person or plant? Whichever he may be, but he seems to be a member of Amitsukami. What's more, that person doesn't seem to have noticed these three as if he was busy in some thoughts. Rai, the storm release user, said, do you think he is a member of Amitsukumi? Blue lightning started to flicker around the rakage as he said, We will find out when I break his hands and legs. Whoosh! Leading that sentence he suddenly disappeared from his position and ran in the direction of the suspected Amitsukumi member. The suspected member of Amitsukumi suddenly noticed something coming towards him and, and his expression shrank, and he fled into the distance immediately using his unique technique. The rakage who was coming towards the suspected member of Amitsukami narrowed his eyes, he immediately understood that the person is indeed a member of Amitsukami, as such he must not be allowed to escape, so he urged the lightning chakra around him more violently increasing his speed several times and shouted, You bastard, don't think that you will manage to get away this time. Seeing that rakage-sama disappearing so fast, Rai shouted hurriedly, Rakage-sama, please wait, it could be a trap. However, before Rai's voice could reach Rakage, he has already disappeared. Now Rai and the other Jonin looked at each other. The other Jonin asked with a frown, What to do now? Rai sighed and spoke with a helpless expression, What else can we do? Follow them, of course. I am afraid that it could be a trap designed by Amitsukami to attack Rakage Sama. Just as he spoke, a spiraling whirl appeared behind the two of them, before the two of them could notice the sudden appearance of spiraling whirl, a hand stretched out of it, held right by the neck and dragged him inside the spiraling whirl. Chapter 258 Looking at the deformed clones floating in the nutrition tank, Kuroto can't help but cry tears of blood. The genes of the Uchiha clan are poison, muttered Kuroto in helplessness. In the previous few weeks, Kuroto has been able to collect cells of more than a dozen Uchiha, including Itachi and Sasuke, of course with Shirsui's help, and even asked Shinichi to send his cells, which he complied with and did. After obtaining these cells, Kuroto again carried out several gene fusion experiments, which consumed a lot of his time, energy, and resources, finally three samples survived the fusion process and were embedded in the cultivation nutrition tank for the development. After obtaining three samples that fused successfully, Kuroto thought that at least one of these samples will develop into a good enough clone that Kuroto will be able to use as his fire nature clone, but reality taught him a cruel lesson. All three samples developed into deformed bodies. The first body has its body parts distorted, all facial features and limbs are misaligned as well. The second one has developed into a fat lump of meatball with multiple limbs, eyes, mouth, and nose sprouting off from all over the body, but no bone within it whatsoever. The third has three heads, each head with three eyes, a flat nose, 
and a mouth that doesn't seem to have lips at all, moreover, there are four sets of arms, but just a single leg to complement that. Looking at the three clones that look more horrifying than monsters, Kuroto could only sigh helplessly. This series of experiments and clone creation cost him a lot, much more than the initial budget limit Kuroto set for creating the Fire Nature clone, but even after tens of thousands of attempts, not even a single clone came out which Kuroto can determine as good enough. And he can't continue to keep doing the experiments any longer as that would not only consume too many funds a lot of his time and efforts with not even a certain 0.0001% chance of success. Sigh, and here I thought that my Anshirsui's genes are incompatible, never did I expect that my genes are completely incompatible with the entire Uchiha clan, in fact, my Anshirsui's genes turn out to be somewhat compatible based on the one clone that developed successfully even though its gender changed to that of a female. Kuroto sighed with emotions as his gaze shifted towards one of the large nutrition tanks at the corner of this laboratory. This large nutrition tank obviously contains the female clone which was submerged in the green medicinal water to maintain a proper supply of necessary nutrition. Walking towards the clone, Kuroto mulled over the thought whether he should use this female clone or not. There is no doubt that by looks of the clone the Hyuga genes are dominant, as the appearance is that of a typical Hyuga Kunoichi. As a traditional shinobi clan, the males of the Hyuga clan are all well-groomed and mannered individuals, while the females are mostly elegant, dignified, and somewhat soft by nature, this is the case with almost all of the Hyuga clansmen. The Hyuga genetics are obviously very good, so the appearance of the Hyuga clansmen are generally good, of course, Kuroto is no exception to this, as his looks rivaled Kakashi during their academy years, and has only got better ever since all his gene combinations activated. And the Uchiha clan is not much different either, the males are mostly sharp and domineering, and because of the passive effects of Sharingan, their eyes are generally piercing by nature, and their natural aura is cold. Coincidentally enough, the female clone in the large nutrition tank combines the good aspects of both the Uchiha and the Hyuga, it has the elegant and dignified appearance of a Hyuga Kunoichi while there is also that sharpness, coldness, and unapproachable aura of a typical Uchiha. For this reason, the female clone exudes an extremely heroic, noble, elegant, and proud temperament. Well, all that aside, Kuroto is still unable to figure out just what could be the reason that the clone turned into a female instead of a male, after all, the chromosome pair that defines the gender of a person should obviously be that of a male, as both him and Shursui are males, but still the clone turned into a woman. There is a guess in his mind, however, Kuroto is not sure whether that is actually true or not, in terms of their most general relation to one another, Yin represents the female, while Yang represents the male, and since this clone still has too much Yin Chakra even after Kuroto washed it out, so it's possible that too much Yin Chakra probably caused a mutation in the gene structure of the bud and henceforth changed its gender. It is just a guess, and there is no solid evidence to prove whether this theory is correct or not. And Kuroto also can't figure out what sort of impact will this female clone have in his big project. And next is the matter of stats of this clone. Because the sample cells used to cultivate this clone were severely damaged, so its basic stats are not very good, at least not as good as the Suijin clone. This also means that the difficulty of training this clone will be much higher than that of Suijin clone. This is the second reason why Kuroto had a certain sense of rejection towards this clone, but now that he is left with no other choice due to repeated failures so Kuroto has to go with the female clone. The repeated failures have also made him understand that he can't touch Yin and Yang chakra nature so early, with his current knowledge, experience, or the extent of technical means he has access to at the moment. With that understood, Kuroto took out the female clone from the nutrition tank and placed it on the test bench. After recording all the physical measurements and body stats, Kuroto used Tensigen's soul to send and transferred his soul into the female clone body without much hesitation. As soon as his main body's eyelids closed, the female clone lying on the test bench opened her eyes. At the start, Kuroto felt a bit strange, the feeling was a bit different, Kuroto ignored this feeling for now and proceeded to slowly get up from the test bench. Took a while and Kazakage puppet support, but he or I guess she, for now, managed to get up. A few checkups, body stretches, 
and coordinated movements later, Kuroda walked towards the mirror and observed the body. He was, of course, naked and observed all the muscle movements of this body in the mirror to get familiar with it. By now he has also understood why did he feel slightly different, it's because of the extra weight of a pair of breasts that he was unfamiliar with up to now, and some of the other parts that are different in females compared to males. All that aside, what surprised Kuroto was the coordinated system of this body, he did not feel any opposition while transferring his soul which was unusual, as there is slight resistance at the start. This clone seems very much capable of adapting to his soul. But it's also not surprising at the same time, as the gender of a body has nothing to do with its adaptability to a soul, this can easily be proven from the fact that Orochimaru also once transferred his soul into a female body during the Kanoha Crush arc and even fought against Sande Mokage at that time, and the rest is already known. As such, it can be concluded that the gender of a body has nothing to do with its compatibility with a soul. Putting aside those thoughts, Kuroto continued carrying out the auditory and coordinated movements. After he felt that basic movements were no longer a problem, Kuroto focused on his eyes. When his soul was not transferred to this body, the pair of eyes was just a collection of cells, in simple words, they were semi-finished, as was the case with Suijin clone. He was also surprised even after transferring his soul to this clone there was not much change in the eyes in the deactivated state, they are pretty much the same as Suijin's pair of Byakugan. This was again quite unexpected. After all, both Uchiha and Hyuga are clans with dojutsu type Kekiai Jinkai, so Kuroto expected a bit of mutation. Surprisingly, Uchiha genes did not have any effects on the Byakugan. But upon thinking a little, this is also normal, after all, the ratio of Hyuga and Uchiha cells present in this clone is 99 to 1, and Hyuga bloodline is no weaker than Uchiha, therefore, the chances of mutation are a bit small. Then Kuroto muttered in distress, I don't know whether this clone body will be able to bear the burden of eternal Manjiku Sharingan? This is another issue, and Kuroto doesn't seem to have a solution to solve this problem yet. I guess I will try to create one more Fire Nature clone in the future, but before I improve my knowledge and other means to be able to do so, let's develop this clone. Kuroto feels that he should be prepared in advance. While developing this clone, he is also going to improve his knowledge and other means and see if he can create one more clone. Chapter 260 With that decision, next Kuroto wrapped some bandages over the pubic area and the pair of breasts to keep them affixed and not become a problem while carrying out intensive movements and training, and after putting over on a simple robe he found in the lab, he walked barefoot towards the detached laboratory where Achiharuyota was detained. Byakugin In the vision of Byakugin, Kuroto found that the two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan in the eye sockets of Uchiha Yoda are already past the preliminary fusion. And because two eyeballs are midway through the fusion process, so together they appear to be a little bloated and have an overall elliptical outline. Sigh, the speed of fusion is still much slower than I expected. Shaking his head in disappointment, Kuroto left the laboratory. At this time, Kuroto thought on his way towards the main lab, on genetic fusion technology, Orochimaru is also an expert, maybe I should ask some knowledge and insight from him. Gene fusion is not a new field of science, as gene fusion experiments were even carried out during the era of Naidem Hokage's rule, after the death of Shodem sama many of the Senja clansmen volunteered in the experimentations to be able to inherit Shodem samas would release Kekiai Jinkai by fusing his cells into their body, but without exception, all of them failed. These experiments were, of course, carried out in secrecy and the general public is not aware of this knowledge, after Naidem samas death, Sandame Sama terminated these experiments but they were still secretly carried out by Shimura Danzo. And it was Shimura Danzo who tempted Orochimaru to start his own research about the wood release, Yamato is the result of these experiments. Not only did he survive the fusion experiment, but even managed to awaken the wood release. Shimura Danzo also uses Shodame Sama's cells which is another result of those experiments. It must not be forgotten that Hashirama cells are countless times more terrifying than cancer cells, they can completely swallow another person's cells, so the difficulty of Hashirama cells fusion is much 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 higher than the Uchiha cells. 
and the fact that Yamato managed to successfully fuse with the Hashirama cells does not only showcase his specialties but also shows Orochimaru's expertise in the field of gene fusion. So, his guidance would only benefit Kuroto. But as you know, Orochimaru is a snake and one should always be careful when dealing with a snake. But if I contact Orochimaru he would obviously ask Haku to be sent back, what should I do then? For the past few months, Haku has been constantly living in the underground residence. There is a reason why Kuroto has not sent him back to Orochimaru yet, it is because Haku is not only aware of the fact that Kuroto has been trying to learn ice release, but is also aware that Kuroto can use some strange technique to attach his soul to others, which happened when he used Tensigen's soul to send to leech his soul to Haku's body to experience ice release in person. As such, once Haku returns to Orochimaru, it is difficult to guarantee that Haku will not explain what he experienced here upon being asked by Orochimaru. With Orochimaru's cunningness, as long as Orochimaru learns that Kuroto has been trying to learn ice release and is capable of transferring his soul, then it won't take him much time to put two and two together, and he will immediately realize that there is some deep connection between him and Suijin of Amitsukami. And when that happens Orochimaru might even be able to guess the true identity of Suijin, which will give him a perfect understanding of the secret behind Amitsukami. This is something Kuroto does not want, so he has to think of some other ways out of this situation. Occupied by so many thoughts, Kuroto soon returned to the main lab, and after transferring back his soul to his main body, he put the female clone inside the large nutrition tank again, then compiled all the data of the gene fusion experiment he carried out in the past few weeks. After doing so he returned to his home. Next day. Today it was Kuroto and Shirsue's turn to keep a watch over and ensure the safety of the protagonist of the canon, as per the mission assigned to Umbu Team 11, by Sandem Sama. Uzumaki Naruto, who is already four years old, does not like staying in the lonely home he is given, no one other than him lives in that lonesome place, as such he spends most of his time walking through the village. But because of the rumors of the demon fox being sealed inside him, and the hatred people of Konoha harbored for Kyuubi made those people direct their hatred towards the young Naruto, as such he has always been rejected, hated, and ignored by most of the villagers. This has made Naruto's childhood lack the love and attention that a child needs and made him always be lonely without getting any answer as to why he is treated as such. Sigh. Standing on the tree, Sure Sui sighed while looking at the little Naruto walking through the streets in the cold night, Naruto's head was low, and sadness in his eyes. Kuroto also looked at Naruto with complicated emotions. Kuroto knows that he will never be able to understand Naruto's pain, after all, Kuroto is at least aware of who were his parents, what kind of people were they like and so many more things, even after their death, Yui has always been there for him, so he has never truly felt lonely. But Naruto's case is completely different. As the son of Yandame Hokage and the princess of the Uzumaki clan, Naruto should actually be the prince of Konoha if anything, moreover, both his parents sacrificed their lives to protect Konoha, and the fact that Kyuubi has been sealed inside him makes him the hero of the village, yet he suffers such treatment at the hands of the villagers. It's really inhuman to make such a young child go through such a life and suffer through such coldness and hatred from others. In fact, it wouldn't be wrong to say that it is Kanoha's luck that Naruto did not go dark and kept up his positive attitude to seek everyone's acknowledgement, rather than slaughtering them coldly. Whoosh! Whoosh! While Kuroto was busy in thoughts, two figures appeared beside Kuroto. They are none other than Kakashi and Gai who are also dressed in their Umbu uniforms. Kuroto glanced at the two of them and asked curiously, What are you two doing here? It's still not the time to change the shift, did something happen? Kakashi and Gai removed their mask for a while and said, Right, something serious happened. Kuroto and Shirsue also removed their respective masks, and Shirsue asked in confusion, something really happened? He was stunned, then asked, so, um, what happened exactly? Kakashi spoke with a sullen face, Amitsukami recently made their move, this time they attacked Reikich Dano and his entourage who were on their way to the location discussed by the five Kage for the upcoming Dokage summit, in this attack, both the guards that were accompanying him suffered. What? 
Both Kuroto and Shirsui were taken aback by this sudden news and exclaimed at the same time. Immediately, both looked at each other and asked the other party with a shocked and doubtful face, Amitsukumi. Amitsukumi has been making their moves recently? But seeing that both of them asked the same question and both of them had the same, shocked, confused and doubtful expression, they shook their heads instinctively, I don't know. Kakashi didn't think too much about Kuroto and Shirsui's behavior and their shocked and doubtful expression, according to him, both Kuroto and Shirsui were probably asking the other party if he knew this information, so not minding their exclaim, Kakashi continued, Hokage-sama is worried that Amitsukami will conspire some plans against the Kyubi which is sealed inside Uzumaki Naruto, so assign more umbu to ensure Uzumaki Naruto's safety, so from now, entire Team Eleven will keep watch over him. Together and our shifts will be changed with other umbu teams during the six-hour break we will get. Both Shirsue and Kuroto nodded, and after a while of silence, Kuroto asked, Is Rekage Dano all right? Rekage is safe and sound. The target of this attack was not Rekage Dano but his two guards. Kakashi said. Kuroto frowned and muttered, But why would Amitsukumi attack Rekage's guards? Was there anything special about them? Kakashi thought a little and said, I am not sure. One of the guards following him was the Jonin who came to Kanoha with the Kumo Peace delegation, while the other one was a user of Storm Release Kekiai Jinkai, and he was called Rai. Shirsue's gaze flickered, I know him. Shirsue's words attracted the attention of the rest of the team, seeing their questioning eyes which asked for further explanation, Shirsue said, it was during the Third Great Shinobi War, during one of the missions, our team encountered another three-man team of Kumo Vikure, at that time, I fought against Rai, who was the strongest of his team, our fight did not last long. But during that brief confrontation I was unable to take the advantage, and at that time, I already had three Tomo. Sharingan, so it wouldn't be wrong to say that Rai was very strong even at that time. By now, he should have already been an elite Jonin. Kakashi nodded, he is indeed an elite Jonin based on the information we have, and it is still unclear as to why would Amitsukami attack these two Jonin, Rai's status is unclear, it's possible that he is already dead, but we can't know for certain as there is no corpse to identify, but we do know that the other Jonin is dead, as his corpse was found, so we are assuming that Amitsukami's target was Rai in specific, and there is a possibility that he is still alive. Guy muttered with a dejected face, in the face of Amitsukami, I am afraid, that Rai. But before Guy could complete his sentence, Kuroto asked, is there any information about which member of Amitsukami attacked this Rai fellow? Asked by Kuroto, Kakashi took out a few documents from his shinobi bag and passed them over to Kuroto and Shirsue. According to Reikich Dano's description, the member of Amitsukami that appeared this time had a strange face and body. Upon listening to Kakashi's words Kuroto focused his attention on the document that listed the following information. Name, Yama. Designation, the leader of Amitsukami. Suspected chakra nature code, Ean. Appearance, unknown. Identity, unknown. Strength, unknown. Records of battles, no information available. Danger level, unknown. Name, Suijin. Designation, member of Amitsukami suspected chakra nature code, water. Appearance, unknown. Abilities, Uses Ice Release Kekiai Jinkai of Yuki Clan at an unusually high mastery level, specializes in Water Release Ninjutsu, Taijutsu, Bokujutsu, etc. Identity, Unknown Member of the Yuki Clan Strength, Strength Level of Akage Class Shinobi Records of Battles, Fought on Equal Footing with the Sandame Hokage of Kanoha Danger Level, S+. Name, Homosubi Designation, Member of Amitsukumi. Suspected Chakra Nature Code, Fire. Appearance, Unknown. Abilities, Possess Uchiha Clan's Manjiku Sharingan, Wields Unknown Golden Fire, Ninjutsu, Jinjutsu, Uchiha Shurikenjutsu, Taijutsu, etc. Identity, Unknown Member of the Uchiha Clan. Strength, Strength Level of Akage Class Shinobi. Records of Battles, fought on equal footing against Uchiha Shirsue of the Uchiha clan, as well as against Kumo Vikure's AB combo. Danger level, 
S plus. Name, unknown. Designation, member of Amitsukumi. Suspected chakra nature code, wind. Appearance, unknown. Abilities, possess magnet release. Identity, unknown defected shinobi from Sunagakure. Strength, strength level of Akage class shinobi. Records of battles, no records. Danger level, S+. Plus. Name, unknown. Designation, member of Amitsukumi. Suspected chakra nature code, earth. Appearance, strange similar to a plant. Abilities, unknown. Identity, unknown. Strength, unknown. Records of battles, no records. Danger level, unknown. Kuroto frowned as he read the detail, is it the last member who did it? Kakashi shook his head, there is no confirmation, this ninja led away Rakage, but it is still unclear whether he is actually responsible for the disappearance of Rai, or if there was the involvement of other members of Amitsukumi. Chapter 261 There are only a handful of people in the shinobi would who would dare to attack or cause trouble with the Rakage. Kuroto is no exception to this, as even he is unwilling to cause conflict with Rakage unless absolutely necessary, so the identity of the attacker is not so hard to guess, in all likelihood, it has to be the handiwork of Akatsuki, and this guess is more than likely to be true because there is mention of this member with plant-like appearance, which has to be Zetsu without a doubt. But Kuroto is a little puzzled as to why would Akatsuki attack and intercept Rakage and his two guards? Moreover, even if they did attack, why would they want to blame this upon Amitsukumi? Are they worried about something? That should probably not be the case, right? Thought Kuroto, but he wasn't so sure. At this time, Shursui, who has also read the information, asked Kakashi, There is too little information about the enemy here. Did Rakage not fight the new suspected member of Amitsukumi? Kakashi shook his head awkwardly, Rakage. Rakage was actually too impatient and rashly chased after this member of Amitsukumi and was deliberately led away, neither was he able to catch this member nor did he have any battle with him. So, there is not much we know about this enemy. But it can be determined that Amitsukumi's target was probably Rai. After a pause, Shursui continued, Rai's life and death status are unknown, but what could be the reason that Amitsukumi went after Rai, weren't their target the Nine Bijou, so why to attack a non-Jinchuriki, after all, we do know that Amitsukumi does not attack any unrelated party, so why attack him? Was it just the bounty on his head or did they hope to extract any information out of him, like the probable location of the Jinchuriki, or maybe the secrets of storm release? Kakashi said, both are possible, the second reason is more than likely to be the case, Based on the fact that Amitsukumi has already kidnapped two Uchiha shinobi, it wouldn't be wrong to judge that Amitsukumi is also targeting shinobi with different Kekiai Jinkai too, but we can't loosen our guards as who knows when they will start to target Bijou. Guy continued, the threat on Naruto is more imminent, if Amitsukumi dares to openly attack Rikage's entourage just for Kekiai Jinkai user, unlike the other times when they carried out sneak attacks, there is no telling whether they will again sneak inside Kanoha and try to do steal the QB, as such Hokage-sama has added more manpower to ensure Uzumaki Naruto's safety. Storm release, huh? Hearing Kakashi and Guy's words, Kuroto suddenly recalled Hiroko, and thought, is it possible that Akatsuki's attack on this storm release user is related to Hiroko? Kuroto is not sure, this is because it's too early for Hiroko to act, even in the original series, Hiroko started to steal Kekiai Jinkai when Naruto's generation had already grown up into teenage, it was also at that time that Hiroko completed his imperfect chimera technique. But Kuroto has to also take into account that there have already been too many changes in the timeline, as such, the sudden attack and disappearance of this storm release user at the hands of Akatsuki does lead to the possibility. Since Hiroko has joined Akatsuki, so this could be the only reason. But how come Hiroko managed to perfect Chimera technique so early? Is it because he joined Akatsuki and got all the help he needed to complete that technique? Thought Kuroto. This could be the only possible case. After completing their shift, Team Eleven separated and went to their respective homes. Shursui and Kuroto were going in the same direction, and after Kakashi and Guy left, he asked eagerly, Kuroto-san, 
what's going on? Are there other members in Amatsukumi? If there were other members in Amatsukumi, then why would I not inform you about them in advance? Snorted Kuroto, and continued, The person who attacked Rekage and his entourage is someone else pretending to be a member of Amatsukumi. Their goal is obviously to put the blame of their actions on our head. Shursui was immediately angry, scoundrels. Kuroto-san, let's find them. Kuroto glanced at Shursui and said, Don't be in such a hurry. Then asked after a pause, First answer this question of mine, What is the objective of Amatsukumi? Shursui was confused as to why would Kuroto-san ask this, but he answered nonetheless, to solve the conflict between the Echiha clan and the village? Kuroto nodded, that's not exactly correct, but it is one of the objectives in the big game, so does it really matter whether someone is putting the blame of their action upon Amatsukumi? Although their intentions are obviously malicious towards us, by doing so, they are actually helping us further increase the threat of Amatsukumi in the eyes of everyone, so this is obviously very helpful for us. Shursui thought a little and said, Right, the more threat Amatsukumi poses, the more concern the clan and village will grow towards them, so the internal conflict will continue to get delayed as time passes. Exactly! Kuroto nodded. But, but these people are doing such things and using our name to put on the blame, I always feel a bit uncomfortable, are we going to let them do as they wish? Kuroto said casually, I have a few things in mind that we will be doing to deal with this problem, so you don't need to worry about this too much. What we should focus on now is to ensure Uzumaki Naruto's safety, because Akatsuki will definitely target QB. Shursui nodded as he understands the importance of QB for Konoha, and Uzumaki Naruto who hosts the QB must be protected at all costs. With this final understanding, Shursui bid Kuroto farewell and returned to his home. Kuroto, who also returned to his home, pondered a little. After biting his finger and printing the hand signs, Kuroto tapped his hand on the ground and muttered, summoning Jutsu. Poof! Followed by a puff of white smoke, an all-too-familiar orange cat appeared before Kuroto that didn't look familiar at all. Kuroto frowned seeing this, it's because this orange cat's orange hair was covered in some stripes, these stripes were black in color over the orange fur, making the cat unrecognizable at the first glance. Even Kuroto was a little confused and doubtful whether this is the same greedy cat, you are. Kasai, who was suddenly summoned by Kuroto looked a bit annoyed and said, Meow, I am dyeing my hairs today, so I would not be delivering any message for today. As soon as he heard that voice, Kuroto was sure that this fake tiger is definitely the same Kasai, and asked with a smile, You gave me a good shot Kasai, for a moment I thought that a real tiger appeared in my room, those stripes look so real on you. Said Kuroto in a fake surprise. Really? Hearing from Kuroto, the cat was suddenly joyful and happily curled on the table, do they really look real? I guess I didn't do anything wrong after agreeing to his offer, the tiger stripes are dyed markings, I felt that when I get these markings, I will look intimidating and mighty. Who fooled this stupid cat? Kuroto thought but did not speak it out loud, and said, Anyway, I called you because I want you to pass on a message to Shinichi. The cat didn't seem to have heard what Kuroto spoke as it was busy daydreaming about how mighty and ferocious it will look with the tiger stripes. Huh, it seems that hair dye shop is pretty good, you can also visit it and get some tiger stripes in the future if you want, I am telling you, you will also look intimidating, meow. Punch, crack. Kuroto beat the table to bring Kasai out of his daydream and spoke, did you hear what I just said? I said that I called you this time because I want you to pass on a message to Shinichi for me. Kasai denied immediately, meow, I have to go back and complete the dyeing of my hair, consider me unavailable until then. As soon as the cat spoke, Kuroto immediately took out a thousand Rio bill and put it in front of Kasai. How about now? Asked Kuroto. A tangled expression was evident on Kasai's face, it still didn't phase it, looking back and forth between the thousand Rio bill on the table and him, Kasai shook his head, it gulp. I have to dye my hair. Greedy cat. Before Kasai could complete that sentence, Kuroto took out another thousand Rio bill and placed over the previous one, how about now, do you still have to dye your hair? As soon as two bills were present in front, the cat's eyes were glued to them but still shook his head, ha ha ha, 
don't be funny, bribing me won't get you. Before Kasai could complete his words, Kuroto again took out another bill of thousand Rio and put it over the previous two, and sighed while gritting his teeth, I am sorry. I didn't hear you correctly, so what were you saying? By now the cat already had stars shining in his eyes and saliva literally dripping from the corners of his mouth. As soon as Kuroto asked the question, the cat fiercely grabbed the 3,000 Rio and immediately put them inside the small bag hung around the neck while patting the chest with a determined expression, Meow, you are of course a special exception to this, what message needs to be passed on to Shinichi, give it to me. I swear in the name of Mikoba that it will be delivered in. One minute. One of the many training grounds of the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Haragi, who had been training for the whole day, dropped his sword on the ground and wiped off the sweat with a hand towel. The previous encounter with Homosubi has become a shame for Haragi, being defeated is another thing altogether, but being treated as nothing more than trash, and yet not being able to take a single step in the face of the enemy has become a thorn in Haragi's heart, he has not been able to let go of that look he received from Homosubi. To think that I would be intimidated by just a mere glance of his, it's unforgivable. Whenever he thinks of that scene, Hiragi not only feels anger at Homosubi but also upon himself, but he is ashamed of himself and his weakness, first I lost to Hugo Kuroto, and now this Homosubi. So, to make sure that such a thing does not happen again, Hiragi has been constantly training whenever he is on a break or holiday from his regular Kanoha military police duties. The effort he has been putting in is obviously being paid off as Hiragi feels that his strength is steadily improving. And this has made him feel somewhat better, but he's still too far from reaching Homosubi's level who can fight against Kumo's AB brothers at the same time. After having wiped off the sweat, just as Hiragi was about to draw his sword that rested on the ground, an unusual spiraling whirl appeared in front of him. Hiragi was immediately cautious and asked, Who are you? He asked this because Hiragi saw a figure emerging out of the eye of the spiraling whirl. Chapter 262, Somewhere in the Land of Earth Kicking the beaten and bruised up person lying in front of them, Kakuzu said to Sasori, if not for the requirement that Hiroko needed him alive, I really want to dig out this guy's heart. There are only two things that Kakuzu desires, first is wealth and the other is heart, the desire of collecting as many good hearts as possible is almost instinctive to Kakuzu, therefore whenever Kakuzu encounters a strong shinobi in a battle, he will always have the urge to dig out their hearts. Sasori also has a bit of greed in his eyes, this steel release user was stronger than I expected, and dealing with him was more troublesome, he is actually quite strong, if made into a puppet I should be able to obtain a rare masterpiece. Even with Sasori's high standards, he has to acknowledge the strength of the steel release user in front of him. The fierce battle a while ago was not much difficult for Sasori or Kakuzu, but that was only because the steel release user knew nothing about their abilities and was also affected by the poison that Sasori used. If not for that, then the battle might have been much difficult, as the opponent's extreme defense and endurance courtesy to steel release made him a shinobi who matched the toughness and defense of the current rakage if not the previous one. After injecting the drug into the unconscious ninja's bloodstream, Kakuzu carried him by the neck and started walking towards the land of rain while muttering, I hope that ritual would not destroy his heart. Sasori remained silent and walked next to Kakuzu. Somewhere in the land of bears. A ninja wearing torn rags was constantly running through the forest. Boom! 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 Suddenly a series of explosions sounded around him. The sound of the explosions soon subsided and the dust cleared. The shinobi who was running through the explosions suddenly turned around, threw several shuriken in the direction of the enemy, and after immediately printing the hand seals, he shouted, Dark release, judgment. Whyish? Accompanied by heavy winds, the tornado of dark chakra shot from the hands of the ragged ninja and rushed towards the sky. Hiroko who was standing on the artificial bird had a Glasgow grin at this moment, it was as if everything was going perfectly according to his plan. As the tornado of dark chakra was rushing towards him, the artificial bird slammed its wings fiercely and flew high up into the sky, using the altitude to its advantage it easily dodged the attack. Immediately as the tornado passed away, the artificial bird flapped its wings again and shot down countless feathers. Why-ish? Why-ish? 
Wyish. 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 The feathers collided with the earth at an extremely fast speed and were nailed to the ground as a kunai would. After having dodged multiple attacks for so long, the ragged ninja was panting and did not have much stamina left anymore, so when he saw another rain that covered hundreds of meters of territory in the range of the attack, he had a look of despair on his face. Soon, several of those feathers pierced through his body, and some were stuck on him, then there was an explosion. Boom! When the smoke and dust settled and the view became clear, it could be seen that the whole forest suffered severe damage as almost all the area was burnt to crisp, implying that the explosion was large enough to destroy the forest, but strangely enough, there was no damage on the one-meter vicinity where the ragged ninja lied in a pool of his own blood, although his life and death status was unknown at the moment. After the enemy was successfully incapacitated, Shino who did not act throughout the battle spoke in a complimentary tone, using explosions and physical attacks was indeed the most effective method to deal with someone who can easily absorb ninjutsu using the dark release Kekiai Jinkai. Hiroko nodded, no Kekiai Jinkai is perfect, so long as one master the right method to deal with them, winning is pretty much determined. With those words, the bird descended on the ground, Shino jumped to the artificial bird and determined the state that the ragged ninja was in currently. After confirming that he was indeed alive, Shino injected the drug into the ragged ninja's bloodstream and then threw him on top of the artificial bird. The dark release Kekiai Jinkai has been captured, now all we need to do is to return to Amage Cure and wait for the others to bring the Kekiai Jinkai users that they were assigned to bring, but I still wonder whether it would be possible for the leader to capture Hitaki Kakashi? Hiroko firstly nodded then said with a confident expression, I don't think there is anything to worry about it, the leader has the eyes of Rakuto Sanin, obviously Hitaki Kakashi who only has a Sharingan would be no match to the leader, so obtaining the Sharingan shouldn't be much difficult, what I am more concerned about is steel release user, both Sasori and Kakuzu are not the type to allow a good corpse to get away so easily. And then there is also some worry about the swift release user, if that person wants to escape, then stopping him is not so easy, unless you have the same level of speed then catching up to him is likely impossible for both Uchiha Shinchi and Biwa Juzo. Shino thought about it a little and said, I don't think that will be an issue, as Uchiha Shinichi and Biwa Juzo's duo undoubtedly has the best teamwork out of all the duos, moreover, Uchiha Shinichi also has the Manjiku Sharingan so he should be able to figure out something together with Juzo who can use silent killing. Hiroko also thought about what Shino said and then nodded, I suppose that is true. At this time, Shino asked, if all goes according to the plan then when are you sure to start the ritual? Hiroko said, there will be a celestial phenomenon at the end of next month, and if all the Kekiai Jinkai are successfully gathered, then I will try to complete the ritual ceremony during that celestial phenomenon. Shino's eyes flickered when he heard this, but masking it soon enough and not letting his thoughts be seen by Hiroko, he said with a smile, I am really looking forward to seeing how things will change after this. One of the Uchiha Training Grounds the strange arrival of the person immediately made Hiragi realize that the person in front of him is not ordinary. He immediately activated his three Tomo Sharingan and vowed to himself, I will not let the same thing that happened the previous time repeat again. The figure emerged out of the spiraling whirl and looked at Uchiha Hiragi was had already raised his sword, activated his Sharingan, and stood in a battle-ready pose, then he cast a deep look at the pair of Sharingan spinning in his eye sockets, and chuckled, you have a nice look in your eyes. Looking at the black robe with golden patterns and the orange spiral mask that the other person wore, Hiragi asked coldly, Are you also a member of Amitsukumi? Neither did the masked person deny nor did he agree. Ads by Pub Future. Where is Homosubi? Where is he? With a roar, Hiragi dashed towards the masked person and shouted, Answer my question. In Hiragi's heart, Amitsukumi is indeed a very strong organization, but Homosubi is the only person he is truly afraid of, as for other members of Amitsukumi? Hiragi is not scared of them. The masked man chuckled, Why the hurry? Why do you want to know where Homosubi is so ardently? Hiragi's eyes become colder, if you are here to play games, then you can die for all I care. 
Finishing this sentence, he immediately reached next to the mast and waved his sword with all his strength. Wouch! Accompanied by the sound of whistling wind, Hiragi's sword traversed a perfect arc and slashed towards the masked man's throat. But suddenly something that Hiragi didn't anticipate happened, his attack that was supposed to have been too fast for the other party to be able to react, the attack that was meant to cleave off the enemy's neck of his torso in just one strike, that very same attack did not even give Hiragi any feedback that he cut through the flesh of the enemy. What happened was strange, the sword in him, both passed right through the enemy without even making momentary contact with the enemy, it was as if he passed right through a projection, it was as if what stood before his was not a person but a projection. Huh. Hiragi was confused. Coming to a stop, Hiragi turned back and glanced at the place where the masked man or maybe some kind of projection stood. At this time, Hiragi had a puzzled look, and the three Tomo in his Sharingan were spinning, he was trying to see if what stood before him was some kind of jinjutsu. While Hiragi stood there in a stupor, the masked man also turned around and slowly walked towards him. Looking at the approaching masked man and that similar indifferent and cold aura oozing off of him, Hiragi instinctively trembled and muttered, Why am I feeling like this? Why? Am I? I am I afraid of him? No. I am not. I am not afraid of him. But no matter how much Hiragi tried to reassure himself, his hand that carried the sword was shaking. Hiragi still gritted his teeth and raised his sword hand and waved fiercely, once, twice, thrice, fourth, fifth, again, again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, but no result, every time the sword passed right through the masked man's body, it was as if he is not even present here, yet he was there, laughing coldly. W. What are you? Are you even a person or some kind of ghost? shouted Hiragi in hysteria. Perhaps I am the death itself. Masked man muttered to no one. At this point, Hiragi has already started to back away, the sword in his hand dropped heavily to the ground, he turned around and wanted to run away but is that even possible? The masked man grabbed Hiragi's collar which did not allow Hiragi to take even a single step and dragged him inside the spiraling world regardless of all the resistance Hiragi tried to put. Amidst the sound of Hiragi's exclamation, shouts, and begging to let him go, his figure was distorted and disappeared into the spiraling world. After the disappearance of Hiragi, the masked man looked at the four faces carved on the Hokage mountain at the other end of the village and then disappeared in a similar world, leading the place to the strange silence where only the sound of cicadas echoed. Hugo Kuroto's home. Poof! With a cloud of white smoke, Kasai appeared before Kuroto and passed on a scroll to him. Kuroto took the scroll and passed a thousand Rio bills to the greedy cat. While the cat happily took the money and went away, Kuroto started reading the content written in the scroll, and after reading a bit, Kuroto's eyes narrowed as he muttered, Sure enough, I was right. Chapter 263 On the scroll sent by Shinichi, he briefly mentioned the recent task that was assigned to him and Biwa Juzo. The task was to capture a swift release Kekiai Jinkai user in the land of Whirlpool. Firstly, storm release, and now swift release. Putting down the scroll from his hand, Kuroto's expression gradually became a solemn one. If hearing the news of the storm release Kekiai Jinkai user disappearing led Kuroto to guess, but now that he received the brief summary of the task that Shinichi was assigned with clearly answers his doubts. Kuroto can surely conclude that this is being done under Hiroko's directives. It seems that Hiroko has indeed completed his imperfect chimera technique. The reason why Kuroto was not in a hurry to obtain the chimera technique was that he believed that it would take Hiroko at least a decade or more to be able to complete his imperfect chimera technique. Kuroto didn't really expect that Hiroko who has joined Akatsuki would complete his chimera technique so early, this was beyond Kuroto's calculations and planning, and now that things have gone a little off track Kuroto is caught off guard. Since Hiroko has already targeted storm release and swift release, then he must have also been eyeing other Kekiai Jinkai. After a pause, Kuroto continued his thought, with Akatsuki organization assisting him in his plans of capturing the Kekiai Jinkai users he has been targeting, it would be impossible for the targets to escape his palms, it's also possible that he has already succeeded in gathering all of them. As Kuroto though this, 
a sudden sense of crisis emerged in his heart. Kuroto has to brainstorm a method to get his hands on that imperfect chimera technique, otherwise, it would be very 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 difficult to obtain the information on the chimera technique once Hiroko completes his Kekiai Jinkai stealing slash absorption plan. It must not be forgotten that in the original series, Hiroko's strength took a massive boost even after he fell short of success and failed to merge the last Kekiai Jinkai, which was Sharingan, so even with his Kekiai Jinkai absorption plan unsuccessful, he and his bird alone were easily able to overpower the combined might of the Kanoha Eleven and Kakashi. And if Hiroko managed to complete his Kekiai Jinkai absorption plan, then there is no telling just how high will his strength evolve. When that happens, it would be very difficult to extract out the secrets of the Chimera technique from the hands of Hiroko, as such, Kuroto must do what he can to get his hands on the Chimera technique which is the most crucial step for his project Godhood. So, after making up his mind, Kuroto again wrote a message on a scroll that will be sent to Shinichi, the content of the scroll was an order for Shinichi to pay close attention to Hiroko's every move and keep Kuroto notified. Now Kuroto is obviously very anxious about which Kekiai Jinkai Hiroko is targeting, whether they are the same as in the original series or is there some degree of deviation. SAS he succeeded in obtaining all of them, and lastly, when and where will the ritual to absorb the Kekiai Jinkai take place, will it be the very same Mount Shumazen or some other place? Ads by Pub Future. Next day. As soon as Kuroto and Shursui met for their regular duty to keep a watch over Uzumaki Naruto, Kuroto noticed that Shursui had a sullen face. Curious, Kuroto asked, What's wrong? Did something happen in the clan? Shursui spoke with a resentful tone, Kuroto-san, do you remember Achiha Haragi? Achiha Haragi? Wasn't he one of the challenges that the Achiha clan sent? Kuroto answered, as he recalled Achiha Haragi. And not long ago, when Kuroto disguised himself as Homosubi, it was Haragi who he encountered, as such Kuroto does remember, Achiha Haragi. Shursui nodded and said, Yes him, he disappeared last night, only his sword was found in one of the clan training grounds, so everyone suspects that it is again the work of Amitsukumi. Kuroto frowned when he heard this. In the past, if a clan member was not seen for a night or two, then it was not that big of a deal, but now the situation is completely different. Whether the village, the Uchiha, or other clans, they are all on very high alert under the threat of Amitsukumi. And the fact that Uchiha Haragi was not seen for an entire night, he did not even come for his assigned duties, as such there was only one conclusion, the shameless and bastards of Amitsukumi have again acted against the Uchiha clan, and this time they kidnapped Uchiha Haragi. The reason why Kuroto frowned was another reason, it wasn't difficult for him to relate the disappearance of Uchiha Haragi with Hiroko's Kekiai Jinkai absorption plan, but what surprised him was this change. In the original series, Hataki Kakashi was Hiroko's target, and Kakashi was also marked with the puppet curse of Hiroko. As such, Kuroto initially thought Hiroko's target will be Kakashi, but it appears that's no longer the case, but when Kuroto thinks about it, it does seem reasonable. In the original series, Hiroko was not part of the Akatsuki, so he was obviously unwilling to deal with the Uchiha clan, so Hataki Kakashi, who was a non-Uchiha, and yet had the Sharingan became his target because stealing Sharingan from Hataki Kakashi would have been much hassle-free when compared to the other Uchiha shinobi. But here the circumstances are different, Hiroko has joined Akatsuki, he is obviously not afraid of some Uchiha clan, so he would obviously target a full-fledged Uchiha and try to obtain the complete Sharingan Kekiai Jinkai, as such, Uchiha Haragi became the unlucky prey. Or is it that the person who came to kidnap Haragi intentionally did not target Kakashi? Kuroto thought, someone was able to sneak into the village and also kidnap Uchiha Haragi without alerting anyone? Even in the Akatsuki, only Abido should be able to accomplish such a thing. And if Abido was indeed the attacker, then the chances of Haragi's escape were obviously zero without any question. Ads by Pub Future. Regardless of all that, Kuroto can now be sure that the Kekiai Jinkai that Hiroko is targeting are pretty much the same as they were in the original series, with Storm Release, Swift Release, and Sharingan confirmed, the other two Kekiai Jinkai will obviously be Dark Release and Steel Release. Hozuki Castle, the scene of Second Gokage Summit. 
A bounty Nien organization like Amatsukami composed of missing Nien appeared in the shinobi world precisely because of the incompetence of you all, so obviously you all should be responsible for this. Roared Yandame Rakage as he smashed his fist on the wooden table in front of him. Ice current was past the level of tolerance, and his roars continued to be echoed the walls of this prisoner castle. The previous attack not only caused the Yandame Rakage to lose two of his powerful Jonin ninjas but also lose Kumogakure's face and his own prestige as a Kage of one of the five great shinobi villages. With his violent temper, it is obvious that he is very furious at Amatsukami, but unfortunately, there is no method for him to vent his anger on the bastards of Amatsukami, as such the Kages of other villages became his targets, because Amatsukami comprises of missing Nin from their villages. Sandame Tsuchiki Janoki snorted softly, he had a look of disdain towards the Yandame Rakage who couldn't even control his temper. Anoki's snort obviously didn't go unnoticed by the Rakage, turning his head towards the Tsuchiki, I glared at him and spoke. I have yet to completely settle accounts with the Wabakure about the assassination of Watanabe, I suspect that your Wabakure is connected with Amatsukami, and you are secretly supporting them, otherwise, why would Amatsukami take Iwa's issued mission and assassinate our head ninja in Konoha? Listening to Reikich's accusation, everyone's eyes turned towards the Tsuchikage. Tsuchikage was unperturbed. What Amatsukami? We Iwavikure have never even heard of them until now. Even if Kumovikure wants to frame us to cover up your incompetence, you have to first bring a shred of solid evidence to prove your conjecture, otherwise, your accusations are nothing but complaints. Come on, Rakage, do you any evidence? The already furious Rakage was more furious, and blue lightning chakra cloak subconsciously appeared over him, it was extremely violent and threatening. Suchikage was also not afraid, he floated in the air, eyes stern, dazzling white light started to emerge in between his hands as if he was ready to start whenever the Rakage wants. Kumogakure and Iwabakure are old enemies, Sandame Rakage died because of Iwabakure's betrayal, and almost 10,000 IWA shinobi dies in the hands of Sandame Rakage so the parties will obviously not settle such hatreds so easily. As such, it has not even been full five minutes since the Gakage summit commenced and Suchikage and Rakage were already pointing blades metaphorically at each other's throats. With Rakage and Suchikage ready to go at it, everyone in the room got up and raised their guards. Cough, cough. At this time, Shimura Danzo, who did not speak from the beginning, stood up, drew everyone's attention towards him with a cough, and said, Everyone, I propose to hold the second Gokage summit so that we can peacefully sit down and discuss how to efficiently deal with these emerging bounty Nin and mercenary organizations like Amatsukami and Akatsuki, so let's let go of our previous hatred for a while and commence an effective. As Shimura Danzo was speaking, Rakage suddenly interrupted him midway. Who do you think you are? Why has Hokage not come to the summit, and instead chose to send one of his subordinates to the summit? Asked by Rakage, everyone's attention also shifted towards Shimura Danzo, waiting for his answer. However, Shimura Danzo was silent, as if a cat got his tongue, nothing he could say would amount to anything, why? Because he is not the Hokage. Chapter 264 Shimura Danzo expected to be able to represent Kanoha in the Gakage summit and hoped to convince the other four Kages to form a joint coalition with Kanoha Dakur as the head of the coalition to fight against the threat of Amatsukami and Akatsuki and gain huge prestige for him by doing so, to replace Haruzen as the Hokage of the village in the future. However, Rakage's cold words that did not have even an ounce of respect or patience made him suddenly realize that he, Shimura Danzo, may be the consultant elder of Kanoha, leader of the rude division of the Umbu department, he may be the second most powerful political authority in his village, but here, at the scene of a Gokage summit, for the shinobi world, he is nothing but a subordinate of Hokage. At this moment, Danzo hoped from the bottom of his heart that he was the one wearing the Hokage hat and the Hokage robe, he bore the title of Kanoha's Hokage, could speak for Kanoha. The deeply rooted ambition of becoming the Hokage was burning in his heart. Sighing lightly, he suppressed all kinds of thoughts and said with a firm voice, If Rekich Dano and Suchikich Dano want this Gokich summit to become a ridiculous farce, and the name of the five great shinobi villages become a laughingstock for everyone, then please continue with your petty conflicts, I have nothing more to say. Rakage also knows the purpose for which this Gokage summit was organized, 
and also understands the consequences of behaving in an unrestrained manner in front of the Kage and representatives of all the other great villages, so he suppressed his anger and deactivated the lightning chakra cloak. Tsuchiki Jinoki also did not continue anymore, and slowly descended back to his seat, but his face had a slight unsightly expression. Followed by Rakage and Tsuchiki, the others also sat down one by one. At this time, Rakage picked up a file and scattered documents before the other four representatives. Look at these documents for yourself. Amatsukami and Akatsuki organization is filled with missing Nin and Kekiai Jinkai users from your villages. Kazakage Raza picked up the file and frowned after reading the content recorded in it. This is impossible, even in my village, apart from me, no other shinobi has mastered magnet release, let alone someone who has mastered magnet release and defected. Suchikij sneered coldly, this magnet release user of Amatsukami might as well be the missing Sandame Kazakage Dano. After having read the document, Anoki is again full of confidence as neither Amatsukami nor Akatsuki have any member who was a shinobi of a Wabakure. As such, he can freely taunt others. Kazakage Raza spoke with murderous intent, Suchikij Dano, I hope you understand the meaning of your words. Elder Chio, who accompanied Kazakage Raza to the Gakage summit said, It has already been confirmed that Sandame Kazakage Sama has been assassinated by the missing Nin Sasori, who fell to the wrong path and chose to join the Akatsuki, so please be mindful of your words, Suchikage Dano. In fact, Suna's leaders have long suspected that their previous Kazakage who has gone missing has somehow died, otherwise, they would not choose the next Kage. Ads by Pub Future. However, they were still unwilling to release this news to the public for the sake of reputation. But in the previous fierce battle that Suna had with the members of Akatsuki just a few months ago, Sasori personally confessed to having killed the Sandane Kazakage. As such, it is no longer possible to hide this, so Chio decided to announce this news on behalf of Sunagakure. Karatachi Agura, the Yande Mizukage of Kirigakure, and the Jinchuriki of Sanbai, read through the documents, and spoke after a long silence, there are no ice release users in Kirigakure now, the ice release user of Amatsukami probably left Kirigakure even before I became the Mizukage as I have never heard of any shinobi of the Yuki clan have such strength that he can go toe to toe with Sandame Hokage. As for Biwa Juzo of Akatsuki, he also left Kirigakure before I became the Mizukage. Rakage said with a dissatisfied tone, all you lot are doing is shirking responsibility. At this time, Shimura Danzo said, regardless of who these shinobi are, or whatever their past affiliations are, what we cannot deny is the threat they pose to the world of shinobi and the five great powers. More so, when Amatsukami has openly announced that they will start targeting the nine bijou, so instead of our petty conflicts, we must focus on how to eradicate these organizations as soon as possible. Targeting bijou is definitely hitting the sensitive nerves of all the major shinobi villages. The first one to agree was obviously the Rakage, who deeply understood the threat of Amatsukami, I agree. The young Mizukage himself is a Jinchuriki, so he also agreed without much hesitation, seconded. After a bit of thinking, Kazakage also nodded, I also agree. Seeing that the overall direction has been set, Tsuchikij also nodded, I have no objection. Now that all five villages have unanimously agreed to deal with these emerging organizations, the four Kage and Shimura Danzo discussed the specific matters including the encirclement and suppression of these organizations. However, it has not been very long since the Second Great Shinobi War ended, so the distrust between the various shinobi villages is too deep. Neither of the shinobi villages has been pushed to their bottom line, nor was there any declaration of a war against the entire shinobi world, as was the case in the original series, so Shimura Danzo's proposal to establish a joint crusade was immediately rejected by the Kage of various villages. Danzo was obviously angry, but he was also helpless, so all he could say was, Someday, you will all regret this decision you made today. The four Kage looked at each other, but neither of them commented anything. In the end, the result of the second Dockage summit resulted in a joint agreement that the five great powers will each be responsible for the encirclement and suppression of the activities of these emerging organizations within their own countries, and will also share any and all intelligence involving Amatsukami and Akatsuki. Outside Ozuki Castle Ads by Pub Future. 
The masked man quietly stood on a tree, supporting his back on the tree stem, and looking at the distant island where the Hozuki Castle is located. At this moment, Zetsu's figure emerged from the tree trunk and said, The second dockage summit seems to have been concluded. That was fast. Masked man muttered in surprise, then immediately asked, What did they talk about? Zetsu spoke, there are too many censorine all around the Hozuki castle, moreover there was also something that was constantly absorbing chakra, I was unable to figure what that was but regardless, I was unable to get too close to the meeting room, as such I am unaware of what topics they discussed. The masked man nodded and asked again, how long until they start returning to their respective villages? Zetsu said, they have already started the return journey, the fastest wreckage is no longer in Hozuki castle. The masked man nodded and was silent for a while. It is undoubtedly the best choice to intercept one of these kage and intercept them on their returning journey. He did not consider rakage and suchikage, because both of them are not easy to be captured, therefore, masked men thought of the current kazakage and mizukage. As for Shimura Danzo? Masked man didn't even bother to think about him. Keeping the ambitious as he is will only stimulate Kanoha's internal strife and induce more infighting, by not being under control, Shimura Danzo would do more damage to Kanoha than when controlled. Now that he was left with only two targets, the masked man asked, Who are the guards following the Kazakage? Zetsu replied, The puppet master Chio, and the commander of Sunagakir Umbu Department, Pakura of the Scorch Release. Dealing with three Kage-class individuals will be a bit troublesome, especially Pakura with her Scorch release. Shaking his head, the masked man asked again, Who are the guards of Mizukage? The Kazakage has already made several attempts to eliminate Pakura, the threat to his reign. But every time something comes up and Raza is left with no choice but to postpone Pakura's elimination into the future. The first time was because of the urgent request by the Miko of the Land of Demon, Raza was left with no choice but to temporarily give up his thoughts and sent Pakura to the Land of Demon to assist Miko-sama in her conquest to save the world by sealing the Demon Morio. For the second time, when Raza had already planned out the cleaning arrangements of Pakura and was about to implement them, he was again left with no choice but to put them on hold as the Ryumyaku was suddenly stolen. For the third time, not long ago, he has just made up his mind to clean up Pakura, but it just so happened that the Sasori Crusade force that Suna had just formed encountered several members of Akatsuki, and in those consecutive fights, Sunagakir suffered a heavy number of casualties, again leaving Raza with no other choice but to put away the thought of cleaning up Pakura for the time being. Therefore, Pakura, who should have died as a part of the negotiation between two nations, and to ensure the reign of the Kazakage not only did not die but became the current Umbu commander of Sunagakir. And the Kazakage Raza who has been trying to clean her up for so long might have never thought that the only reason he is alive and not became a prey to the masked man's planning is because of the presence of Pakura of the Scorch Release as his guard. Chapter 265 Are you finally going to make a move on Kiragakure? Thought Zetsu with a strange smile. While Achihamadara was still alive, he secretly began to attach strings to Kiragakure, as such many of the high-ranking shinobi of Kiragakure became a puppet in Madara's hands without them even realizing it. This is also the reason why Achiha Madara was able to kidnap Noera Rin under the guise of this being Kiragakure's doing, sealed Sanbai inside her, and also branded her with the forbidden individual curse tag, leaving her with no other choice but to kill herself at the hands of Kakashi so that Kiragakure's plan doesn't come to fruition. Aside from all the planning hidden behind Noera Rin's death, there were two reasons why Madara selected Kiragakure to control from the shadows. The first reason was their war potential. Kiragakure's overall strength was second only to Kanoha because of all the shinobi clans with strong Kekiai Jinkai living in the Land of Water, which included Yuki Clan with Ice Release, Kagaya Clan with Corpse Bone Vein, Turumi Clan with Lava Release and Boil Release, Hashigate Clan, Karatachi Clan, Hozuki clan, and so on. The second reason is the location of Kiragakure. The land of water is located at the edge of the mainland, with the only mode of transportation to the continent being through the sea, so the flow of information outside was very limited. And Madara's control over Kiragakure is also one of the many reasons for Kiragakure's instability and internal conflicts. 
Madara's death and the rise of Karatachi Agura to the position of the Yande Mizukic has gradually started to change Kirigakure for the better. The policies advocated by the new Mizukic have started to calm the internal strife within the land of water and there are signs that Kirigakure would soon rise. So if the Yande Mizukic is allowed to continue his rule over Kirigakure, then all the efforts Uchiha Madara put to control Kirigakure from the shadows would amount to nothing, as such Setsu also wants the masked man to again take control of Kirigakure. The guards following Mizukic are two elite umbu, said Zetsu. The mask thought a little and said, In that case, we will take control of Mizukic, inform Nagato and Konin to meet me in the land of water, and there we will ambush Mizukic, effectively controlling over the entire Kirigakure from the shadows. Karatachi Agura is indeed strong, with his own strength he managed to reach a degree of consensus with the sandby sealed inside him, as such his strength is obviously nothing to scoff at. Although the masked man is sure that he can easily deal with the Mizukage very easily because of his Manjiku Sharingan and would release, having pain and Conan will only make it much easier to take control of Mizukage. Zetsu said as he submerged into the ground, All right, I will inform Nagato and Conan to meet you in the land of water in about two weeks from today. The masked man also disappeared into the spiraling whirl, closely following the soon-to-be puppet Mizukic. Ads by Pub Future. A week later, Hugo Kuroto's home. Poof! With a poof of white smoke, the tiger-striped orange cat appeared before Kuroto. As soon as the cat appeared before she asked for 1,000 Rio as usual and after Kuroto gave the 1,000 Rio bill, the cat passed a scroll to Kuroto and left into a poof of white smoke. Kuroto unfolded the scroll and read the information on it, and muttered, At the end of next month, there is going to be a celestial phenomenon which would lead to the occurrence of aurora lights, and Hiroko plans to use that opportunity to complete the ritual? Kuroto deduced this based on the intelligence that Shinichi sent him. Currently it is the second week of this month, which means that the ritual will take place about six weeks from now. When Kuroto thought of the fact that six weeks from now Hiroko will be performing the ritual to absorb the five Kekiai Jinkai, the sense of urgency in Kuroto's mind increased. This is because he wants to go to the scene and personally observe the entire ceremony in full detail. But the problem is that the entire Akatsuki will also be present there since Pain had arranged the members of Akatsuki to help gather the Kekiai Jinkai therefore it is obvious that they will ensure his safety during the ritual process, so it is obvious that Kuroto can't be present there so openly. How should I sneak there? As Kuroto thought of this issue, he suddenly got an idea. A month later. In this period of a month, Kuroto put a lot of his time to train the female Fire Nature clone, although the time he spent training this clone has been very short, its effects were still very visible. It is probably because of the fact that Kuroto already has experience of cultivating the clone so he did not face any active problems. However, there are some passive problems, one of which is the chakra natures of this clone body, because of the Shirsue's genes present in the clone, the chakra natures of this clone body are fire, lightning, and in. Fire release and in release are obviously the primary chakra natures, while lightning release is the secondary chakra nature. And as far as Kuroto knows, there doesn't seem to be any Kekiai Jinkai in the shinobi world that is a fusion of fire release and lightning release. The only thing that even comes close to being a possibility of being a fusion of fire release and lightning release is Uchiha Sasuke's blaze release, but Kuroto knows that Blaze release developed by Uchiha Sasuke is Amaterasu molded into different forms under the control of Sasuke's Kagetsuchi. As such, there is really no Kekiai Jinkai with fire and lightning being its elementary chakra natures. Ads by Pub Future Therefore, if Kuroto wants to attain his objective of cultivating this female clone up to the standards for being used in the ritual, then Kuroto has to develop an all-new Kekiai Jinkai that has never appeared in the shinobi world before. This is obviously not an easy task, but he has no other choice but to do so. After completing a day of training, Kuroto came to his laboratory. Looking at Uchiha Yoda on the test bench, his eyes grew colder. Right now, the two pairs of eyeballs in each eye socket have started to return into a normal shape, but they are far from being merged completely as there are still two pupils clearly visible in each eye socket, this indicated that the two pairs have yet to integrate successfully. 
And here lies the problem, it has already been almost two months since the fusion process started, but it is still far from being completed, and this is making Kuroto very annoyed. Considering his plans, Kuroto decided that he can't take it anymore and said coldly, Stop pretending to be unconscious Uchiha Yoda, I have not injected any drug inside of you for the past month, and the fact that you are conscious is not hidden from my eyes. It was a few days ago that Kuroto decided to stop injecting the drugs into Ryota's body so that the speed of fusion of the two pairs increases, and it is obvious that Ryota's consciousness was restored because of the eternal Manjiki Sharingan fusion. Initially, Kuroto did not point it out because there is no threat from Ryota anymore, his whole body is sealed from inside and out as such he can't even blink his eyes without alerting Kuroto. And because there is a need for a host whose will would guide the fusion of two Manjiku pairs, so Kuroto chose to remain silent and let Ryota do the work that he is supposed to do. After all, that's all he is useful for anyways. But Ryota who was detained, tortured, and almost killed by Kuroto has yet not learned the lesson, let alone speeding up the fusion of two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan, he even put his effort to deliberately slow down the already slow fusion process, which has only increased Kuroto's dilemma, greatly annoying him. Exposed by Kuroto, Ryota grinned weakly and flapped his lips speaking something but no voice came out. Although Ryota couldn't perfectly control his muscles to grin or speak, Kuroto noticed that it was a mocking grin and also understood what he was trying to speak because of his training in lip reading. Sure enough, I can't hide from you, but what is with your voice? Why does it, why do you sound like a woman? Kuroto didn't bother to answer Ryota's question about why his voice sounds like a woman and asked instead, why are you trying to prevent the fusion of two Manjiku Sharingan into eternal Manjiku Sharingan? Ryota again flapped his lips, why? Because it's fun. Annoying is fun. Without my will to be a guide to the fusion process to the two pairs of Manjiku Sharingan, you will never get the completely integrated eternal Manjiku Sharingan. Kuroto frowned, don't waste your meaningless effort, first and foremost, the two pairs will integrate regardless of what you try. All your futile attempts to stop the process will slow it down and nothing more, so your efforts are worthless in the end. And you seem to be confused about some things, you are not the only Uchiha, there is Hideki in one of my other secret labs, then there is Shursue, moreover, your attempts to annoy me will only increase your suffering before your inevitable death, are you so hell-bent on suffering more? But it seemed that Ryota didn't care. You can try whatever you want, but as long as these eyeballs are in my eye sockets I am going to do everything to stop their integration. Kuroto was silent for a moment and then asked curiously, since you chose to communicate with me, it means that you still have something that you want from me, right? Come on tell me, what is it that you want? When asked by Kuroto, Ryota suddenly went silent and finally spoke, I want to have a final fight with you, using all the power that an Uchiha can have, that is with the power of the eternal Manjiki Sharingan. Chapter 266 Kuroto was slightly surprised upon learning what Ryota wants from him, and immediately arched his lips in a grin, given the state you are in, and after understanding what I put you through, do you still think that you have the qualifications to put such terms before me? Ryota, whether I am qualified or not, you should know this even better than I do, but it does not matter, what I spoke to you is what I want, my death is inevitable even I know that, even if you don't kill me, I don't have much longer to live and this fact can't be changed, and the same is the case with my brother, so fighting you using the eternal Manjiki Sharingan, for which you made us suffer so much is what I want, I want to experience the epitome of power that an Uchiha can have. This time Kuroto was silent. The eternal Manjiku Sharingan indeed represents the epitome of power that an Uchiha can have from the Eam part of Rakuto Sinan's power. It is also the embodiment of the peak spiritual power from the lineage of Rakuto Sinan. Therefore, Ryota's desire to experience this power before his inevitable death is not so strange, if one thinks about it. And to be honest, Kuroto would rather have Ryota complete the fusion of the two pairs because that would yield the best eternal Manjiku Sharingan pair at the current time. Besides, now that the fusion process has started, Ryota's will has already merged with the eyes so Ryota's will is important for the fusion. Kuroto knows this very well because he has also awakened the Tensigen. While Kuroto was busy thinking, Ryota continued flapping his lips, you said that you noticed me gaining consciousness, 
yet why did you not do anything about it? Was it because you knew that I am powerless to do anything? Or is it because there are some differences when I am the host or when someone else is the host? I don't care what are those differences, what I care about is what I want, so either you agree to what I want, or you can keep waiting. Kuroto said, Do you really think that you will be able to defeat me with the power of Eternal Manjiku Sharingan? Because if you do, then I am sorry to have to tell you that, it wouldn't make any difference, you will lose, miserably at that. Ryota said, I don't care, you said that Eternal Manjiku Sharingan represents the epitome of power that an Uchiha can ever have, I refuse to die without experiencing this power, regardless of the result, whether I win or lose, I must. There is no whether you lose or win. You will lose, and you can't change that result. Kuroto continued after the pause, and how am I supposed to trust you that you will not use this opportunity to destroy your eyes? Ryota said, You do not need to pretend. I already know that you have planted a curse tag in my heart, it prevents me from killing myself and also prevents me from destroying these eyes. Kuroto was a little surprised that Ryota was able to perceive the curse tag, but when he thought about it, it didn't seem strange. Oh? You noticed? Ryota continued. Obviously. Since there is already a curse tag placed in my heart, so obviously I can't destroy the eyes, so you have no reason to be worried about. Kuroto thought a little, and after weighing it a little, he finally nodded, All right then, since you are so hell-bent on suffering another defeat, I will just let you experience it. One week later, somewhere in the land of tea, Achiha Ryota finally tore off the antibacterial covering that was wrapped over his eyes, and finally opened his eyes. At this time, an extremely complex scarlet and black pattern appeared in his eye sockets, which comprised of a five-pointed star, as well as several tomo shapes within the Manjikyu copy wheel. After adapting to the change in light, Ryota muttered with emotion, So this is, this is what eternal Manjikyu Sharingan feels like? Not far away stood Kuroto, he was calmly observing Uchiha Ryota who has torn off the antibacterial cloth and revealed the pair of eternal Manjikyu Sharingan. At this time, Ryota's eyes landed on Kuroto. Ryota spoke, can I ask you a few questions? Kuroto nodded, ask. Ryota spoke, who was the person I killed back when I tried escaping from the prison cell I was locked in? It wasn't a shadow clone, it was you, right? Then how are you still alive? Kuroto indifferently answered, true, that was not a shadow clone, but it was a clone created from my genes. Is that so? muttered Ryota and then asked again, and why did your voice sound like that of a woman that time, was it also because? Before Ryota could complete his sentence, Kuroto nodded, yes, that was also a clone of mine. Ryota nodded, he didn't really care about all this. He carefully observed the pair of Byakugan in Kuroto's eye sockets, and asked, one more question, how come you, a Hyuga have such power and so many weird techniques? As far as it is known, Byakugan does not grant its user access to such abilities, then how are you? Kuroto was silent for a while, and then said, If the Sharingan of the Uchiha clan can evolve into Manjiku Sharingan and Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, then why can Byakugan of the Hyuga clan not evolve into a higher form of Dojitsu? After all, both Sharingan and Byakugan are branches of the same tree? Ryota nodded, Huh? Then asked with a frown, But what do you mean by branches of the same tree? Kuroto shook his head indifferently, you don't need to care about that, enough questions already we can start whenever you are ready. Ryota no longer asked anything and rushed towards Kuroto as he spoke with a grin, it's fine even if you don't want to answer, let me once experience the true power of eternal Manjiki Sharingan, I don't believe that the Uchiha clan is any inferior to the Hyuga clan. As he rushed towards Kuroto, the golden phantom started to emerge out of his body. Ryota obviously did not start any tentative attacks, he already understands just how monstrous Hyuga Kuroto's strength is, so no need to start with simple attacks, as such he directly used the chakra and activated the Susanu. Walla! Layer after layer staggered over the Susanu, and within a few moments, the huge golden Susanu appeared on the battlefield. The shape of the Susanu was not much different, but its size was considerably larger than the one Ryota used previously, reaching up to an astonishing titanic size. 
even a single of its movement produced large wind pressures. Even Kuroto was a bit surprised as he stared at the humongous Susanu in front of him. Uchihara Yoda stood in the diamond cavity of the full-body Susanu as an additional cloak of golden flames covered the humongous body of the Susanu. Even Kuroto had to take this fight a bit seriously. Chapter 267 To be honest, Kuroto doesn't really know what the true limits of Susanoo can be. The full-body Susanoo used by Uchiha Madara in the Fourth Great Shinobi War was more than capable of cutting mountains with just pure wind pressure generated by waving his swords. While the Susanoo used by Rakuo Sinin was as big as the Jubi itself, so there is no telling on what exactly is the limit of Susanoo. The reason Kuroto agreed to this request of Ryota is also related to one of his interests, as Kuroto is really interested in seeing the full extent of the power of Eternal Manjiku Sharingan that Ryota, the original owner of the Dojutsu, can display. Collecting this data is obviously important and can be used as a point of reference. From the size, Ryota's full-body Susanoo can be compared to the like of the one displayed by Madara and Indra, but Kuroto still believes that maintaining such a high chakra-consuming Susanoo would be extremely burdensome for Ryota. After all, Ryota does not have the exaggerated chakra level of the two sons of Rakuto Sanin, and there is also a probability that Okinanoshi is no longer accessible to him so meeting chakra requirements is extremely difficult for him. However, despite all this, there is still a sense of heavy oppression oozing off of the Susanoo's body and Kuroto can be sure that even the likes of Kage-class Shinobi would have trouble bearing such heavy pressure. At this time, Ryota spoke, Hugo Kuroto, I feel that I am omnipotent and almighty now, come. For I am going to enjoy this last battle of mine, if you defeat the current me, then I wouldn't feel wronged even after everything that you put me and my brother through. Whoosh! In an instant, the cyan blue chakra flames wrapped around Kuroto's whole body as his eyes changed from Mikugan to Tensigan. Looking at those cyan eyes, Ryota instinctively felt the power they seemed to contain, and he can't help but shudder upon realizing this. Taking a deep breath, Ryota calmed himself and asked Kuroto, Those are your evolved eyes? Kuroto did not bother to answer, he just raised his hand gently. Instantly, one after another, Truth-seeking balls appeared behind Kuroto's back and their number reached a total of five. Staring at those black orbs, Ryota was reminded of just how much of a cheat they are, and he can't help but remember that final technique that Hugo Kuroto used which completely decimated his Susanoo. I have to be the one to make the first move, thought Ryota. Instantly, Ryota's Susanoo flew up high into the sky and the four long swords made out of golden flames appeared lengthened. Immediately afterward, he started the flurry of attacks with the four swords at the same time, waving them with such might that each sword left hundreds of meters of a gully on the ground. Compared with the huge figure of the Susanoo, Kuroto's figure was akin to an ant. But that very same ant-like figure was not at all scared by the incoming sword strikes and in fact, had a total indifferent look on his face when met with the four swords. Suddenly his figure disappeared from his position and passed through the small gaps between the four swords like a high-speed cyan streamer rushing towards the Susanoo. Boom! The four giant chakra swords that failed to cut Kuroto slashed the mountain below into several pieces and splashed the entire battlefield with hot golden flames, encasing everything into a sea of flames that even melted the ground. But completely unaffected by this attack, Kuroto, who was rushing towards the Susanoo, increased his speed as he simultaneously controlled the truth-seeking ball and injected Tensigan Chakra into them. Kuroto doesn't want to have a very long and dragged-out battle with Ryota, so he opted to directly use the strongest technique in his arsenal to deal with Ryota in the shortest amount of time possible. Ads by Pub Future The advantage of truth-seeking ball is obvious, and Kuroto plans to perfectly utilize this advantage in this battle. Ryota also noticed the chakra fluctuations emitting out of Kuroto and understood that he has to do something to block Kuroto, he waved the chakra swords, slashing towards Kuroto, with the intent to cut him as soon as he can, but he was unable to do so. The reason is also very simple, this is only the second time Ryota is using Manjiku Sharingan or Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, coupled with how fast Kuroto is dodging all those attacks, it is obvious that Ryota can't keep up with that speed even with the heightened insight and visual acuity. As Kuroto was about to approach the Susanoo, 
suddenly a hundred-meter-long sword made up of golden chakra appeared in Kuroto's hands, and at very instant, the speed of Kuroto accelerated three times to his previous speed. Ryota was obviously unable to react to the sudden increase in Kuroto's speed, however, he still tried to clutch Kuroto's figure into a hand grip with two of Susanoo's hands. But that was obviously useless as before the arms could approach him, Kuroto waved a hundred meters long golden sword. Slash. The golden chakra sword easily cut through both the arms, as if the entire defense of Susanoo amounted to nothing. Ryota was obviously shocked. How? He didn't even have any words to express his shock state. Even after he had overestimated the power that the sword contained, Ryota couldn't believe that with a single swipe a pair of arms encased with Susanoo's armor, further strengthened by his Yayorozu will be cleaved off as if they were nothing. Is the difference so big? Ryota. Hmm, seems like I will have to add more orbs to cut the chest part in just one slash. Kuroto. At this time, the two hands that were cut off separated from the Susanoo and fell to the ground. Meanwhile, Kuroto, whose speed was slowed a bit, swayed from left to right, as two more truth-seeking balls appeared on his left hand, which Kuroto merged into the golden sword. Suddenly, the extremely strong golden sword became sharper, and dazzling that for a moment Ryota had to cover his eyes as he couldn't directly look at the golden sword. Chapter 268 The sudden dazzling light that illuminated the sky with a golden glow prompted Ryota to raise his only hand to cover his eyes. At this time, the two hands that have fallen on the ground exploded further splashing flames everywhere. The sound of the explosion was obviously very loud, and it still lingered within Ryota's ear. After forcefully adapting to the golden bright light Ryota suddenly realized that the golden sword that Kuroto carried was longer than before and it had already penetrated the chest part of the Susanoo armor. Two cleaved off hands and the chest pierced by the sword reminded Ryota of that night, and he was instantly angrier when he saw this. After getting the Eternal Manjiku Sharingan, the epitome of power that an Uchiha can have, Ryota knows that he stands at the pinnacle of the Uchiha clan, at the same level of Uchiha Madara, and yet he is so helpless in the face of Hugo Kuroto, even if he knows that his defeat is inevitable, he doesn't want to be so helpless. Ah! With a roar, Ryota urged his eternal Manjiku Sharingan with all his power such that bloody veins became apparent on the white scara, but he didn't care and continued putting more and more and more and more, chakra, squeezing out every bit and fragment, his body started to suddenly age, yet he did not care. What he cared now was to not die miserably. Followed by Ryota's roar and the instantaneous burst of chakra, the golden flames that were encasing the Susanoo armor with a protective cloak sizzled and grew violent, raging uncontrollably. It grew and its form changed, the empty spots from where the arm was cleaved off were now covered with the golden flames that took the shapes of two giant hands of the Susanoo armor. And it seems that Ryota was not finished with this, his roar continued, and the golden flames even covered the empty interior of the Susanoo armor. Now the giant Susanoo was a golden flame giant, and when Kuroto saw such a change, his face sank. Although not as strong as Uchiha Sasuke's Indra Susanoo, this Susanoo was only a step or two away from reaching such high power, all that Ryota lacked to be able to match that level of power was the amount of chakra. But Kuroto knew that even if this Susanoo is not as exaggeratedly strong as Uchiha Sasuke's Indra Susanoo, he still can't be careless with it. This is because he is more than familiar with the characteristics of the Golden Flame. Kuroto has already done experiments with this Golden Flame and understands this very well that aside from being very hot and violent, the Golden Flames, which is actually a special ability of Ryota's Manjiku Sharingan, aside from the two dojutsu abilities, these Golden Flames seems to be able to burn the Churka itself. Adds by Pub Future. Which is to say, once pure chakra comes in contact with these Golden Flames, these flames violently react and engulf that source itself. As a result, the chakra source will be instantly consumed, which is extremely dangerous. Not wanting to take the risk of getting touched by those flames, Kuroto instantly dispelled the golden sword, then collected all the truth-seeking balls in his right hand, to which he further injected the Tensegan chakra and then shouted, Silver will reincarnation explosion. Instantly, an extremely violent silver storm spewed out of Kuroto's hand. 
The raging winds of the violent silver hurricane filled the interior of Ryota Susanu in just a short time and blew away the golden flames. But, TCH, damn it! Even Ryota who was standing in the diamond cavity on the forehead of the Susanu was blown away by the hurricane and its wings were ridden with holes at this moment. Boom! The huge Susanu that could no longer stay in the sky lost control and fell on the sea past the mountain cliff. As the huge body of Susanu fell into the sea, it set off a huge wave, and the wave swept past the mountainous coast. Fortunately, enough, there was no house near the coast. The reason why Kuroto chose the land of tea as a battlefield because he knows that the land of tea is pretty isolated and the chances of people of Shinobi interfering with the fight will be extremely less, so Kuroto would not have to worry about being discovered by anyone. Gurgle. Gurgle. With the Susanu falling into the sea, the water poured into the hole, and soon enough the entire Susanu was seemingly submerged into the sea. Even the golden flames that were again lit because of Ryota's chakra, although did not extinguish, were still weakened. On Kuroto's side, because of the Tensigen, his vision was not at all hindered by all the rising steam that was starting to cover the battlefield along with the dust and smoke. Seeing that the Susanu was starting to submerge into the water, Kuroto stopped the silver tornado and again drew his right hand as the gold sword re-emerged in his hand. And without even waiting for a second to pass, Kuroto waved the sword. Whoosh! The bright golden chakra sword drew a shining arc, leaving a conspicuous halo wherever it passed and cut off everything in its path with ease. Ads by Pub Future and soon it ran across the head of Ryota's Susanu, and without even the slightest of effort, the sword easily cut off the head. Now Kuroto used rain will pull to pull out Uchiha Ryota from the broken Susanu, and smashed him on the other side of the shore. Boom! With a muffled noise, Ryota, who was thrown by Kuroto, smashed violently on the side of the shore. Cough cough. Cough cough. Cough cough. Ryota was coughing violently, at this point it was getting hard for him to breathe, his cells have deteriorated very badly and it is very hard for him to even stay alive for a few more minutes. Staring at Kuroto who had an indifferent look, as if nothing went beyond his expectation during the entire battle, Ryota chuckled, You, are a monster, you know that? And just what kind of ninjutsu do you use, all of them, all of them? Kuroto did not answer Ryota's question, although he still had that indifferent look, he was actually panting for breath, after all, using silver will reincarnation explosion and golden will reincarnation explosion simultaneously with such power is also a bit difficult for him, so obviously he was also a bit drained in this battle. After all, he went as far as to use seven truth-seeking orbs in both the techniques, so obviously there is some exhaustion. Ryota didn't really expect any answer from Kuroto at this point, but he went on to say, you know, I was able to notice that. Kuroto did not care what Ryota wanted to say, so he continued ignoring Ryota's words, and as soon as he recovered his breath, he immediately crouched down and took out the pair of eternal Manjiku Sharingan from Ryota's eye sockets. Ryota obviously did not resist, he knew that this was inevitable, moreover, he was unable to stop Kuroto, both because of the other person's strength, his own weakness, and tiredness, but most of all, because of that cursed tag buried in his heart. After losing his eyes, Ryota kept asking, Tell me, why did I lose? Was it just because you were too strong? Kuroto put the pair of eternal Manjiku Sharingan inside a small nutrition tank, deactivated the Tensigen Chakra mode, and then spoke, I have nothing to speak, even before the battle started I repeatedly told you that you have no chance of winning, yet you wanted to experience the painful defeat, and that's what you are getting. Ryota nodded, then again said, You are right. But that is not the answer to my question. Kuroto sighed and spoke, Unfortunately, this is Shinobi world, a world where even the dead are unable to keep the secrets buried, as such I am not going to speak anything that I do not want to. Ryota sighed, Maybe you are right? Kuroto looked at the tears mixed with blood coming out of Ryota's hollow eye sockets, he sighed and after groaning a little, Kuroto spoke, although I won't be telling you anything about my powers, what I can tell you is that the strength you displayed in this battle even with that half-mutilated body of yours, I can most definitely say that your overall strength has far surpassed the level of a kage, in fact, you have reached the level of a super kage, 
although you are not as strong as Uchiha. Madara, and Shodame sama you are still one of the strongest shinobi to have lived in the shinobi world. The defensive power of your Susanoo and those golden flames makes you extremely strong, and I can guarantee that very few people in the shinobi world, whether dead or alive, ever reached your level. Unfortunately for you, no one will ever come to know of your strength. So, you are telling me that it's not that I am too weak or powerless, but that you are too strong? With a wry smile, Ryota asked again, Can you tell me your purpose for doing all this? With your strength, let alone Kanoha, you can control the entire shinobi world, no one will ever be your opponent, so why go through all this trouble? Why make me and my brother go through such a horrible experience? Why do you want Eternal Manjiku Sharingan? You have no use for those eyes. Why go to such lengths for things that are completely meaningless to you? Chapter 269 Hearing Ryota's earnest questions, Kuroto was silent for a while, then said, I promised your sway that I would not let Uchiha clan fade away, I don't really care if you believe what I am saying is true or not, but part of the reasons I did all this has something to do with saving the Uchiha clan. Ryota was taken aback, and after understanding some things he seemed a little lost. Kuroto said, Uchiha clan's plans of coup d'etat are destined to fail, the chief combatants that your clan hopes to rely on during the rebellion are strictly opposed to the idea of coup, be that Shursui or Itachi, and even if by some miracle your clan succeeds in starting the rebellion, it will completely destroy Kanoha and the other villages will not let miss such a chance. Thus the entire shinobi continent will be engulfed into the flames of war causing too much destruction and death, and I am really not interested in such a thing becoming a reality. Ryota said in a deep voice, as long as the entire Uchiha clan is united, nobody in the entire shinobi world will ever be able to harm the Uchiha clan. Maybe, you are right. Kuroto nodded, then said, but the reality is not as you hope, the entire Uchiha clan does not support your cause, there are people who secretly oppose the coup, and the radicals of your clan are pushing them, putting pressure on them that they must support the clan, so inevitably what you people are doing is actually more damage to your clan. Ryota was silent for a while then said, So what do you expect the Uchiha clan should do? Kuroto said, To be honest, I don't know, but I do know that Ku is not the way, perhaps a change? Ryota frowned, Change? What kind of change? I... I don't know, to be honest, I'll figure out these things because I promised Shursui to not let the Uchiha clan be destroyed, and that's what I will do. The reasons for the destruction of the Uchiha clan are many, there is Danzo inside the village, then there is Abito outside, so Kuroto has no perfect method to solve this issue for now, but maybe he will have one in the future. After a long silence, Ryota said with a bitter tone, I hope so. Speaking so, Ryota lifted his hand which held a kunai, and directly pierced his heart, ending his life here. For a few seconds, Kuroto kept his silence and after noticing that all signs of life disappeared, Kuroto murmured, There is one more thing that I have not told you, although Eternal Manjiku Sharingan is the highest level of dojutsu that an Uchiha can have with just his in chakra. It is still not the end as there are other higher forms of dojutsu that Eternal Manjiku Sharingan can evolve into if the right conditions are met. Two days later, inside a cave in the land of rain. Poof! As the white smoke cleared, the tiger-striped Kasai appeared before Uchiha Shinichi. Looking at the familiar cat that was now wounded and wrapped up in bandages, Shinichi frowned, Hey, how come you got all these injuries? As soon as Shinichi asked, the cat started to cry waterfall tears and said, You wah, tiger stripes don't work every time, they were unable to fool the hound dogs. And, and. Ads by Pub Future. Shinichi sighed, All right, all right. First, stop wiping away your snot on my clothes. Second, you are pretty stupid for trying to fool a hound dog. But, but, you said that if I were to have tiger markings, I would look very intimidating. I was just joking, buddy. Getting some marking doesn't change the fact that you are still a cat. Then, what do you think I should do? Firstly, you should give me the scrolls sent by him, and as for the second, you should take a holiday to recover. As soon as Shinichi said this, the cat extended his paws and asked, Meow, if you say so, then give me two thousand ryo for the scroll. Shinichi's eyes widened as soon as the cat asked the money, Why have you raised the price? 
and how much are you charging from him? Kasai said in the most natural tone, I wanted to settle for 3,000 Rio, but he didn't agree, finally we reached an agreement at 2,000 Rio. Here I am doing the work while injured so obviously the fees will be doubled, meow. If I did not know any better, I would have certainly thought that all your injuries are your new rip-off schemes, greedy cat. As soon as Shinichi said this, all the hair on the cat stood up and sweat started to come out, ah ha ah, ah, w what are you talking about? I. I. I am surprised that you know such humor, anyway, give me the bills fast, I have to go, M, my wounds have suddenly started to ache. Shinichi narrowed his eyes as soon as he saw the sudden change in the behavior of the cat. The two thousand Rio bills he had in his hands were stopped midway. But the greedy cat realized that Shinichi seems to have noticed something and suddenly snatched the two bills, threw the scroll towards Shinichi, and disappeared into a cloud of smoke. Sigh, this foo asterisk asterisk ing greedy cat. Muttered Shinichi helplessly. Shinichi shook his head and unlocked the scroll with the specific hand seals pre-selected by them, and after he unfolded the scroll sent to him by the Kurodo, and just as he read the contents of the scroll, Shinichi can't help but frown, why in the hell is he asking for this? The scroll sent by Kurodo recorded only one sentence, go to the border of land of fire and land of rain, meet the person sent by me and take that person to the ritual ceremony hosted by Hiroko. Is he out of his mind? Why in the hell would he want such a thing, has he finally gone insane? Or does he think that the ritual ceremony will be a fireworks show that anyone can watch if they want to? No matter how much he thinks, Shinichi can't understand why Kuroto would order such a thing. This is because Akatsuki is an organization that even he as a member of the organization has to be very vigilant about and Kuroto should know this better than him, so why in the hell would he suddenly ask for such a thing? As far as Shinichi knows, Kuroto is the kind of person who has always preferred to work in secrecy, so then why this sudden outrageous move which can destroy everything they have done to infiltrate Akatsuki? Is that ritual so important? No matter what Shinichi thought about this absurd order, Shinichi still decided to put his trust in Kuroto and decided to go to the location marked in the map he received with the scroll. Shinichi would obviously measure out if the person sent by Kuroto is up to the task, and then decide if he will bring him to the ritual site, but if the person is not up to the task, then Shinichi would obviously not bring an incompetent person with him to a site that would be filled with the main Akatsuki members. Ads by Pub Future. Three days later. With intervals of travel and rest for the past three days, Shinichi finally arrived at the location marked in the map sent by Kuroto. This is the border of land of fire and land of rain, when one looks around the place is filled with lush green vegetation and dense forests along with the continuous rain from the dark rain clouds. As soon as he traveled a little more, the rain stopped and the sky cleared, Shinichi took off his rain gear which consisted of a raincoat and the bamboo hat while slandering inwardly, the land of rain is really an unsuitable place for people to live comfortably. Shinichi has always felt that the gloomy rain of the land of rain is really depressing, it is as if the country itself is crying for the people of the land of rain, and Shinichi really hates staying in the land of rain. While Shinichi was getting over his depressed mood, he suddenly looked towards the distance and noticed a figure of a person slowly walking towards him. A while later, the figure finally stood opposite Shinichi. Looking at the person standing before him, Shinichi had a thoughtful look. The other party is a girl, her age is around 15 to 16 years old from what Shinichi can judge, but what highlights about her is her unusually beautiful yet cold appearance, indifferently noble temperament, and distinguished aura. By looks, she is a fair-skinned girl with sharp eyes, long flowing black hair that reached down to her lower back, and were currently tied in a ponytail, she wore a short white kimono with long sleeve, the white kimono had black flower prints with a black obi tied over, coupled with black full-length stockings, white bandages wrapped from the ankle up to the knees, a pair of black shinobi sandals, and a long katana strapped around her waist. Shinichi was sure that he has never seen her in his life, but he didn't know why he faintly felt that the kunoichi standing in front of him was familiar, as if he had known her a long time ago. Weird, why do I feel that I know who she is when this is clearly the first time I am seeing her? Shinichi stopped thinking and questioned, so, who are you and what are you doing here? The Kunoichi replied calmly. 
I am the person you are supposed to take to the place of the ritual. Shinichi said coldly, and why should I trust you? The Kunoichi was not at all affected by Shinichi's cold tone and calmly replied, You don't need to trust me, all you need to do is to follow Kuroto-sama's instruction. The fact that the other party mentioned Hugo Kuroto's name reduced Shinichi's suspicions, and he immediately asked, And what is your name? And why does he want you to be present during the Hirokos ritual? My name. I am. I am Uchiha Tsukihai. After a pause, Tsukihai continued, As for why Kuroto-sama wanted me to observe Hiroko's ritual ceremony, it is because he is very interested in that experiment. Uchiha Tsukihai. Shinichi didn't seem to hear Tsukihai's next words as soon as he heard the name Uchiha Tsukihai, Shinichi instantly activated his Sharingan and said coldly, Care to repeat your name again? Uchiha Tsukihai. Tsukihai stated, as a matter of fact, are you sure you want to lie to me? I am also an Uchiha, and the last time I checked, I don't seem to know you, so who are you? Shinichi said coldly as he suddenly raised his hand and held Tsukihai by the neck, raising her above the ground, and spoke, I suggest that you use the next ten seconds very carefully, because if I am not satisfied with what you have to say in your defense, then you will be dead. The Kunoichi who was held by the neck did not panic as expected, nor did she speak anything in her defense, and just when Shinichi was about to put strength in his arm to break off her neck, her onyx black pupils changed into scarlet ones with three tomos spinning in them. Chapter 270 Looking at the girl's eyes that were genuine Sharingan, Shinichi's face had an unexpected surprised look. After he had joined Akatsuki, Achiha Madara once mentioned many secrets of Sharingan to him, including the possibility of transplantation of Sharingan. From a medical point of view, the transplantation of Sharingan is not an impossibility. And Hitaki Kakashi's transplanted Sharingan that he got as a gift from the dead Achiha Bito is one such example that even a fledgling medical name Noera Rin was capable of doing, even alone in the harsh battlefield without any proper tools. But successful transplantation is not the end of it, because obtaining a Sharingan might even be easier compared to being able to use that Sharingan. Without the blood of the Uchiha clan, even if someone has transplanted Sharingan, he will never be able to showcase the true potential of Sharingan, and instead of becoming a powerful boost, the Sharingan will, in fact, become a major restriction on the user which will greatly hamper the growth of the bearer and also restrict the extent of what he is truly capable of. Hataki Kakashi is again the best example. However, the Kunoichi in front of him doesn't seem to be burdened by the Sharingan in the slightest, which means that she is truly a descendant of the Uchiha clan. Understanding this, Shinichi loosened his grip but still did not release her, and asked, Okay, I agree that you are an Uchiha, but if you are one, then why have I never seen you in the clan? From your appearance and age, you are probably a little older than Uchiha Shursui, and yet I have never seen you? Moreover, you have the three Tomo Sharingan, you cannot be an unknown. Tsukihai said, since Kuroto-sama sent me here, so he obviously trusts my background, so I don't believe that there is any need for you to doubt my identity, besides, there is a rule of the organization that I believe you should have been familiar with, only the leader is allowed to know the identity and background of all the members, the members need not care, question, or try to find things unrelated to them, this is because. Because the less you know the lesser you will worry, the less you know the lesser danger you will be in, the less you know the lesser the chances of your identity being revealed, the less you know the lesser you will reveal when caught by the enemy. Shinichi repeated with Tsukihai. With this Shinichi let go of Uchiha Tsukihai, all right, I suppose that you are right. The Kunoichi Uchiha Tsukihai is obviously Hyuga Kuroto controlling the Fire Nature clone using the Tensigen Soul to send. Kuroto really couldn't let go of the opportunity to observe, Hiroko's attempt to absorb various Kekiai Jinkai, after all, this matter is related to Kuroto's big plan to achieve Kekiai Mora in the future, as such he needs as much knowledge and test results on the working of Chimera technique. Because Kuroto doesn't believe that he will get a second chance. For this reason, he took the risk of using this Fire Nature clone and try to get to the site of the ritual with the help of Shinichi. Shinichi groaned for a while, then suddenly his figure disappeared, at the very same moment, eight shuriken were shot towards Uchiha Tsukihai. Why-ish? Why-ish? 
Whyish? 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 Achi Hatsukihai instantly drew out the long katana sheathed at her waist, injected her chakra into the katana, and lightly swung it with flowing graceful movements, and instantly resheathed the katana. Ding! 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 A moment later all of the shurikens coming towards her were cut into two pieces and fell on the ground. At this time, Shinichi suddenly appeared before Tsukihai and shouted, Fire release, fireball jutsu. Achiha Tsukihai also printed the hand seals and shouted, Fire release, fireball jutsu. Boom! Two huge fireballs, each spouted out of Shinichi and Tsukihai collided together, setting off a deafening roar and a loud explosion, setting the whole forest ablaze. Amidst the smoke and dust, Shinichi's figure flashed and appeared in front of Tsukihai, his sword was in his hands, and a fight of kinjutsu began between the two Uchiha shinobi. Shinichi didn't seem to be using all his strength and Tsukihai seemed to be very calm during the entire battle. Understanding that he wouldn't be able to take advantage of using kinjutsu, Shinichi's figure again disappeared, and then several kunai tied with explosive tag cut through the cover of smoke and directly shot towards Tsukihai. Achiha Tsukihai's face remained unchanged, and the three tomos spinning in her sharingan were spinning rapidly, and instantly she took out the katana and swung it fiercely, sending waves of air pressure along the trajectory. The air pressure waves cut through the kunai, yet they did not cut the kunai, but Tsukihai seemed to be satisfied with this and instantly her figure disappeared from her position. Tuck! 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 As Tsukihai disappeared from her position, kunai tied with explosive tags were nailed at the tree trunk behind her. However, the expected explosion did not occur because without any exception all of the explosive tags were cut into two pieces. Whyish? 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 At this moment, Another onslaught of shuriken arrived towards the new position Tsukihai was at, and Tsukihai who had already sheathed the katana did not draw it out this time but put her hand inside her kimono sleeves and the next moment she threw out eight shurikens, four from each of her hand. And the next moment a clash of Uchiha shuriken jutsu started between Uchiha Shinichi and Uchiha Tsukihai. Amidst the shuriken jutsu battle, while the shurikens were flying off everywhere, hitting each other, changing their trajectories, and then again hitting the other shuriken, deflecting them, and so on. Shinichi suddenly looked at Tsukihai's eyes. The moment line of sight of the two matched, Tsukihai felt an instantaneous sluggishness but soon lost effect. At this time, the shuriken jutsu battle also came to an end, and Tsukihai had already redrawn her katana. But Shinichi did not attack anymore and instead stood in silence, then said, Well, that wasn't bad. Seeing that Tsukihai still had her katana drawn out, he felt that she might be angry for the unexpected attack, so he went on to explain, Hey, calm down all right. The members of Akatsuki are without exception all monsters, if you don't have any strength to even be able to protect yourself, even I won't be able to protect you assuming the worst case scenario, so I needed to judge whether you have what it takes to be present there. Tsukihai nodded as she resheathed the katana, indicating that she did not mind. She was obviously very clear about Shinichi's purpose for doing this, ordinary people can't get involved with Akatsuki, unless one has the appropriate strength, it is best to stay away from Akatsuki, so this assessment be Shinichi was very reasonable. Let's go, I have been away from Amage Kira for a few days already, if I stay away for too long, there are chances that they will start to get suspicious. Shinichi said while putting on the bamboo hat and his raincoat as he started walking in the direction of the site of the ritual. Tsukihai nodded without speaking any nonsense and walked next to him after putting on the bamboo hat and raincoat offered to her by Shinichi. While on their way, Shinichi questioned, he must have informed you on the basic details of Akatsuki's internal situations, right? Tsukihai nodded, yes, I have a rough understanding of the members of the Akatsuki organization. Shinichi nodded and spoke after a bit of deliberation, I can't guarantee about the others, but you don't need to worry about my partner, Biwa Juzo, 
so long as you don't offend him, he won't be nosy about your matters. But you have to pay special attention to people like Sasori, Kakuzu, and Hiroko, they are all crazier than the others, and since you are not a so-called formal member of the organization, there is a possibility that they will target you, one for your body, other for your heart, and the last for taking what you have. Hearing how Shinichi said the last sentence, Suki I couldn't help but blush and think, what are they, a bunch of perverts? Shinichi didn't seem to have noticed Sukihai's thoughts and continued, then there is also that masked man, who claims to be Uchiha Madara, he is the most dangerous in the entire organization, he is the one you will have to be most careful against. Pausing here, Shinichi said with a solemn expression, if he attacks you, then even I don't have the confidence to be able to save you. Tsukihai glanced at Shinichi and said, so that masked man who claims himself to be Uchiha Madara doesn't show up often in the organization, right? Shinichi was surprised. I am rather surprised that you know this. Did he tell you this too? Well, doesn't matter, I guess. And you are right. He does not show up in front of other members of the organization. As far as I know, except for Pain, Conan, Zetsu, and me, nobody else is aware of his existence in the Akatsuki. Tsukihai said, by the way, you can just tell them that I am your spy in Konoha if you say, then I don't think that anyone will choose to attack me, don't you think? That is a good idea, I suppose. Shinichi nodded and asked with a puzzled expression, but I am unable to figure out just why is he interested in Hiroko's ritual. With his strength, why does he care about such crappy things? Even if defected, Shinichi is still an Uchiha by genes, and obviously disdains for such pathetic means that Hiroko is using. In Shinichi's opinion, a shinobi born with Kekiai Jinkai is inherently superior to someone not born with a Kekiai Jinkai, and this bloody ritual that Hiroko is going to do disgusts Shinichi very much because Shinichi believes that no matter how much Hiroko tries, he would never be able to catch up or surpass those he is stealing these Kekiai Jinkai from. Tsukihai had nothing to explain, this matter is about perception, and she is not interested in changing Shinichi's beliefs, so she just said, Kuroto-sama has his own plans, and I am only responsible for observing and reporting to him, as for other things, neither do I care about them, nor do I need to know, and the same goes with you too. Sigh, I suppose that's true. Shinichi sighed and did not speak about it anymore. And the journey continued, soon the two entered into the territory of the Land of Rain. By now the sky was already covered with gloomy clouds, and a light drizzle started to fall, the intensity of raindrops falling kept increasing as the two went deeper into the land of rain. A few days later, both of them entered Amage Kure, and Shinichi led Sukihai to the recently built temporary base of Akatsuki. As soon as the two entered the temporary base, they met a member of the Akatsuki organization wearing a traditional Akatsuki high-neck turtle black cloak with red cloud prints. Tsukihai recognized this person, he was Shino, the mysterious doctor and the secret leader of Sky Ninjas. But Tsukihai's gaze did not stay on Shino for any longer than a second and landed on the woman walking behind Shino. The woman was very beautiful with a pair of breathtaking eyes. Seeing that woman, Tsukihai can't help but think, hmm, why do I feel familiar with this woman, have I seen her before? Tsukihai felt that she knows who this woman is, but can't remember, where has she seen this woman? And while Tsukihai was looking at the woman behind Shino, the woman standing behind Shino was also looking at Uchiha Shinichi and Tsukihai with interest, her eyes gleaming with an indescribable look. Chapter 271 At this time, Shino asked Shinichi, She is? Shinichi obviously knew that he must introduce Tsukihai to the other members of Akatsuki, otherwise it would be impossible to bring her to the ritual site. Shinichi said, She is a subordinate and informant of mine, who has been staying in Kanaha Dekur as my spy to pass on the critical information that I need. Shino nodded as he looked at the supposed spy, Achiha Tsukihai. Shinichi's explanation wasn't strange, and Shino did not doubt those words, for Akatsuki to function properly there is an obvious need for spies infiltrated in the major shinobi villages, moreover, even after defection, Shinichi has shown that he is deeply informed of the events taking place in Kanadakur and Land of Fire. This can only be achieved when he has some spies responding to him. But Shino was really surprised by the appearance of Uchiha Tsukihai. 
Although Shino has seen many beauties throughout his life as a shinobi, the Kunoichi standing behind Shinichi seemed to have a very eye-catching appearance, as such even Shino can't help but take extra glances at her. Not caring about Shino's looks, Shinichi glanced at the Kunoichi standing behind Shino and asked, And who is she? Why have I never seen her before? Shino turned his gaze towards Shinichi and said with a smile, Oh, she? She is my newly recruited assistant, to help me in the experiments and tests. As soon as he heard Shino mention the tests and experiments, Shinichi can't help but frown. A few months ago, Shinichi happened to have observed one of Shino and Hiroko's experiments, out of curiosity he decided to see just what they were doing, it was at the time when Hiroko's chimera technique was far from being perfect, and the bloody experiments were still ongoing. After he watched one of the experiments, even Shinichi who has been long accustomed to seeing life and death was grossed out and disgusted. Therefore, when Shino mentioned experiments and tests, Shinichi felt his stomach churning, he was feeling sick of remembering that sight. Controlling himself to get rid of nausea, Shinichi looked at Tsukihai and nodded. Both Shinichi and Shino don't have any deep friendship so after just a casual greeting, Shinichi did not say anything more, walked forward, directly bypassed Shino and his assistant, and moved towards the inner parts of the temporary secret base. Tsukihai followed Shinichi, and as she went past Shino's assistant the other party smiled towards her and asked politely, What is your name? Tsukihai was surprised, stopped for a moment to take a close look at the other party, and politely said, I am Uchiha Tsukihai, how about you lady? The woman licked her lips and said with a soft giggle, Uchiha-san can call me Odo Yumi. Tsukihai nodded and then walked past Yumi, following Shinichi. After both Shinichi and Tsukihai were far away from Shino and Yumi, Shinichi whispered, That person Shino is Hiroko's partner, so I think he is at least worthy of attention if you are looking for Hiroko's ritual. Tsukihai nodded and asked, Have you never seen that woman named Odo Yumi? Shinichi nodded, Yes, this is the first time I have seen her. After a pause, Shinichi asked, to be honest, I don't really care about who Shino brings as his assistant and whatnot, the only reason I even asked who she was because I felt strong malice and greed directed towards me, and she was also looking at us strangely, so I just wanted to confirm if I have ever known her or did something to offend her, but I couldn't remember her, it would be best to stay vigilant against her. Tsukihai nodded, as she understands that Uchiha Shinichi also has an extraordinary level of perception, so she attached great importance to Shinichi's judgment, but as she took a few steps she halted momentarily as she suddenly realized something. It's because she suddenly realized why she felt that the woman with the name Oda Yumi seemed inexplicably familiar to her, after all, that woman is none other than Orochimaru. And it seems that Orochimaru has replaced his body using the Kinjutsu, living corpse reincarnation. In the original story, this appearance of Orochimaru was only briefly shown during the Kanoha Crush arc, when Orochimaru fought against Sandame during the Chunin exams finals, so Kuroto couldn't recognize this appearance of Orochimaru instantly. No wonder she was looking at Shinichi with greed and malice, it appears that Orochimaru slash Yumi is still after Shinichi's Manjiku Sharingan. And now that I think about it, as soon as I introduced myself as Uchiha Tsukiha Yumi licked her lips, it appears that now I am also Orochimaru's target, doesn't matter I guess. It really didn't matter. But what surprised Tsukihai was the fact that Orochimaru actually came here, it's not hard for one to guess that the only reason Orochimaru is here the same as Kurodo, to observe Hiroko's Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual. Orochimaru may disdain Hiroko, he still maintains a degree of attention and interest towards Hiroko's chimera technique. As for how Orochimaru got Shino's help? Is there even a reason to ask this? Orochimaru and Shino have colluded with each other more than a few times even before either of them joined Akatsuki, so it isn't surprising that Shino was willing to help Orochimaru sneak here. After realizing that Oda Yumi is none other than Orochimaru, Tsukihai decided to not think about her for now, and instead observed the so-called temporary base of Akatsuki. After walking for a few minutes, Tsukihai who silently followed Shinichi arrived near the rest area and met Shinichi's partner Biwa Juzo. Even Biwa Juzo wasn't much surprised when he learned the identity of the Kunoichi following Shinichi because all the official members have some subordinates that they use for their information network. Besides, 
Juzo doesn't care about what Shinichi does so long as Shinichi does not betray Akatsuki. Time passed day by day, and soon it was the day when Hiroko will be holding his ritual ceremony. These past few days, Tsukihai spent in the Amage Cure, and she was obviously not worried about her absence being noticed in Konoha, this is because Shursui was constantly maintaining a shadow clone that acted up to cover up his absence. Day of the Ritual The location chosen by Hiroko for the ritual was not in Amage Cure or the Land of Rain where the base camp of Akatsuki organization is located but on a high mountain in a neighboring country, the Land of Earth. Following Shinichi and Biwa Juzo, Tsukihai also came to this mountain. The other duo of Akatsuki, which included the Sasori Kakuza duo, Shino Oto Yumi each chose a different route to arrive at the decided location. As everyone gathered at the mountain in the land of Earth, Tsukihai swept her gaze across everyone and thought, except for Pain, Konan, Abito, and Zetsu, all the members of Akatsuki are here, and even Abito and Zetsu may be nearby, but they are probably not showing up here. After thinking so, Tsukihai's gaze turned towards the high platform on top of the mountain. At this time, on the top of the mountain platform, a five to six dozens of large mirrors were placed, these mirrors were placed at different angles and they seemed to be gathering all the light from the sky and reflecting all the light at one point on the center of the platform. At the very center of the platform, Hiroko sat quietly. His face seemed to be calm, but everyone can notice that he was trying to suppress the madness and excitement in his heart. This was clearly evident from his trembling hands. As Tsukihai was taking a view of the ritual site, suddenly the previously clear sky darkened. Dark clouds gathered out of thin air, covering the sky, and crepuscular rays of light fell on the ritual platform, along with the light drizzle falling from the sky. The appearance of the rain clouds was so abrupt that Tsukihai can't help but think of only one possibility that might be a possible cause, is this rain tiger at will technique. Sure enough, a few minutes after the rain started, a person with orange hair, with so many black piercings across his nose and ears, wearing the traditional Akatsuki organization cloak, and an Amagekure forehead protector with a long horizontal scratch descended down to the top of the platform. Tendo Pain Following him was a kunoichi with short straight blue hair tied in a small bun, with a liberated piercing, an origami flower over the bun, wearing the traditional Akatsuki cloak, and a pair of paper wings behind her back. Conan! Achiha Tsukihai stared at the ripple pattern's eyes in the eye sockets of Tendo Pain and thought, so that's Rinnegan? The strongest of the three great dojutsu. While Tsukihai was looking at Pain and Conan, Pain's indifferent gaze swept over all the shinobi gathered at the platform, stayed on Tsukihai for a moment then turned towards Hiroko who sat at the center of the platform and said, there is no one other than Akatsuki members present here, you can start any time you are ready. Hiroko nodded, and immediately looked up at the sky, he was waiting for something, and just as Pain deactivated Rain Tiger at Will Technique, the sky again became clear. While Hiroko started the final preparation, Tsukihai thought, even Pain and Conan are here? Does Akatsuki attaches so much importance to Hiroko's Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual? With doubts in her heart, Tsukihai swept her gaze to other places, trying to find Abito and Zetsu's figure, and at this moment her gaze met with Odo Yumi's gaze. Chapter 272 The two guys, pretending to be girls, looked at each other, both had an awkward expression for a while, then both of them turned away without showing any unnatural trace. Kuroto cursed, TCH, Orochimaru really is so courageous. Is he really not afraid to be seen through by Akatsuki? Or does he think that he won't die no matter what happens? Orochimaru smirked, tisk tisk, another Uchiha? If I can't take over Uchiha Shinichi's body, then this Uchiha Tsukihai is also not a bad option provided she is good enough. Both of them have momentary thoughts which were soon put away as their attention turned towards the center of the platform where Hiroko stood. On a high cliff covered with some vegetation. The masked man sat on the edge of the cliff, with one of his legs hanging. Zetsu stood on the side, most of them said that they don't care about Hiroko's ritual, but now that the ritual is taking place, all of them are present here, most of all I am surprised that Uchiha Shinichi is also present here. The masked man said, if Hiroko's ritual really succeeds, it will probably change the pattern of the shinobi world, no one can remain indifferent, and completely ignore such a thing. 
Yes. Zetsu nodded, even the self-proclaimed god, Negato is also here in person. The masked man glanced in the distance, and said, if not for the threat of Amitsukami, I would not have encouraged Nagato to support Hiroko's experiments. Zetsu turned to look at the masked man and asked, Are you worried that Hiroko might get out of hands? The masked man was silent for a while, then said, If Hiroko truly manages to successfully absorb all the five Kekiai Jinkai that he has selected, then no one would be able to predict how strong will he become. Zetsu said, With the presence of Nagato, we don't really need to worry, regardless of how strong Hiroko may become, in the end, he will remain a pawn. The masked man did not reply but turned to look at the two Kunoichi, one standing next to Uchiha Shinichi and the other next to Shino, and asked, Have you checked the identities of those two? The woman next to Uchiha Shinichi is named Uchiha Tsukihai. According to Shinichi, she is his spy who has been lurking in Kanagakur. While the woman next to Shino is called Odo Yumi, a newly recruited assistant under him, but I was unable to find out if their identities are truly what they claim. Uchiha Tsukihai. With a frown, the masked man muttered with a thoughtful expression, Was there someone with this name in the Uchiha clan? The masked man is different from Shinichi. At the time of his death, he was a chunin similar to Hugo Kuroto, and his status in the Uchiha clan was also very low, similar to Hugo Kuroto. Therefore, he was oblivious to many of the internal matters of the Uchiha clan, so he can't really figure out who Uchiha Tsukihai was? As such the masked man has some doubts about Uchiha Tsukihai. He cannot, like Uchiha Shinichi, assert that there is no Uchiha Tsukihai within the Uchiha clan. After all, it is very common for many clans to keep the existence of certain individuals a secret, keep them hidden in the dark since birth or early childhood, and train them secretly back to the platform. Hiroko showed a twisted expression on his face while looking at the sky, his expression was a mix of expectation, joy, madness, anxiety, nervousness, and so on. At this time, the sun hanging high in the sky was obscured by another celestial body, and the original bright and clear sky dimmed as if it was the time of dusk. While everyone was looking at the changes brought by the solar eclipse, some brilliant spots of light flashed across the dark sky. Hiroko exclaimed in excitement, Finally, it's about time. As soon as the green aurora light lashed across the sky, Hiroko started printing the hand seals and then pressed his palm on the ground. Boom, shake, shake. Instantly, five cross-shaped structures rose up from the five vertices of the five-pointed star that lied on the Pentagon platform. On each metal cross, a shinobi in a half-dead state was crucified. These five are the unlucky shinobi targeted by Hiroko? Thought Tsukihai as she swept her gaze across the five people, finally, her gaze landed on Uchiha Hiragi, and she sighed softly. Unlike Uchiha Tsukihai, who had a somewhat complicated look, Yumi on the other hand had a look full of expectations. At this time, the intensity and brightness of aurora lights became stronger and stronger, and they seemed to represent a green curtain of light. This green curtain of light covered the entire sky, intertwined across the edges, giving the sky a dreamy and awe-inspiring look. As the brightness and intensity of the curtain grew, sparkling particles and rays of light sprinkled from the sky and fell on the five-pointed star platform on top of the mountain. The huge mirrors, each with a height of more than ten meters, concentrated the rays of green aurora lights in one direction, which illuminated Hiroko standing at the center of the five-pointed star formation. The moment aurora light gathered at Hiroko, everyone present at the site could clearly feel an intensive rise in Hiroko's chakra reaction. Even both Uchiha Tsukihai and Shinichi had long since activated their Sharingan, trying to capture all the changes taking place in Hiroko's body. Sasori, who was no longer hiding in his Hiroko puppet, also had a solemn look. Kakuzu took a step back, his instincts were telling him to take a defensive posture because something was coming. Shinos was intently looking at everything, and even Yumi had a look mixed with traces of anticipation as well as some unknown fear. Tendo Pain was still had his indifferent look, but Conan had a frowned expression. The intensity and brightness of the green aurora lights became more and more dazzling to the extent that they seemed to carry life within them and would burn anything they touch. The lights seemed to be alive, jumping, 
flashing, and moving around Hiroko's body, the glittering green particles were falling from the sky like a steady and slow rain. Achiha Tsukihai muttered, such strong chakra reaction, and such a beautiful sight? If not for what was about to happen soon, this sight was akin to a fairy tale. Tsukihai was really surprised, with the help of celestial phenomenon, the intensity of chakra fluctuations coming from Hiroko has reached a terrifying point. And what surprised her more was the fact that Hiroko's small body was able to withstand such a terrifying chakra pressure without showing any signs of pain. While Tsukihai was surprised, Hiroko did not stop and began to print the hand seals to start the next phase of his Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual. Chapter 273 While Tsukihai was surprised, Hiroko did not stop and began to print the hand seals. Finally completing the hand seals, Hiroko shouted, Chimera Technique! With the crazy shout of Hiroko, the indigo-colored semi-solid glue substance gushed out of the pentagram-shaped surface and rushed to swallow the five half-dead crucified ninjas. This gluey substance was like an extension of Hiroko's body, it spread all over the five-pointed star formation and seemed to be acting as per Hiroko's orders swallowing the five ninjas that were crucified on the torture cross. Ah! At the moment when the gluey substance started swallowing the five ninjas with different Kekiai Jinkai, these ninjas who were half-dead and unconscious let out a terrible cry of pain that seemed to shake their soul. They put up an instinctive struggle but all they got was despair. Their bodies also turned indigo-colored and soon began to melt bit by bit, their pupils disappeared, and only white scara could be seen in their eyes, foam overflowing from their mouths, a lifeless look on their faces. Hiroko opened both his arms and laughed frantically, cry all you want, feel the despair in your heart, then be swallowed by me to become a truly great being, a perfect shinobi. Looking at Hiroko, whose current state was nothing different from a monster, and the five shinobi melting and slowly integrating into Hiroko, Achiha Tsukihai had a serious look on her face and muttered, this approach is too, too forced. After the initial shock, there was only thought left in Tsukihai's mind. In her view, the fusion method that Hiroko is using is really rough, and scrupulous, and forced. Is he not afraid of the hidden dangers he will have to face in the future by using such a forceful method? No, rather than worrying about the future what he should think about is whether he will be able to survive the complete fusion, the matter of the future comes afterward, thought Tsukihai with a doubtful expression. Tsukihai believes that Hiroko is not an idiot, at least he doesn't look like one, after all, he managed to develop the chimera technique, but the approach he is using right now is no different from suicide, which is utterly stupid. As such aside from shock, there are also some expectations to see if Hiroko has some follow-up plans to ensure his success. With the bodies of the five shinobi completely melted, their chakra was steadily absorbed by the gluey substance. Tsukihai thought, how will he deal with the souls of those five shinobi? The same thought lingered in the minds of Tendo Pain, Odoyumi aka Orochimaru, Sasori, and Kakuzu. Ninjindo Pain of the Pain Rakuto grants the user the ability to forcefully read the minds of any target by extracting their soul. As such, it wouldn't be wrong to say that Pain is one of the few people familiar souls. Even Orochimaru who has developed Fushir Tensei and is probably working on Edo Tensei also has a very high degree of understanding of souls. Then there is Sasori, who has recently turned himself into a puppet, which is impossible to do without having some knowledge of souls, so he has also touched the realm of souls. And finally, there is Kakuzu, because of his secret technique Earth Grudge Fear, every time he steals others' hearts, he has to have some way to reduce the influence of their souls on the chakra nature, as such, Kakuzu must also have some degree of understanding of soul. Shino must also have some understanding of the souls because he is working on making rabi. As for Conan and Shinichi, their understanding of souls is worse compared to the rest, but neither of the two was ignorant. And Conan being a censor class, and Shinichi with the help of his Manjiku Sharingan was able to notice that the chakra absorbed by the gluey substance was not ordinary. As such everyone had a frown and thought the same thing, is he directly going to absorb that chakra? Just as various speculations appeared in the minds of everyone present, Hiroko directly controlled the gluey substance and sucked in the five chakra groups. He is really taking the reckless approach. Tsukihai was shocked, 
She always thought that each generation of Rakage is the second most reckless shinobi in this world, but it appears that even Hiroko is not far behind. Unlike Tsukihai's shocked expression, the others did not show many emotions, Oroyumi even smirked. Nobody here seemed to understand the true danger of completely absorbing other people's souls, even if they can see the essence of chakra that Hiroko was absorbing. Tsukihai felt a bit of pity for Hiroko. In her view, although, Hiroko might succeed even with his reckless approach, and there is even hope for him to become incredibly strong but he is also giving birth to hidden dangers that will show up sooner or later. He does not have the Rinnegan, so it is impossible for him to absorb souls in a true sense, as such he will definitely suffer. Orochimaru is the best example, the souls absorbed by Orochimaru using Fushir Tensei did not disappear, instead, they were sleeping like a cocoon in the depths of Orochimaru's soul, so not only is there a hidden danger of others' soul taking over but even the shape and signature of one's own soul will change, which is exactly what happened with Orochimaru, making him especially vulnerable to Jinjutsu. It is not guaranteed that the same will happen with Hiroko courtesy to the Sharingan but he won't be out of complete danger. And as Tsukihai expected, the negative effects of absorbing five souls at once immediately became apparent. Ah! His maniacal laughter ceased, and he clutched his head with both of his hands, hissing and suffering from severe pain, looking from his distorted expression it seemed as if something scary was raging in his mind. At the same time, Hiroko's body also started to fall apart, pieces of his hands and legs separated, distorted. Tissues started to fall off of his body. But the body parts that fell off were all caught by the gluey substance and put back little by little, repairing his body, stopping him from dying. Now the success or failure of the Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual became a battle of collapse and repair. Hiroko was obviously not able to withstand both physical pain and pain coming from deep in his soul, as such his current appearance was no longer the same, and was changed into a blob of flesh, bones, organs, vessels, and fluids, but because of the existence of the gluey leech, no matter how much his body collapsed or suffered it was constantly reassembled back. But the pain is also insufferable, and definitely not something that people can bear. Except for Conan who had her cold expression back, and Shinichi who had a look of disgust, everyone else's faces had a clear look of shock, even Tendo Pain's indifferent expression had slight waves. At this time, the flashing curtain of green aurora in the sky started to dim. As the curtain of aurora started to dim, the light rays and light particles falling from the sky also started to dim. It was clear that the aurora was about to disappear, and as such everyone was clear, if the ritual is not completed before the disappearance of the aurora, then this Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual will be a failure. And seeing that the aurora was about to disappear, everyone could only think that Hiroko would fail, but then something shocking happened. At the moment just before the disappearance of the aurora, Hiroko's shouts abruptly stopped. The blob of flesh contracted into a spherical core. Immediately afterward, the gluelichi substance spread on the floor began to merge into the spherical core which was Hiroko's body. As the gluey substance merged with Hiroko's body, the violent chakra reaction also gradually stabilized. Then with an exploding sound, the core expanded and turned into Hiroko. He was able to survive? Tsukihai was stunned, then thought, no, Hiroko is just an ordinary shinobi with no special traits, how could he survive the collapse and disintegration of his body? He must have used some other technique, besides the chimera technique. A technique which can repair his body and increase its strength to be able to bear the pressure of chimera technique. After completing the ritual, Hiroko stood up on the ritual platform, he did not have any clothes on his body at this moment so he stood naked, but he was not bothered in the slightest, and his eyes fell on Uchiha Tsukihai and Odo Yumi. Chapter 274 Standing at the center of the five-pointed star formation, Hiroko breathed heavily, his chest undulating up and down, and steam coming out from his body. Tsukihai observed intently and noticed that Hiroko's figure seemed much stronger than before. He was no longer short, but was back to his normal body size, with a slender and fit body, perfect for a rejuvenated young man. From just one glance, people could see that his body was brimming with power. 
Aside from the chiseled muscles that of a shinobi, his skin also seemed unnaturally tender and delicate, so much so that his skin did not have the rosy look that a human has, but rather it was as white as chalk and pale as that of a corpse, like that of a vampire. Huff, huff. After catching his breath, Hiroko picked up the simple piece of white lab gown and put it on. Although he looked physically exhausted, the expression on his face said the opposite, as it had clear signs of euphoria, ecstasy, intoxication, bliss, and joy. All the thoughts that he has kept hidden within his heart for the past two decades were now out in the open, he no longer cared about maintaining his humble attitude, there was no false expression on his face, at this moment he was his truest self. Under Hiroko's aggressive gaze, Tsukihai's heart thumped for a moment. Undoubtedly, Hiroko, who has successfully completed the Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual, now eagerly wants to test his own strength. And among the people present here at the moment, most of them are official members of Akatsuki, with the only exception being Uchiha Tsukihai and Oto Yumi. And Hiroko would obviously not attack the other members of Akatsuki in the presence of Tendo Pain, so Uchiha Tsukihai and Oto Yumi became the natural target for him to test out his newly achieved strength. And naturally, Tsukihai wasn't the only one who realized Hiroko's thought. The members of Akatsuki who were watching the ritual consciously jumped backward, leaving only four people on the site, that being Hiroko, Uchiha Tsukihai, Oto Yumi, and Uchiha Shinichi who was a little hesitant to leave Tsukihai behind. Unlike Shino, who had a natural smile on his face, and did not care about the safety of Oto Yumi at all, Shinichi glanced at Tsukihai with a worried expression. Tsukihai smiled gently and bowed towards Shinichi, Do not worry Shinichi-sama, I shall not disappoint you. Shinichi questioned, Are you sure? You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Tsukihai shook her head and said, I am. If I back away here then that would be a stain on the reputation of Shinichi-sama, and I would rather die than let that happen. Shinichi sighed and said, Very well, but know this, I will take action if I deem necessary, and you are not allowed to get killed or injured here. Leading this sentence, Shinichi also jumped out of the platform, and similar to other members of Akatsuki, he paid close attention to the three individuals. It wasn't just Hiroko who was eager to test out his newly gained strength, but even the other members of Akatsuki were very interested to know just how strong Hiroko has become after successfully completing the Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual. Tsukihai was surprisingly calm at this moment, when she glanced at Yumi, she wasn't surprised to find that Yumi was the same as her, there was no trace of fear in either one's eyes. Ha 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 ha, Hiroko laughed wildly seeing the calmness of the two. Tsukihai's Sharingan was already activated and her hand was on the hilt of her katana, ready to be drawn out at any moment. Yumi tilted her neck to the side, contrary to her leisure expression she also seemed fully ready for the upcoming battle, as her hands were inside the kimono sleeves she was wearing. Hiroko suddenly stopped laughing, and said, At this time, in the face of the person standing before you, both of you should not have shown any other emotion aside fear, if you did, then maybe things would have turned out much better for both of you. Tsukihai did not reply, but slandered Hiroko in her heart, Hiroko, you are being too arrogant for your own good. Yumi on the other hand giggled, and said in a sultry tone, In that case why don't Hiroko-sama show us ladies what true fear is? I believe it would be worth an experience. Tsukihai immediately blushed, just what is Orochimaru even saying? Both Yumi and Hiroko glared at each other, one with a fierce expression and the other with a mocking one. Finally, Hiroko raised his hand to print the hand seals. Swift release, shadowless flight. Whoosh! Instantly Hiroko disappeared from his position. So fast? Tsukihai exclaimed inwardly, and her body instinctively drew out the katana strapped at her waist. Ding! Steel release, impervious armor. She barely held the flat part of the katana in front of her to block the straight punch coming from Hiroko's black fist. At the moment when Hiroko's punch collided with the katana, a loud metal collision sound rang throughout the mountain. Tsukihai used her other hand to slash at the opponent with a kunai, but Hiroko was no longer in front of her. Steel release. Swift release. These two words immediately flashed in Tsukihai's mind, 
and she was surprised that Hiroko was able to switch between two Kekiai Jinkai seamlessly after just having completed the ritual. Ding! Ding! While Tsukihai started analyzing, another series of metal collision sound rang out from the other side of the battleground. Because Hiroko possesses two extremely strong Kekiai Jinkai that enhance his Taijutsu abilities, so even Yumi, secretly Orochimaru, one of the strongest shinobi alive was also suppressed, it's also because Orochimaru did not intend to reveal all his abilities here, by Hiroko for a moment. It's just that Hiroko is not as experienced as Yumi, as such even though Hiroko managed to suppress Yumi, he was unable to inflict any serious damage. Heh, Tsukihai grinned and ran forward. With the addition of Tsukihai, the battle turned from 1 versus 1, between Hiroko and Yumi, to 2 versus 1, with Tsukihai and Yumi on one side and Hiroko on the other. Tsukihai and Yumi worked in a surprising tacit understanding and were easily able to not only fight back on the even grounds but even suppressed Hiroko from time to time in the physical warfare, which included Taijutsu, Kinjutsu, Shurikenjutsu, Bokujutsu, etc. Hiroko's lack of combat experience and lack of combat awareness compared to Tsukihai and Yumi was clearly apparent in this battle. And this is also a normal thing, Hiroko has been focusing his attention on the research and development of the Chimera technique, as such he lacks experience compared to the Sensei Disciple pair who have experienced so many battles. Moreover, Hiroko has just obtained new forms of power, so in terms of application, he obviously lacks the necessary familiarity, as such there are obvious shortcomings. And neither of the two Kunoichi he is fighting against is ordinary, with one of them being an inflamed Sanin, and the other one having the only Eternal Manjiku Sharingan currently existing in the Shinobi world, so it is obvious that he is in a slight disadvantage. After all, unless it is too big of a difference in strength, experience also plays a very important role in a battle. And combat experience is not something one can gain in just one or two days or steal from others, it is pure hard work that requires one to pour sweat and blood, and gained by overcoming tests and trials of countless life and death battles. But Kuroto knows that so long as strength is high, overcoming the lack of experience is not that much of a problem. On a high cliff covered with vegetation, Zetsu said mockingly, he can't even deal with just two subordinates of the official members of the organization? It seems that all this Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual was just a waste of time. However, the masked man who has been observing everything up to now stood up and said with a serious tone, No. Although Hiroko's performance is not as good as my initial expectations, that is more of a lack of time he has had with his new powers, what I am more surprised about is the strength displayed by the two women, neither of them can be considered ordinary or weak. Among the other spectators watching the battle, Sasori looked at Shino and said with a ridicule expression, Your assistant seems much better than you. Shino just shrugged helplessly, he didn't really care about Sasori's opinions. Biwa Juzo on the other side said to Shinichi, the Uchiha Shinobi are really extremely strong in terms of physical warfare, and looking at her movements, with precise actions, simple, neat, and flawless form, she seems to be a better Kenjutsu master than even Yushinichi, and as a Kenjutsu master I have to admire her. Shinichi nodded with a solemn look, I knew for a fact that she was strong, but I am rather surprised that she has grown up to this extent since the last time I saw her, it appears that I can't laze around or I will be overtaken by her. Back to the battle. Hiroko's anger started to rise as he was gradually being overwhelmed by the two women. Suddenly he leaped back, quickly printed the hand seals, and shouted, Why don't you two just die already? Storm release, thunder cloud inner wave. Instantly a thick ring of black thunderclouds and electricity appeared around Hiroko. Tsukihai instantly put back the katana in the sheath and printed the hand seals, fire release, fireball technique. Yumi was able to realize the jutsu that Tsukihai was using and also completed the hand seals at almost the same instant, earth release, earth flow river. Chapter 275 the timing of Yumi's earth jutsu was impeccable and it trapped Hiroko in a muddy river just an instant before Tsukihai's fire jutsu was about to hit him. Hiroko chuckled in disdain at the pathetic attempt of the two ladies, he immediately stretched out his hand towards the huge fireball coming towards him. Dark release, inhaling maw. 
Following Hiroko's action, the huge fireball coming towards him was immediately sucked into his hand in a spiraling whirl. Hiroko did exactly the same with the earth flow river below his feet and absorbed the chakra. With the suction of chakra, the earth flow river lost its effects, making Hiroko free. After regaining his movement, Hiroko said with a chuckle, Both of you have a very delicious chakra. Tsukihai thought to herself, he really can freely use all the Kekiai Jinkai he has absorbed, and Dark Release make most of the ordinary ninjutsu useless against him, killing him without the use of Susanoo would be very difficult, unfortunately, I can't reveal my Susanoo here, else it would put both this clone and Shinichi in a danger. Yumi's face also had a thoughtful look. Yumi, or Orochimaru, is a type of shinobi who is an expert in almost all forms of combat, be that taijutsu or kenjutsu, ninjutsu or fuinjutsu, kenjutsu or juinjutsu, so although her combat effectiveness is not that restricted, she still doesn't have a very good way of dealing with Hiroko without giving off her true identity, and she would obviously not do something foolish like revealing her true identity in front of entire Akatsuki. As such the methods she can use to deal with Hiroko are quite limited. Moreover, Hiroko is almost immune to most of the ninjutsu as well as physical warfare type attacks courtesy to the five Kekiai Jinkai he has selected, as such even with her experience, Yumi doesn't have a very good way to fight Hiroko. Thinking so, Yumi turned to look at Uchiha Tsukihai, she has been paying close attention to Tsukihai throughout the battle, and she was highly surprised to find that similar to her, Tsukihai has also been calm and collected from beginning to end, which is unexpected according to her. In Yumi's opinion, she, a Sanin, with experience of thousands of battles, deep knowledge of many kenjutsu, along with various means to be able to make it out alive even in the worst-case scenario is calm in the face of a monster like Hiroko is understandable. But Tsukihai, a 17 or 18 year old Kunoichi with just three Tomo Sharingan, facing a monster like Hiroko, who can literally use five different types of Kekiai Jinkai to deal with all kinds of situations, is still calm and not afraid is not a simple matter. Ads by Pub Future Even Yumi, Orochimaru, the temporary teammate of Tsukihai, can't help but respect such mental fortitude, but sigh at the same time, the Uchiha clan's arrogance doesn't put anyone in their eyes. Crackling. Z z z z z z z z z. At this moment, Hiroko waved his hand. The storm clouds that were covered the top of the mountain suddenly sent outbursts of electric discharge. As lightning started to rage the mountain, Hiroko, who was shrouded in lightning, spoke. That's the end of the warm up. Now let's get serious and take this fight up a notch. And immediately Hiroko disappeared from his position. With the movement of Hiroko, the lightning also raged all over the platform, and for a moment it seemed as if the entire ritual platform became a pool of dazzling blue lightning. Wherever it fell, the rock pieces vaporized. Tsukihai with her Sharingan noticed Hiroko's running trajectory, and without any hesitation, she drew out her katana and threw it along the predicted trajectory. Why-ish? The katana flew out and went towards Hiroko, although Hiroko managed to avoid the katana, all the lightning covering him hit the katana's metallic blade, which is a conductor. Tsukihai did not waste that opportunity and immediately shot out several kunai. The ends of kunai were tied with thin metal wire, and with the assistance of her Sharingan, Tsukihai shot the kunai in such a direction, which greatly limited Hiroko's movements because of the metal wire. But Tsukihai did not stop there and subsequently shot kunai tied with large strings of explosive tags, the targets were Hiroko's eyes, throat, both axilla, then, ribs, Achilles heel of the body. All the kunai were shot in the blink of an eye, and with such precise actions that even the Akatsuki members were all amazed. Even Hiroko was caught off guard for a moment as his body was entangled by the metal wires. Just when Hiroko was about to get rid of the metal wires that restricted his movements, he suddenly noticed the next set of kunai tied with a series of explosive tags also wrapping around him and from the sound made by explosive tags, they were about to explode any movement. Steel Release, Impervious Armor Ads by Pub Future With Hiroko's angry shout, his body hardened and darkened. Break! Break! With his solidified body, Hiroko easily broke free of the metal wires that bound him. But before he can celebrate, two rubbery pale white arms suddenly stretched out of nowhere and bound Hiroko. 
and because the two arms were rubbery, which means they could stretch and shrink like rubber, so even if Hiroko tried to break free of them, he was unable to. Boom! 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 At this time, the explosive tags also exploded, which led to a series of violent explosions that shook the entire mountain, covering the entire platform in fire dust and smoke. Yumi immediately retracted her arms, then printed the hand seals to cast a simple wind-style jutsu to blow away the cover of dust and smoke. And just as the cover of dust and smoke cleared, the figure of Hiroko, who was the center of the explosion, was immediately revealed. From the first look, Hiroko doesn't seem to have suffered any injury. But Hiroko's face was gloomy, he stood at his position for a few seconds while Tsukihai and Yumi took deep breaths. The atmosphere was extremely quiet, but both the Kunoichi knew that this was just a silence before the storm. And as the drop of sweat that slid down her face dropped on the floor, Hiroko's figure disappeared and instantly appeared in front of Yumi. Yumi, who was already prepared for the coming attack, was about to leap back, but just for an instant before she could do so, the eyes of Yumi and Hiroko crossed, and immediately Yumi stopped dead in her position, her dead bent down as if she was unconscious. Jinjutsu Tsukihai was startled, and only then did she notice the scarlet pupils with three black tomos spinning in Shinichi's eyes. Yumi's, Orochimaru's, biggest weakness is Jinjutsu, even in the original story, Orochimaru suffered because of the Sharingan's Jinjutsu, but at that time his opponent was Uchiha Itachi, who had Manjiku Sharingan. And who Uchiha Itachi is must not be forgotten. So even if Orochimaru was subdued by Itachi, it cannot be said that Orochimaru's Jinjutsu resistance is so poor that he would be affected so easily. And the fact that the Jinjutsu cast by Hiroko can affect Orochimaru must mean that the pair of Sharingan in his eye sockets is unusually strong, although not to the level of Manjiku Sharingan, the ocular power is still very high. Chapter 276 Is it possible that the Sharingan in his eye sockets has evolved to Manjiku Sharingan? Tsukihai temporarily had this thought, and her attention was again on the pattern in Hiroko's eyes. However, this thought was soon dispelled as the pattern of Sharingan in Hiroko's eyes was that of a simple Sharingan, that is the three tomo state. Tsukihai thought, no, he does not have the Manjiku Sharingan. With Hiroko's character, if he had Manjiku Sharingan, he would have definitely shown it out in the open without any concealment by now. Hiroko wouldn't be as cautious as Tsukihai. As such, Tsukihai can conclude without a doubt that Hiroko does not have the Manjiku Sharingan. But it's surprising that even with just a base Sharingan Hiroko is able to put Orochimaru in Jinjutsu. This was surprising, after all, who is Yumi? A Sanin. Even if Jinjutsu is her weakness, it wouldn't be to the point that amateurs such as Hiroko, who have just gotten a pair of Sharingan will be able to affect. Yet it's happening here. How come his visual prowess is so high? Doubts were flooding Tsukihai's mind. Despite the many doubts in her heart, Tsukihai knew that now was not the time to delve into them, so putting away her thoughts, she brought out shuriken from her sleeves and threw them towards Hiroko. Why-ish? 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 Accompanied by the sharp sound of cutting through the wind, each spinning shuriken gleaming with cold light went towards Hiroko at different speeds and angles. Hiroko with his Sharingan was obviously able to see the trajectories of the incoming shuriken. The corners of his lips arched, he did not even feel the need to rely on swift release, his body swayed from one position to another, and he managed to dodge each of the shuriken with minimal movements. Is that the best you can do? Hiroko said in a mocking tone. Ding! Ding! But before he can be too happy, Hiroko heard the sound of a metal collision coming from behind him. The spectators were able to see that the shuriken thrown by Uchiha Tsukihai collided with each other after they went past Hiroko. After multiple collisions, from one shuriken to another, the trajectories of the shurikens changed, two shurikens shot backward, while a third one accelerated in the direction of Yumi, who was under the effect of Jinjutsu. As soon as he realized that something was wrong, Hiroko turned his head and noticed the two shuriken coming towards him. 
but the kinetic energy of the two shuriken coming towards him was obviously decreased because of the multiple collision, as such speed was slower and because Hiroko could use steel release, he did not panic, and as soon as his arms darkened, he immediately raised his hands and caught the two shuriken between his finger. After successfully catching the two shurikens, Hiroko turned and shot both of them towards Tsukihai, how about you try to dodge these? Tsukihai smiled and threw two more shuriken. One of the shurikens thrown by Tsukihai collided with one of the incoming shurikens thrown by Hiroko. The other shuriken thrown by Tsukihai missed the shuriken thrown by Hiroko by an inch and went towards Hiroko, while the shuriken thrown by Hiroko was coming towards Tsukihai. Hiroko chuckled and raised his arm to catch the incoming shuriken. While Tsukihai seemed to have a look of horror, as it was already too late to block the incoming shuriken. Hiroko knew that his attack succeeded, and he was feeling excited. But just as the shuriken thrown by Hiroko touched Tsukihai, Tsukihai's body exploded into a cloud of white smoke, while the shuriken that was coming towards Hiroko turned into Tsukihai. Hiroko's face changed immediately, he instantly activated the swift release and was about to flicker away, when suddenly the ground under Hiroko's feet turned into a swamp, effectively restricting his movements. At the same time, a pair of bandages trapped Hiroko's hand, restricting his hand movements. Hiroko struggled to break free, and he actually did, but the moment he broke free of the bandages was the exact moment when Tsukihai pierced her kunai in the chest of Hiroko. The kunai plunged into Hiroko's chest, and cut effectively cut through the muscles but just at the moment when it was about to puncture the heart, a loud metal clashing sound echoed. Undoubtedly Hiroko managed to use steel release to surround his heart in a protective covering and instantly kicked the bitch in the stomach sending her flying away. B-O-M-M-M-M-M. The moment Hiroko kicked the bitch in the stomach, her body exploded creating another loud explosion that shook the mountain. Cough! Cough! Soon the dust and smoke cleared to reveal a damaged up mountain top, Hiroko's figure stood in the middle with a pretty beat up state, blood dripping from the corners of his mouth, and clothes burned to cinders. Cough! Cough! Next, Yumi's figure was revealed, with a line of blood dripping along her thighs from the point where a shuriken pierced her. But there was no figure of Tsukihai. Just when everyone wondered where she is, the katana lying on the ground turned into Tsukihai. Wiping away the blood from the corners of his mouth, Hiroko observed everything. Looking at the wound on Yumi's thighs, and all the things that happened in a few last seconds, Hiroko understood what happened. Realizing that he was played by Uchiha Tsukihai, Hiroko roared in anger, Damn it, you, you. A very similar feeling sprouted in the heart of Yumi, Orochimaru. The fact that she was put in a jinjutsu by someone like Hiroko was unacceptable and touching the wound on her thigh, looking at the red blood Yumi felt more terrible. What's more unacceptable was for her, a Sanin to be saved a mere young Kunoichi, even if she is from the Uchiha clan. A sense of shame that was never felt before grew in her heart. Sharingan was what Yumi muttered as she looked at Hiroko's eyes and then at Tsukihai's eyes, and this is the moment when the obsession gained to Sharingan took birth. All right, that's enough already. Just as Hiroko was about to continue his attack, Tendo Pain's indifferent voice came. Hiroko was not done, how can he not return the shame he suffered by being played around by Uchiha Tsukihai, and he retorted to Pain's command, I will finish them soon enough. Tendo Pain glared at Hiroko, and his tone became colder, don't make me repeat myself, I have seen your performance more than enough, there is no need to continue anymore, it is only wasting everyone's time. To be honest, Pain was a little disappointed with the performance shown by Hiroko, even after successfully completing the ritual. Pain can see that Hiroko's strength has greatly improved, but the fact that Hiroko couldn't even hold his own against two young Kunoichi greatly disappointed him. Sasori added with a lightly mocking tone, it appears that Pain expected too much from you. The other members of Akatsuki either sneered, showed disdain, or were disappointed. Although the performance of the two Kunoichi was indeed a bit unexpected, Hiroko was still too pathetic in their opinion. Hiroko wanted to retort, but understanding that what Payne said was indeed true, he really was unable to suppress both of them, so he didn't know what to say anymore. Seeing the disdain and contempt directed towards him, Hiroko felt unprecedentedly aggrieved. Chapter 277, 
different from a grieved Hiroko who stood at the center of the platform. Tsukihai had a thoughtful expression as she was wondering the cause of the increase in visual prowess of the Sharingan that Hiroko has in his eye sockets. Because the plan she is working on is based on Hiroko's chimera technique, therefore, Tsukihai was able to conduct an in-depth analysis of the Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual that took place here not long ago. In Tsukihai's opinion, if done correctly and perfectly, chimera technique is an incredibly wonderful technique that is capable of turning coal into a diamond. But the chimera technique used by Hiroko was imperfect, at least, from her standards. First and foremost, Hiroko did not select Kekiai Jinkai based on their nature chakra elements, he selected Kekiai Jinkai that he believed were most useful to make a perfect ninja. But even if we analyze the Kekiai Jinkai he selected, there is storm release with lightning and water chakra nature, steel release with earth release chakra, swift release with wind chakra nature, and Uchiha clan with fire chakra nature. Because of his narrow vision, Hiroko did not even consider the five basic chakra nature at the time of detailing and laying out the ritual, much less the yin and yang chakra nature. Yin and yang are the most critical chakra nature to reach perfect fusion. Because of his ignorance, Hiroko ignored what's more important, and no matter how much he trains or masters the Kekiai Jinkai, Hiroko would never be able to reach the level of Kekiai Mora. But at the same time, Hiroko can't help but think of a good coincidence. And the five people that Hiroko obtained as targets, Achiha Hiragi also had the Sharingan, as such Hiroko managed to obtain In Chakra and the Swift Release user happened to have a part Izumaki descent, so Hiroko managed to obtain some amount of Yang Chakra, as such overall, Hiroko did get obtain the all seven chakra nature, but because of the difference in their strength and potency, a perfect balance has not been achieved. But at the same time, because there are all the chakra natures, so they have complemented each other, which not only made it possible for Hiroko to survive and but also improve the five Kekiai Jinkai he has, and for the very same reason, the visual prowess of the Sharingan he obtained increased. Tsukihai thought, will the Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual conducted by Hiroko be considered a success or a failure? From Tsukihai's standards, this ritual is indeed a failure, yet Hiroko managed to survive, at the same time managed to absorb the five Kekiai Jinkai. Whatever may be the reason for the imperfectness, from the very beginning, Hiroko's goal was to absorb the five Kekiai Jinkai which he managed to complete, as such the ritual was indeed be considered a success from Hiroko's standards. After again sorting out her thought, Tsukihai took one last look at Hiroko and Yumi, then left the platform. After the fight just now, Tsukihai understands that Hiroko's base strength has become very strong, once Hiroko completes the adaption period, masters the use of the five Kekiai Jinkai in conjunction with each other and gains battle experience, he will become truly monstrous and defeating him in a one-to-one -one fight will become close to impossible for most of the people in the shinobi world. Even within Akatsuki, his strength would be among the top five individuals, which is a big thing considering the kind of people that are part of Akatsuki. Seeing that Tsukihai successfully completed the battle, Shinichi just nodded to Tsukihai, and with the ritual completed, there was no longer any need to stay at this mountain anymore. Even the members of Akatsuki rarely gathered together, with the objective complete, they separated in different directions and started leaving the mountain towards the directions where their next commissions point at. But before leaving, the members of Akatsuki carefully examined Uchiha Tsukihai and Odo Yumi, even Tendo Pain, the frontal leader of Akatsuki was no exception to this. The performance of Uchiha Tsukihai and Odo Yumi in the previous battle against Hiroko made them shine quite a lot. While everyone was observing Uchiha Tsukihai and Odo Yumi, Odo Yumi who was following Shino also finally glanced at Uchiha Tsukihai with undisguised greed hidden in her eyes. Shinichi said with a sullen face, Be careful on the way, that woman seems to be eyeing you. Tsukihai nodded, then said, Kuroto-sama needs Hiroko's chimera technique, you better start thinking about how you can obtain it and send it to him. Shinichi sighed, but I don't have any deep friendship with Hiroko, in fact, I find him to be very disgusting. Tsukihai smirked, you don't necessarily have to go to Hiroko, his partner Shino is also there, I am willing to bet that Shino must have obtained chimera technique. 
Even before joining Akatsuki, Shino who has been traveling across Shinobi world has stolen countless techniques from many Shinobi villages and individuals in the hopes of reviving the land of sky and ruling the entire Shinobi world. So how can he, who dreams of ruling over the entire Shinobi world ignore such useful techniques like the Chimera Technique? Even Orochimaru dared to promise Kuroto Chimera Technique in exchange for an equivalent thing, so how will he obtain Chimera Technique now that he has left Akatsuki? Shino is his source of obtaining the Chimera Technique. Shinichi spoke helplessly, but I have no deep friendship with Shino either. Tsukihai sighed, it would just be a deal, why is there any need for friendship? After a pause, Tsukihai continued, you directly ask Shino what does he wants in exchange for giving you the scroll recording the Chimera Technique, and see if you can fulfill it, if you can fulfill then good, but if you can't, then inform Kuroto-sama, he will naturally try to find a way. Shinichi considered a little and then nodded, all right, I will see what I can do. Tsukihai nodded. At this time, Shinichi asked, Hiroko's Chimera Technique can be used to absorb others' Kekiai Jinkai, I wonder what Kuroto wants to do with it. He is already so strong with those dojutsu of his, and he is still after such a disgusting technique. If only you knew just how deep this accursed shinobi world is. Tsukihai thought inwardly, and said, You don't need to worry over such things. Besides, because of your fifteen years of servitude, you have to complete anything that Kuroto-sama says, so get to it. Shinichi was surprised when Tsukihai spoke fifteen years of servitude and he can't help but look at Tsukihai with a deep look. Just who are you Uchiha Tsukihai? Tsukihai smirked, you will find out soon enough. Shinichi considered Tsukihai's words, then suddenly looked at Tsukihai with a frown expression and spoke, Uchiha Tsukihai, talking to you, why do I feel like I am talking to Hugo Kuroto? He isn't teaching you any weird things, right? Tsukihai blushed, don't be stupid. Seeing your reaction my doubts are only deepened. Shinichi said with a smirk. Tsukihai's face darkened, I am too lazy to entertain you, I am leaving, make sure to be more alert from now on, okay, bye. After leaving that sentence, Tsukihai's directly ran forward. Shinichi shouted from behind, hey if you are after him, then I suggest you give up, you don't really have a chance, or should I say that your competitor is at a great advantage. Tsukihai's feet suddenly slipped and she fell to the ground as soon as she heard Shinichi's words, this G-U-Y. Shinichi smirked looking at the glare he was getting, hey I was just kidding. But all things aside, are you sure you don't need me to escort you? If you somehow die halfway, it's none of my business. Tsukihai cursed, who needs your escort, you bastard. Ha ha ha, Shinichi's laughter echoed, are you sure? Tsukihai sighed, she no longer paid attention to Shinichi's idiocy and disappeared using the body flicker technique. With Tsukihai gone, Shinichi also disappeared using the body flicker technique and arrived next to Biwa Juzo, who was patiently sitting on a cliff. Juzo questioned, Are you done? Shinichi nodded. Juzo said, In that case let's go, we already have our next assignment ready. Shinichi nodded, and both of them moved to hunt down their next target on Uchiha Tsukihai's side. After moving all the way from land of earth to land of grass, Tsukihai was finally at the border of the land of fire and land of grass. Tsukihai obviously did not drop her vigilance. While passing through a forest, Tsukihai suddenly stopped and said with a sigh, you know, I have been wondering for a while now, but how long are you going to follow me? At this moment, the figure of Odo Yumi came out from behind another tree and spoke with a giggle, Era Era, Uchiha-san is unexpectedly sharp. Chapter 278 Yumi observed Tsukihai with an aggressive gaze, the corner of her lips arched as she muttered to herself, perfect body proportions, extraordinary beauty, and temperament, coupled with excellent chakra, with an energetic and lively breath, and the most important of all, a fascinating pair of Sharingan, it's a pity that she doesn't have Manjiku Sharingan, but it does not matter. I will make do with her for now. It seems that this time my luck is pretty good. From her words, Yumi doesn't seem to be looking at a person, but more like a piece of art, a carefully carved out piece of art with very high value. Tsukihai sighed, 
she didn't know what to feel about being praised for her beauty by Orochimaru of all, and it didn't really make it much better when the opposite was looking at her like she is a helpless prey only waiting to be slaughtered. Tsukihai's face turned cold and she said mockingly, I am rather embarrassed by being praised by you. But I guess I should appreciate it nonetheless. All things aside, you have followed me all the way here, you don't expect me to believe that it was only to admire my beauty, right? Yumi ignored Tsukihai's cold words and said while licking her lips as her gaze fixed on Tsukihai's onyx eyes, although I don't want to admit it, Achiha bloodline is really fascinating. That gaze of Orochimaru confirmed that he was really eyeing this clone body. Orochimaru's obsession with Sharingan will really make him suffer more and more. But Tsukihai can't do anything about it. Even in the original story, Orochimaru repeatedly suffered in his quest to obtain Sharingan, be that at the hands of Itachi or Sasuke. Even here, he has already started to suffer in his quest to obtain Sharingan. And Tsukihai can easily conclude that perhaps his suffering here will be more than what he went through in the original story. Why? Because here Orochimaru seems to be more obsessed with Sharingan, his obsession has also birthed relatively early. Especially after losing to Hiroko, a non uchiha who Orochimaru can step upon whenever he intended. Honestly, Kuroto can't help but feel pity for his sensei. Give up, no matter what methods you use, no matter how much planning you use, you will never be able to obtain Sharingan, it will always end up in a failure. That was all that Tsukihai could say. Her expression was indifferent, and her tone flat, as if she was stating an obvious fact. Ads by Pub Future. But Tsukihai's tone angered Yumi, she glared at Tsukihai and her tone savage, an ignorant girl sheltered by her clan, now that you dare to betray, it's about time you experience the wickedness and cruelty of this accursed shinobi world. And instantly, Yumi's right hand stretched out at lightning speed. The stretched out hand turned into a poisonous snake and immediately wrapped around Tsukihai's body, tightly restricting her body. At the same time, two snakes appeared out of the ground, tightly wrapping both of Tsukihai's legs, as a result restricting all her movements. Seeing that the attack succeeded, Yumi smiled in glee, and her neck stretched out moving towards Tsukihai's neck, Achiha Tsukihai, I will be taking over your body. Ka! 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 Just as Yumi's mouth was close to Tsukihai's neck, Tsukihai's body suddenly split into hundreds of black crows, hovering in the air. The entire forest was covered with hundreds of crows. Yumi's face changed and she retracted her head and hands. The crows again gathered together in midair, revealing Tsukihai's upper body, three black tomos spinning in the scarlet will of her eyes, looking at Yumi with pity. Yumi muttered, Crow Clone Technique? Crow Clone Technique is a derived clone technique from the Shadow Clone Technique. Compared with the Shadow Clone Technique, Crow Clone Technique has lesser chopper requirements and is reusable even after the clone is dispersed. This is because, in the Crow Clone Technique, a user projects their chakra towards a dozen crows. Since it uses a medium so the chakra requirement is lesser, and even after the clone is defeated, the crows can repeatedly regather together to reform the clone. As such, this technique is not only extremely mysterious but also very useful. The reason why the crow clone technique is very rare because it requires a very complex level of coordination between the user and the summon, as well as extremely fine chakra control. So, although extremely useful, crow clone technique is also very difficult to use. While floating in midair, Tsukihai spoke, I have long said that your attempts will always be useless, if you do not want to suffer in the future, it would be best that you give up in Sharingan. Yumi's face was embarrassed, when did you notice? When did you use the crow clone technique? Tsukihai said, is there even a need to notice? Your greed is completely visible from your eyes. Whether me or Shinichi-sama, both of us were able to see through your intentions very clearly the moment we met, in fact, but I am curious, what made you think that you will be able to capture me if you find me alone? Do you really think that I am just some helpless little girl? Yumi was silent for a while, 
then said in a gloomy tone, Achihatsukihai, I will remember you. Faced with this humiliating experience, Yumi will obviously retaliate sooner or later. Tsukihai didn't care about Yumi's gloomy tone and said lightly, I am afraid that I can't promise the same. Leaving that sentence, Tsukihai's body again split into hundreds of crows, which began to disperse little by little. Yumi can only helplessly look at the dispersing crown with a bitter look. On Uchiha Tsukihai's side, after receiving the information from the crow clone, Tsukihai, who stood on the canopy of a tree smiled slightly and immediately disappeared from her position, running all the way in the direction of Kana Adakur. Tsukihai obviously knew Yumi's, or Orochimaru's, intentions, therefore, it wasn't surprising that Orochimaru was led away by a crow clone. If she chose, Tsukihai could have actually fought with Yumi, but doing so would have been dangerous and could have revealed information about her other identity or about the eternal Minjiku Sharingan, so direct confrontation was a big no-no. For that very reason, Tsukihai also did not use Jinjutsu. After a few days of travel, Tsukihai finally returned to Kanoha. After sneaking into the secret laboratory, the soul was transferred back to the main body, along with summing up all the gains. Watching Hiroko's Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual may have been a new experience, an eye-opener. But for Kuroto it was extremely important observation data, which he would use to further lay out his plans. As such, sneaking there was not a waste of effort. Poof! While Kuroto was drawing out several of his hypotheses, the one-eyed wiper suddenly appeared on his shoulder. Kuroto raised an eyebrow at the sudden arrival of the one-eyed wiper. Taking out the scroll from the mouth of the wiper, Kuroto read the content and sighed, he really doesn't intend to give up, does he? The content of the scroll was very simple, Orochimaru wants Kuroto to help him to carefully investigate the details of an Uchiha Kunoichi going by the name of Uchiha Tsukihai. With the way the content on the scroll was written, it was clearly evident that Orochimaru is pretty eager to get his hands on Uchiha Tsukihai. But I suppose that if he gave up so easily, he won't be Orochimaru. Chapter 279 Well, whatever, it works best for me I guess. Kuroto muttered. The failure of being able to create an acceptable clone with his standards has taught Kuroto that he is still not sufficiently knowledgeable. So, at this moment, Kuroto is in need dire need of the latest technology and research related to cell fusion, and this is something that only Orochimaru can give him. But Kuroto also knows that he doesn't have anything worth exchanging that Kuroto doesn't mind giving away. After all, most things that would interest Orochimaru as exchange are either related to his own secrets or the secrets of Amitsukumi, which are not what Kuroto is willing to exchange. So, what Kuroto can offer in exchange is the information that Orochimaru wants in exchange for obtaining the research theories, experimental results, and related material and selling this information would also be most cost-effective. And now that Orochimaru has expressed his need for information on Uchiha Tsukihai, so Kuroto obviously plans to exploit this need to his advantage. After the cleansing operation organized by the village, Kuroto is sure that not many of the spies left by Orochimaru are in a high level to provide him with the information on Uchiha Tsukihai. So, no matter how much Orochimaru tries to search and investigate for information on Uchiha Tsukihai, there is nothing he would be able to obtain from any of his other sources. As such, if Orochimaru wants to investigate Uchiha Tsukihai as soon as possible, Kuroto who is a high-level member of the Umbu Black Ops is his only option. And if he is really adamant about obtaining information about Uchiha Tsukihai, then he must agree to Kuroto's side of the deal. As such, after again reading the content on the scroll sent by Orochimaru, Kuroto took out another scroll and wrote, I understand Orochimaru-sama, I will try my hardest to investigate all the information on this Uchiha Tsukihai, but I have my own condition, I want all your research, theories, speculations, results, etc. on cell fusion. And after writing this message, Kuroto put the scroll inside the mouth of the one-eyed viper and sent him away. With that out of the way, Kuroto put away the unnecessary thoughts and focused on summarizing what he learned from observing Hiroko's Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual. 
First and foremost, Hiroko's reckless approach is an obvious no-no for Kuroto, Hiroko's finally success according to Kuroto has a very big fluke factor to it which is not something Kuroto is willing to bet on. Second, for the ritual to go perfect, the chakra of the five natures should be in perfect balance, and yin and yang natures should be used for guiding the entire ritual. Only in this way a perfect balance and harmony will be achieved and the ritual would be successful. Third and most important of all, the core, that is the main body should be in an optimum state throughout the ritual. This point has also been ignored by Hiroko during his ritual. He dared to directly swallow the other five ninjas, which is not exactly wrong, but the problem is that his forced approach caused the core, which is his own body to continuously disintegrate, repair, and reorganize, as a result greatly weakened his core as there would be countless tears within the core, leading many hidden dangers buried inside him waiting to be unleashed in the future. Precisely why Kuroto dared to assert Shinichi that there would be many dangers hiding within Hiroko's body. After summarizing the lessons, Kuroto also thought of the celestial phenomenon that Hiroko used. One of the many reasons why Hiroko managed to complete his ritual was the celestial phenomenon of solar eclipse and the appearance of aurora. This also gave Kuroto the idea to put some of his attention on several other phenomenons that can play a passive role in the ritual and ultimately help him in his plans, of course, celestial phenomenons being one of them. After all, the fruit of the god tree that Atsutsuki Kagaya ate also contained the energy of the planet, so the power of nature, that is the natural energy, will also play a deep role in the final ritual. Lastly, there was the matter of some kind of Irio ninjutsu, which Kuroto cares about very much. It was clearly evident that Hiroko shouldn't have survived that ritual, yet he did. Surviving such a level of cellular degradation shouldn't have been possible even with the help of Leech. As such Kuroto speculates that it was all thanks to some king of Irio ninjutsu, which seems to be the most reasonable explanation. As for how Hiroko managed to learn Irio ninjutsu, there are two possible sources. First is obviously Shino. With his deep knowledge of medical science and Irio ninjutsu, it is likely that Shino taught Hiroko some kind of technique that helped Hiroko survive the final disintegration. The second source could be Senju Tsunade herself. Is it possible that Hiroko learned Irio ninjutsu from Senju Tsunade before he chose to defect? Kuroto thought, as he can't be sure about it. Hiroko did have a very good friendship with the three Sanin, as such, it wouldn't be surprising if Senju Tsunade taught Hiroko a thing or two about Irio ninjutsu. Well, regardless of all that, one thing I can conclude is that learning Irio ninjutsu seems indispensable to ensure the foolproof success of the ritual, and I guess I should see if I learn it because it is always best to have multiple options. Ryumiaka does heal me, but you never know when Irio ninjutsu will come in handy. After a pause, Kuroto continued, it's just that after Senju Tsunade left, the development of Irio ninjutsu has basically stagnated in Konoha, most of the techniques and that are used currently were developed during the Second Great Shinobi War, will these backward techniques really come in handy? In the Shinobi world, technological advances generally fall into a stagnated growth period unless there is a genius to promote their advancement. And in the case of Irio Ninjutsu, Senju Tsunade is an unmatched genius who could have played the role of developing Irio Ninjutsu, but she left Kana Adakur, therefore, there wasn't much development. This is the reason why the entire Kana Adakur was helpless, unable to treat Kakashi and Rock Lee, and needed Senju Tsunade to treat them. As soon as Senju Tsunade returned things changed. But I don't know how long will it take for her to return this time. Aside from Naruto's talk no jutsu, I am not even sure if anything would convince her to come back, maybe a Zanami? But I don't even know how to use a Zanami, moreover, I am obviously not going to sacrifice an eternal Manjiku Sharingan just to bring her back. Such a dilemma. Sighing slightly, Kuroto checked over everything and left the secret laboratory. Carefully walking through the forest, Kuroto looked at the scenery around. Huh. At this time, beautiful snowflakes were falling, covering the entire forest in a soft cover of snow, and seeing this scene, Kuroto can't help but sigh slightly. How long has it been since he has witnessed the scene? Remembering some of his past experience, Kuroto muttered, another year has passed away. Chapter 280 
as Kuroto expected, in just one night, the entire Kanaha Dakur was covered in a thick layer of snow. The swirling cold wind and the pure white look gave the village an unreal atmosphere. Peaceful and tranquil yet dreamy and unreal at the same time. Standing at the open window, Kuroto felt refreshed looking at the picturesque scene before him. After getting fresh, Kuroto dressed in his umbu gear and left his house through the window. Kuroto appeared on a tree outside Uzumaki Naruto's house, as it was almost time to continue their shift to watch over Uzumaki Naruto, Jinchuriki of Kyubi. By the time Kuroto arrived the other three members of the team, eleven were also here. Seeing Kuroto arrive, Hataki Kakashi, Uchiha Shursue, and Mike Guy greeted him and had small usual discussions. Kuroto originally intended to use the Uchiha Tsukihai clone while doing his umbu duties. After all, soul adaption is very important, the longer his soul stays inside the clone body, the better it would be. But, if he were to use the Tsukihai clone while performing his umbu duties, then he would obviously need to use transformation technique, and there is a possibility that Shursue and Kakashi would be able to see through that transformation. And if while performing the secret task the transformation technique is revealed, then it would be very difficult for Kuroto to explain, Kuroto might still be able to handle Shursue, but Kuroto doesn't have any explanation for Kakashi. And if discovered, it would put Uchiha clan in a more passive situation. So, unless absolutely necessary, Kuroto would obviously choose to perform the task in his main body. Amidst their casual discussions, Kuroto looked towards the gate of Uzumaki Naruto's house and said, Such heavy snow has covered the entire village and the surroundings, shouldn't this kid obediently stay at home, at least today? Kakashi said helplessly, All things aside, Today is also the day when the admissions for the academy starts and considering the dream he has, Uzumaki Naruto will obviously not be going to stay at home, although we all know that he hasn't reached the age where he can be admitted to the academy yet. Team 11 has been watching over Uzumaki Naruto from the shadows for quite some time, as such, they now perfectly understand Naruto's hyperactive temperament. The little kid wouldn't stop for even a moment, all day wandering all over the village. Even the Umbu members keeping a watch over have to be in constant movement as he would never stay at a place for more than a few minutes. At this time, another Umbu member arrived where the four of them stood. All four of Team Eleven frowned. The Umbu member did not speak anything, just passed a scroll to Hitaki Kakashi. Kakashi took the scroll, unfolded it, and after reading through the information on the scroll, Kakashi raised an eyebrow, Okage-sama ordered this? The Umbu members simply nodded, yes. Kakashi nodded and after folding back the scroll, he turned towards the other three members of Team Eleven and said, we have been ordered to complete a task. Shursue who was wearing his cat Umbu uniform asked, but Captain what about protecting the target? I suppose we have to split up for today, Hokage-sama has given his permission, I and Monkey will be in the group, A, and we will perform this task, while Cat and Eagle will be in group, B, protecting the target. Make sure to be on a high vigilance, said Kakashi. Eagle and Cat glanced at each other, then nodded. All right, if that's what Hokage-sama's order is. Eagle and Cat did not ask the content of the mission as it is in Shinobi Code to never reveal the content of the mission to anyone who is not performing the mission, more so with the Umbu missions, and both Eagle and Cat know that after completing the mission, their captain, Dog will obviously reveal the detail so there was no further questioning. With that, the captain of Team, Eleven and Monkey did not speak anything more and disappeared along with the other Umbu member. With Kakashi and Gai gone, Shursue immediately asked, Kuroto-san, where have you been these few days? When Kuroto went to the Land of Rain to observe Hiroko's Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual, Kuroto made sure that Shursue kept up his cover. At the time of going, Kuroto did not inform Shursue where he was going, so now that he is back, Shursue is obviously curious. Kuroto groaned a little, and said, I went to investigate the whereabouts of Uchiha Haragi. Shursue was surprised, and asked eagerly, investigate the cause of Haragi's disappearance? So, did you find anything? Kuroto nodded, yes, I found him, but he is already dead. Then continued after a short pause, he was kidnapped by Akatsuki and died in their hands, even his Sharingan, 
or maybe I should say, the Sharingan Kekia Jinkai was taken away. Shursui sighed in disappointment. The Uchiha clan has already assumed that it would be impossible to save Uchiha Hiragi just like the case with Uchiha Ryota and Uchiha Hideki, so Shursui was not much surprised by the news revealed by Kuroto about the death of Uchiha Hiragi, but he still frowned about the latter part, what do you mean by his Kekia Jinkai was stolen, is something like that even possible? When asked this, Kuroto briefly mentioned Hiroko's Kekia Jinkai absorption ritual. Although Hiroko is not that well known within the village because of his mediocre talent and not many achievements in his life as a Kanoha shinobi, and considering the generation he was born in, Shursui was still very much aware of who Hiroko is because of being an umbu. And now that Kuroto mentioned Hiroko's Kekiai Jinkai absorption ritual, Shursui can't help but be shocked, being able to steal stealing other people's Kekiai Jinkai is almost unheard of, and the fact that Hiroko has created a kinjutsu which he used to absorb other people's Kekiai Jinkai, and not just one, two or three, but five Kekiai Jinkai at once. All he could mutter was, this, how is this even possible? Kuroto spoke, Remember sure sway if you happen to encounter Hiroko in the future, do not take him lightly or the previous person he is known to be. Now his strength has reached a terrifying level, and will only improve as he gets used to using all the five Kekiai Genkais, so dealing with him would become extremely difficult even for me if I am not careful against him. Sure sway nodded seriously and immediately said, Then we must notify the village as soon as possible. Kuroto nodded solemnly, I have passed the news to Sandame Sama by an anonymous name. Kuroto paused, then continued, As for whether Sandame Sama takes this information seriously is up to him, and I don't have any control of E. Wow, it's so snowy. However, before Kuroto could finish his words, the door of Uzumaki Naruto's house suddenly opened, and Naruto, with a piece of unfinished bread in his mouth, excitedly rushed out of his house. Kuroto and Shursui looked at Uzumaki Naruto, then turned towards each other and inside, both understood that they will now be roaming all over the village until Uzumaki Naruto goes to the academy and then come back to his home. Sometime after the academy part where Uzumaki Naruto only got cold eyes and not the opportunity to take the admissions. The first snowfall of every year is always very heavy, as such a whole lot of snow is collected, so the sight of many children playing within the snow is a normal thing. Their games obviously included various activities like making snowmen and snowball fights, etc. In short, they are having quite a lot of fun. Being a child himself, Uzumaki Naruto obviously wanted to play with them too, but he was unscrupulously chased away by the children as if he was some kind of wild beast. The children feared him, even the adults openly ostracized him for containing the beast that devastated Konoha a few years ago. Uzumaki Naruto, who is an orphan, with nobody to provide for him, with no understanding of what parental love feels like and no idea of why he is treated as such, Naruto could only sit on the swing alone in the snow-covered playground. His small figure, sad and filled with loneliness, had so many questions, yet no one to answer them. Even if he has already seen such a scene countless time, Shursui still can't help but speak, even as a child he has to go through such devastating experience, being blamed for the Kyuubi's attack, hated for housing the demon fox, and treated as the person responsible for the death of Yandame sama when he should instead be treated as a hero, it's really painful to even watch. Kuroto-san, can we not do something to help him? Kuroto sighed and shook his head. They already have too much on their plates. Uzumaki Naruto's situation cannot be solved in this way, because, if Naruto is touched in any way, then that would be hitting the nerves of many people at the same time. So, they don't have the power to help Naruto currently. The reason why Uzumaki Naruto is hated is also very simple. Since people don't understand the circumstances behind Naruto's birth, so they don't hide away their hatred towards him, very few are willing to let go of their hatred towards QB and acknowledge Uzumaki Naruto for being the hero he is. But those are very few and cannot do anything to change his situation. Since no one is willing to take responsibility for him, Naruto naturally becomes the scapegoat. There are very few methods to solve Naruto's situation. Unless the circumstances behind his birth are revealed, or he wins over the heart of everyone, his situation will not change. 
Kuroto might be able to do so for Naruto in the future, but currently, he doesn't have the necessary political power to do so. While Kuroto and Shirsui had saddened faces looking at Naruto, suddenly they heard some noises from the other end of the road. If you are really a Hyuga then show us your Bikugan. But if you're not gonna, don't look at us. Yeah, your eyes are creepy. I bet you are some kind of monster, aren't you? Yeah, the Byakugan monster. Ha ha ha. Several children were making fun of a little girl, making her lower her head in sadness, as tears flowed F equals down her cheek, she suddenly crouched down and started crying. Shursui looked over with a frown, Kuroto-san, isn't she the eldest lady of the Hyuga clan? Kuroto nodded, yes. Shursui asked worriedly, shouldn't we do something about those three? Kuroto shook his head, firstly, it's a matter among children so they must resolve it themselves, moreover, as the supposed next head of the Hyuga clan, Hyuga Hinata must overcome these things by herself, and even if she can't, we can't intervene in such childish things, let this matter be resolved the hero of the day. Shursui was confused, hero of the day? By that you don't mean, Uzumaki Naruto, do you? Kuroto did not answer, just watched the happening with a bit of interest. Hey, cut it out! shouted Naruto. Who are you? I am Uzumaki Naruto, and I am the future Hokage, said Naruto with a determined expression. That's the end of this tale for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on part 8. Peace.